Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to the Total Tavern Season 5 Grand Finals, baby. It's go time. We got the uh, top four players in the world about to compete to see who is the champion of Season 5. So it should be quite a bit of fun. We had the round of 16 starting at 10 a.m. today and we've gotten three players to the top four. So we are going to be starting with our first series here. Taking a look, we do have Tim the Wilder versus Hadries. Uh, that is going to be our first best of three series. And then on the bottom, we have Scrambled Lake Special, who did make it to the top four. And we're waiting for the winner of Houseplant and Berserk to see who is going to be reaching that top four spot. So it should be quite a bit of fun. Welcome, welcome. Yes. How you guys doing? All right. Let's get this party started. No more games. Players doing their picks and bans right now. Uh, not sure what they're going to be playing. We'll have to see. So the meta right now, if we take a look at the meta uh, for this particular season, Certainly, I would say that the old green skins, Norse skins are uh, very, very popular picks. I've been seeing them pretty consistently throughout the tournament. Granted, they do have their counter picks, of course, but they have been very, very popular. So taking a look over at Total Tavern, we're going to jump in and see. Uh, yeah, Kislev is banned from the tournament just because even though their win rate, it would be higher if we allowed them to be played more. But they don't really have any counters and uh, honestly are just super imbalanced. So Kislev is banned from the tournament overall. But these have uh, been pretty popular factions. Lizardman, Norska, Greenskins. Interesting to see vampire counts here. I, I doubt we'll see any vampire counts today, but you never know. I think Berserk actually plays vampire counts a little bit, so maybe we will. But yeah, this is going to be a spot in the Hall of Fame. So if we take a look over at the Hall of Fame, you can see the total tavern seasons here. These are our uh, big events. Very, very fun stuff indeed. Uh, the first season and second season were won by Void Lulls. Season 3 and 4 won by Houseplant. And Season 5 is what's being contested right now. So we got the top 16 players in the world. A couple of them couldn't make it. Um, we did have, uh, I believe, Platypus dropped out. He wasn't able to make it today. Uh, Ghoul dropped out. And then um, I, of course, if I qualify for the season finals, I give my spot to somebody else. So um, that's the only difference from what you're seeing here in the top 16. So the next players in the rankings were invited, and that is that. All right, so let's switch it on over. Let's have some fun. There will be a little bit of downtime in between games. Classic Total War stuff. T-Rex, how you doing? Thank you. Let's get ready to get haggard. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, Kislev is just very imbalanced. Their infantry are just a little bit too strong. Their uh, winged lancers, after they got the buffs to the glorious charge in the last update, are just kind of busted. Uh, they, they just do, they're just too powerful. Like, uh, they just are so dominant compared to other factions. Yeah. All right, all right. So, uh, we don't know the picks yet. I suspect Tim the Wilders, he is an extremely meta player. He's going to be going for whatever is, is uh, you know, kind of the, the, the popular stuff and uh, making it work. And there's a reason people do that, right? Because the odds of winning with that stuff is uh, very, very proven. So... I would expect a Norska, a Greenskin, or a Lizardman pick from him. And even before Lizardman were considered top tier, though, in his defense, uh, Tim was a, a top tier Lizardman player. So I, I suspect that would probably be the direction he's going to go. Uh, interestingly enough, Hadri's a little bit of a you know underdog here today. He hadn't been playing too much. I haven't seen him signing up for too many tournaments and playing. Um, but he came in and defeated two really, really strong players. 2-0, actually. So he defeated out of region. 2-0 in the last series and also won his first round 2-0. So Hadri is showing why he's one of the OGs of Total War Competitive. Coming back and trying to claim a spot here in the Grand Final. So we're going to see if that happens. Yes, yes. Why are we changing seasons? Uh, so we already changed the seasons a while ago. So we're on season 6 right now on the leaderboard. So um, so yeah, when we're even uh, whenever Thrones comes out, we're probably just going to continue on season 6 for a while. We'll reset the stats and everything, but we're still pretty early in season 6. Uh, it was just kind of the way things worked out with the timing and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, it's good, man. It's good. How you guys doing? Remember back in the day when Kissel was, yeah, they weren't the best in the beginning, but even still, they did have some really, really abusive mechanics. Like I remember in land battle, Kissel was pretty awful in the beginning with the uh, healing boxes and, uh, and early Dom. Yeah. Early Dom was just really bad though. It was like weird. The game was over so quickly and it was, um, they had the comeback mechanic and all these like really janky things. So I don't really put much credence into that, but it was, it was very, yeah, it was very bad in the beginning. Hadrius has been scheming in the shadows. I know. I wonder who's been training with, you know, Hadrius and I, I haven't been playing as much competitive Total War myself. I've been jumping in and playing in a tournament here and there, but Hadrius and I used to train quite a bit together, but um, I, I wonder, I wonder where he's been getting his reps or if you just got that natural skill. We'll have to see. So they're doing their picks and bans uh, at the moment. Yes. Yeah, so we have a little bit of time. And uh, when the, what we'll actually do is when the top four is decided. So Tim's giving me an update. He says, Hadri's uh, ban Ogre Kingdoms. Okay, so they're doing that. No worries. They're doing their uh, their 3x3 three three grid right now. So it looks like the pick for Tim the Wilder is Greenskins, 
Tomb Kings, and Norska. So again, two of the three very meta choices. And for Hadris, we have Ogre Kingdoms, Lizardmen, and Warriors of Chaos. Interesting. Okay. And yeah, they're just going to continue on in their pick and ban phase. And I'll let you guys know as soon as we get the matchup all set. Does anyone know how to get a Chaos Store from you for the old world? Yeah, probably 3D printing is your best bet. Yeah, there's there's a ton of websites that have like literally like like direct replacements for like all of them. And you're going to be able to do that. So it's like obviously they're not from the GW game, but... Yeah, you would just 3D print those. That would be your best bet. Aaron, thank you for the fiver. Love your work. You're a fantastic entertainer, Jen. Hey, thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for the kind words. Yeah, it's always good to get back to our roots, man, and have a big, sweaty Total War tournament. This one is going to be extremely sweaty. Every player in the top four is going to be uh, pouring sweat. All right. So almost there. They're almost done with their pick and ban phase. Uh, Tim is giving me a play-by-play. So we have the potential for Lizardmen versus Greenskins, Warriors of Chaos versus Greenskins, uh, Tomb Kings versus Ogre Kingdoms. Oh, what would that matchup even look like? I've got to feel as if that matchup would probably be Tomb King favored. The Sepulchral Stalkers in between who shop the Great Bows with, um, you know, just like Tomb Guard and Skeleton Spears. Yeah, we'll have to see. We will have to see. No, I don't have any music on. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I dare you to pick a Chaos Faction without using Warriors. Oh, that's actually not uncommon. Oftentimes when you see Corn played, Corn will not use their Warriors. They'll use the Marauders instead. Um, Nurgle typically will use their Warriors. Poison and Durability is very good on them. Slanesh always brings their Warriors. And Zinch will sometimes... There, there have been Zinch games where you don't see Warriors getting picked. You'll often see um, you'll often see the Zangors, the Marauders, and then maybe maybe some Blues and Pinks mixed in. So, I mean, Warriors of Zinch are still not bad. They do have the Regenerating Shields and Magic Damage and good stats, but it's not uncommon to hear of that situation. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it indeed. Why don't we see much of Wood Elves in the competitive scene? They're pretty, they're pretty good, um, but they're kind of a specialist faction. Uh, they're not ubiquitously easy to play. They require a lot of repetitions with them in my experience. It's not something like like any, you know, anyone can pick up green skins or Norska and just have these big Ungabungas that are durable and really good at sustained grinding. It doesn't take a ton. I mean, obviously they will become better the better the player is because, you know, like someone like Houseplant, for example, is going to be microing his troll super efficiently, making sure they don't get caught, um, all that goodness. But yeah, overall... Uh, Overall, Norska is way easier to use. Greenskins are use easier to use. The melee factions are often a little bit more user-friendly, whereas Wood Elves are extremely glass cannon, require a ton of finesse. Also, you have to have a lot of niche matchup knowledge that isn't super mainstream, right? So if you're playing these meta factions, it, there's more information out there about like, okay, this is how this matchup works, but Wood Elves aren't commonly played, so you have to really, really specialize on them in my experience. Yeah, Chorfs are cool. I don't think we'll see any Chorfs today. They're not very good. Um, they're okay. I mean, they can win games. They have a couple niche applications. Probably sitting around 50%, give or take. But but yeah. Honestly, God bless Norska. No real roster updates. And yeah, they're still going strong. They are. Yeah, Norska is a very, very good faction. So uh, they're probably going to be deciding here in just a second. And then we just got to wait for them to build the armies. And we'll, uh, we'll do it. We'll do it indeed. We'll load into the matchup and we'll have some fun. Quite hyped to see this. Bretonia is also another faction I think we will see today. Bretonia is pretty good. So we got two best of threes followed by a best of five grand final. Uh, the best of five grand final will uh, be a little bit of a longer series unless uh, Houseplant returns as he usually does and wins at 3-0. Although I think the last time, the closest one we had in a while was actually Houseplant versus Housecat of War, which Housecat lost 3-2. It was a really close series. That one was like razor close. The last big event we had was won by Tim the Wilder. So we had the Chaos Clash, which was hosted by myself and Creative Assembly. Uh, and that one was won by Tim the Wilder. So he was able to win that big one. Although I don't believe Houseplant played in that one. Uh, I'm not sure if he did. Yeah, I don't think he did. What are the sweaty factions we're expecting to see? Greenskins, Norska, and Lizardmen. Those are like the easiest and strongest factions to play. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to be seeing them. So Greenskins versus Lizardmen. But we have a really cool new pick and ban format. And shout out to Subutai for... Uh, piloting this one which i like quite a bit so the pick and ban format we have massively massively reduces the likelihood of um of mirror matches so how it works is when some when they're doing their alternating picks for their pick three the three factions they want to play in a match you can't pick something that your opponent has picked except in the third match um which is which is uh which is not third match but the third pick so the odds of a mirror match are like almost non-existent uh, which is great. So you guys probably won't have to suffer through any mirror matches today. Hey Ram, everything's going good. Just getting the middies painted up. It's going to take some time, but I'm hoping to kind of get it going this summer. Yeah. 
just taking it easy, enjoying. I need to get way more old world games in too. I'm a bit of a potato there. Um, you know, I've only played maybe six games, five games, and the rules are still very new to me. So I need to get more reps in. I'm playing in a tournament for old world on April 20th. So that'll be three games. So it'll be good to play against some other players and uh, we'll do it. Do I expect Skaven to pop up? Probably not. Um, Skaven are a very niche pick at best. Uh, I personally have been teching. I mean, if Hadri's, if anyone would pick Skaven, it would be Hadri's. He's an OG Skaven main, but I don't think so. Nick, I've been watching you since the ancient Haggard Warhammer one days. Jesus, dude, that was, that was a long time ago. Here's some more casting and competitive content. I got you, man. I got you. Yeah, man. Warhammer 1. I went back and watched some of the Warhammer 1 stuff recently, and it's like it's like a time capsule. It's crazy. It's crazy. What's good? Hey, Rusty. How you doing, man? Uh, is Arkin though? I don't think Arkin is playing today, Sarkin. I do not believe so. Uh, which campaign sticks in your mind is extremely difficult? Dude, I haven't played campaign in a long time, Talut. Um... I don't know. I remember. I remember the Belagar campaign being hard, um, and Skarsnik used to be. I don't know after the Greenskin rework, but I honestly don't really touch campaign. I mainly just stay on multiplayer. But yeah, Greenskins versus Lizards. I mean, a very, very uh, you know intense matchup for sure. It's it's good. They're both like top tier factions, so it's not like we're seeing one you know top tier faction bully a crappy faction. Uh, it's gonna be a good one. Uh, if I had to say, I don't know who's actually favored here, right? Um, you probably see trolls. Because trolls counter Croxagore, so probably going to see some sort of troll. Maybe river trolls, because they're cheaper than the stone trolls. Although stone trolls are pretty resilient against like the lizardman poke. Although, if I were Hadris, what I would probably bring to bear, would I do an ancient salamander? You could, but I think it's a bit of a trap. Hmm, you could go double ancient sally and just like nuke all the orc air boys and then and try that. And also, I guess the, yeah, probably regular salamander hunting packs. Um... If it were Tim playing, Tim likes to use the double Ancient Sally. He used to, at least. A couple times I played against him in tournaments, he did use those. But yeah, just classic Saris with, uh, you know, Saris with her cudgels. You get the Croxagore, some Skink Cohort Javelins would be good. Salamander Hunting Packs to kill trolls. And maybe, maybe one Ancient Sally and a Battletoad with the healing. Like, Life Slam would probably be the direction I would go. Uh, for Tim the Wilder, I, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, pro would you bring Savage Infantry? They are really squishy, and uh, but I guess, yeah, Savage Infantry, Orc Boys, uh, Air Boys, you know, Rampage. Is it that good here? Probably not. I don't think you go. Maybe you go with like an Azag or something on foot. Like Foot Zag? Because, yeah, yeah. Okay, Tim is going to bring Azag because he's going to want to fade a Buna, the uh, Salamander Hunting Packs, and try and take them down. That's what it's going to be. Okay, we're putting it all together now. Have I been smashed by the dreaded dragons in the old world yet? Uh, yes, I played one game, but I was ill. I, I wasn't ill prepared. I got it down to one wound, and if I had gotten, you know, if he hadn't rolled a four up, I win the game basically. So it, it, the game came up to a four up, so it wasn't that bad. But because um, he was charging my Ushapti great bows with a star dragon, a high elf star dragon, which is like literally six hundred points with the lord on top, uh, and he rolled a four up and saved the bow shot. So he did manage to survive. But if that had gone off, you know, so it, it wasn't that bad. Because if somebody attacks like a brick of units with a dragon, you can challenge the dragon rider with the champion of the unit and force him to allocate all of his attacks into that one unit. Um, I mean, yes, there's the overkill thing, but, you know, there are ways to controlling dragons. I do think they are a little bit OP, some of them. Like, I think that the Nurgle dragon on tabletop is really busted. Because he gets a 5-up warp, 5-up regen, and also can get a... Um, re you have to re-roll your, uh, your stuff against him because of Mark and Urgle. There's some scary stuff. Yeah. Hey, Lich, how you doing? Thinking uh, about Corn. You think uh, but they could give a Storm Magic a scout? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they decide to do that, Lich. Um, I, I suspect we'll get maybe something like that. I don't know. Because obviously Games Workshop controls the narrative as it pertains to... Uh, you know, what's allowed to be added to the game and whatnot. So we'll see. We will see. <laughs> the dreaded four plus, I know. I know, 50-50 in a nutshell, yeah, it sure is. All right, looks like Hadris is ready. Tim is gonna be getting his picks together. We still have, do not have a winner between Houseplant and Berserk. Those guys are, have gone back and forth in series. I actually casted a best of three series between them, which will be going up on the channel soon. Uh, it was really, really hotly contested. Berserk is an extremely good player and so is Houseplant. So. In the beginning series, we had Houseplant defeat Subutai 2-0 and Berserk defeated Hitman Hippo 2-1. So Hitman Hippo did take a game off Berserk. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to be seeing who will be joining the top four. As of now, this is what we have. We got Scrambled Egg Special. Um, and uh, he's waiting to play Houseplant or Berserk. And Tim the Wilder and Hadris are going to be duking it out on the top side of the bracket. All right, all right. Thank you, Lich. Appreciate it, man. 
Would you say that having more big point entities would make it luck based? More it more big point entities make it more luck based. It, it, I don't know if I would say luck based per se. It's hard, it depends on the model, right? Yeah, it depends. There's a lot of variables to that question. It's, it's tough to answer. Rogue idol spam versus dread saurian spam. You're probably never going to see that because the dread saurian would crush the rogue idol pretty much every single time. The poison howdo would lower its stats, and rogue idols are more designed against infantry, whereas dread saurians are generalists. So good luck, have fun. All right, so they need me to set, press the start button, and we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first sweaty match of the day. Let's get it. Let's have some fun. Yep, I called it. Still got it, baby. It's got to be Azag. All right. So the green skin build is very meta. It's orc boys in the front, which makes sense against lizardmen because having the shields against their poking darts and javelins is always nice. One savage orc biggin as kind of a tech to maybe battle a croxagore or something bigger. Azag is obviously going to be there with Bune and Spirit Leech, extremely common. And uh, we got Squigs and Error Boys. For Hadris, it's going to be a Life Slan out of the gates, which is, again, pretty standard. Uh, he's going to be able to really heal up the Saurus. And you see how the Saurus have 10,000 HP? Uh, that's really good with this ability here, the Life Bloom. So every time you cast a spell, it's going to be healing them for almost 1% of their HP, which is like, yeah, it's a fair amount of HP across your entire army, right? Like one Life Bloom is going to be healing you for like, you know, six, seven, eight hundred HP across your army. That's great value, right? And that's when you cast spells. So you can be doing other things with that magic. And we do have a solar uh, solar engine as well. Okay, that's kind of cool. So that thing's probably going to be shooting its laser beams at the error boys. And it uh, does have a nice little debuff on it as well. But yeah, we got the solar engine. This is the dreaded Hadri's tech. I was expecting a lot of Croxigores, to be honest. Although Croxies can be worn down by the um, by the error boys. But yeah, at the end of the day, I just feel like Croxigores are so good. Especially the Power Fist one, the ROR. That thing, the Cohort of Waddle is an absolute monster. So here we are. This is one of our new maps. This is Crystal Lake. Shout out to our lovely map makers who keep our competitive scene alive. You guys, uh, you guys are the gems. Without you, we would be in some serious danger. And it is going to be the lizards here on this side for old Hadri. So we got a mass line of battle Saurus with shields, which is good. You know, Greenskins do have a bit of Jacka, so bringing shields is nice. We got Saurus spears in the secondary, and um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of spears and a lot of the cudgel Saurus with the old uh, solar engine here. So the Bastilodon does have some uh, nice debuffs, lowers melee defense, melee attack, and accuracy. And you can just set this thing on, you know, error boys, whatever, and you're gonna be able to live long and prosper. So do like the build from Hadris. We'll have to see how this goes. And uh, looking at the other side, we do have the forces of Tim the Wilder. So Tim the Wilder has won our most recent uh, big event, the Chaos Clash uh, that we had, or the Community Clash. Uh, it was the CA event that we had recently. And the last big season finals, however, was won by Houseplant. Houseplant did win that season final. So Houseplant is the defending champion right now. He's coming back to defend his throne to see if he can, uh, you know, get it done. As far as the battle line goes, it's going to be goblins into the sunset uh, just to get beaten down and massacred by Sarah. Secondary line is going to be orc boys. A lot of Daka in the back. And Savage Orc Air Boys are pretty cool in the sense that they're good fighters too. Yeah, their melee defense sucks, but if they get attacked by like a chaff unit or like a diving cavalry unit, they actually have high weapon strength. And when the frenzy's active, it's like, it's like around 40%. It's pretty good. Around 40, excuse me. Squigs just there to run over Saurus, but that's why you see Saurus Spears. And it is going to be Azag the Slaughter in the tree line. He is going to be on foot, making him a bit of a smaller target. And he's going to be dropping the Bunas and all that other nasty business on his foes. So just checking Discord to see. Um, yep, looks like we're good. No drama. And uh, good luck, have fun to the players. Yeah, should be a good, good fight here. All right, looking on the other side here. What do we got? Objective 3, 2, and 1. So again, very similar to Itza. What I like to call an Itza style map where the objectives are in a bit of a lane. Although where it's is more open, um, you're going to have more forest kind of play over here, right? So what I like, one of my favorite things about domination mode in general is the fact that terrain really can play a part, uh, play a part, <laughs> play a part and maps can, uh, maps can matter in terms of terrain. Whereas, you know, mostly in the land battle days I, when I was hosting tournaments, I don't know what it's like nowadays as much, but I, I used to really kind of favor maps that were a little bit more open with minor terrain. Obviously, because players would really skirt the rules and uh, try and abuse the train in, uh, you know, as much as they could. Like you would, I remember one of our ever chosens. We literally, before we had more in-depth rules, we had a player just sit in the forest and just not attack. And, uh, you know, days like that bring back nightmares to me. So we do get the Lizards of Hadri's advancing. Tim the Wilder is a big advocate of building up and it has worked for him pretty well. Um, you know, he likes to sit back. He likes to get a big critical mass and it's very, very clinical, I guess you could say, right? He wants to see what his opponent army, army comp looks like, and he wants to make sure he summons in the adequate counters to set army comp. So we got Savage Orc Air Boys pouring out. Looks like they're going to be going up to do battle with these skink skirmishers. So it is going to be two Savage Orc Air Boys and a goblin unit moving over towards the other side here. 
So they're going to be trying to claim objective three. Hadrius could send a Sar Spear over there if he wants to. They would eat a lot of firepower. They certainly would take some. Auto, I did. I auto-corrected in real life for sure. I also didn't get much sleep last night. So you know what? We're going on uh, We're going on fumes, baby, but I'm ready to go. Let's have some fun. All right, so Azad coming out of the trees. Here he comes. Is he going to be in anything? No, obviously not. In terms of Spirit Leech targets, I mean, if you do get lucky and Hadrius does blunder his Banana Toad, you could Spirit Leech that guy. I believe they do have... Do they have any spell resist? No, they just got missile resist. Bam, battle toad. 40% missile resist. That's no joke. That is no joke. But yeah, it wouldn't be a terrible spirit leech target if there's no Buna targets. But uh, yeah, Tim is going to be very patient. Obviously, Salamander hunting packs are pretty good here um, at shooting at the uh, inevitable trolls. But maybe maybe Tim has teched his build into not bringing any trolls. We'll have to see. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting too. Um, with the new pick and ban system, you know, with the longer series as well. I'm curious to see what off meta factions these guys are going to pick. Hadrius, I know, likes Warriors of Chaos. Uh, I've seen him play them quite a bit. And Warriors of Chaos are considered to be kind of a lower mid-tier faction. So if anybody were to pick them, it would for sure be the dreaded Hadrius. So a little bit of Daka going down. We are going to be seeing the Clever Girls getting sent in. So the Feral Cold Ones uh, thinking about charging. But we do see Tim the Wilder calling out the Broken Tusk Mob. These guys are very, very scary. Broken Tusk Mob is an incredibly strong unit. Warboy Biggins in general are a little bit OP. Uh, I don't think they should have that high armor. I don't think it's really characteristic of the Greenskins, and it is a little bit strong. It makes the Greenskins pretty much dominate most of the heavy cavalry fights, which is certainly not in their uh, flavor. But, you know, they should be able to compete in it, but dominating it doesn't make as much sense to me. Cold One Spear Riders, though, can trade okay into the Broken Test Mob and cavalry units in general. But I think that what um, Hadrius is going to do is just not bring anything that is, you know, super weak against it. Yeah, probably, uh, maybe that's why we're not seeing Croxagors. I don't know. Croxagors could be quite scary, though. We do see these Saurus Warriors getting pounded by that Missile Fire. Very, very nasty stuff. Two Savage Orc Air Boys getting it done. Hadri sitting here with the Life Slam. He does have Awakening of the Wood and Earth Blood, so maybe he's going to do an Earth Blood here. He does pop an Earth Blood. And we do see the Feral Cold Ones jumping into the Goblins, and uh, yeah, only in Warhammer Fantasy here do you see Velociraptors. Although, I suppose in D&D you could see this too, but Goblins getting rip ripped apart by <laughs> Velociraptors, basically. Always a good time. And yeah, the shooting continues. Hadrius does have the triple cap in the meantime. Tim the Wilder making a play for the high ground objective. So we do see Azag coming out of the tree line with some Savage Orc Biggins. And uh, yeah, Sars are just absolute eight foot tall steroid jack steroid lizards. They are just monsters. They fight off the squig herds. They hold off the Savage Orc Biggins here. And this is a big opportunity for Hadrius to get a ton of value with these uh, skink skirmishers. He should definitely be poking into the back of the Savage Orcs. Meanwhile, Tim looks like he's going to be overwhelming this objective, although we do see the rotation from Hadrius and also the supporting fire from the Bastilladon is going to be lowering the stats. Look at that, blinded. So the stats on the Savage Orc Biggins are awful right now. 24 and 1. Look at that cool synergy. Feral Cold Ones moving in to bolster against these Squig Herds. More Sar Spears moving up. Meanwhile, on the low ground, we do see a little bit of aggression coming in from old Hadrius as he does move up here with the Feral Cold Ones and these Sar Spears. And the Broken Tusk Mob do countercharge the Feral Cold Ones and get a pretty good engagement, but they are also in combat here with Sar Spears, which is not exactly what they want to be doing. But looking at the value here, as long as the Lizards keep it close, it's going to be favored for them because of their map-wide healing, right? Greenskins don't really have any sort of healing. So if the value is close, it's going to be a little bit better for the Lizards. But Greenskins do get a big surge when they get that wall going, and the high ground objective is going to be flipping to the Greenskins here. Perhaps a bit of a blunder for old Hadris trying to defend all three objectives. Tim the Wilder was able to kind of isolate a couple of positions and uh, use his big wah to roll down and take those. But we'll see how that turns out here. So in the back, we got Saurus Warrior coming out. On the low ground, what is it going to be? So we got the Battle Toad. Ooh, he's a little bit trapped up by the Orc Warboy Biggins here. A little bit dodgy. I don't see too much support nearby. A couple of Saurus Spears going to be making their way down. And we do see Tim the Wilder pulling a little bit of a value lead. Not much. 3.3 .3 against 2.8. Battle Toad doing quite good. We got the uh, Saurus Spears here. Yeah, fighting Savage Orc Biggins is not going to be good for the Spear units. Obviously, Savage Orc Biggins are a very killy unit. They have 50 melee attack and really, really high weapon strength as well. Solar Engine ripping shots into the Broken Tusk Mob. I would say that's a pretty good target. Meanwhile, up on this uh, objective here, the Sar Spears are holding quite valiantly, showing that they're certainly quite good at this bump and grind. But overall, Azag and company probably going to be ripping this objective, and it is going to be relatively tough for old Hadris to hold on to the objectives here soon. 4.2 against 3.8. Battle Toad. A little bit overextended into enemy lands. I think Hadrius is probably going to want to consolidate and pull back here. And for Tim the Wilder, just keep doing what he's doing. He's getting pretty good engagements across the map. I think there's going to be a window of time here where he is going to find a way onto the uh, second objective. And uh, it's just going to rotate his big wad down there. And it is going to be uh, quite scary indeed. Tim also getting some really good missile shooting. So he's got all of his Savage Orc Air Boys online for the most part, except this one, which could use a little bit of milk. Uh, Battletoad is getting attacked, but I can tell you from experience... 
it's typically uh, a bit of a, a, a drama to try and kill the slants. I think it's a mistake. Unless it's really obvious and they're really overextended, they're not really worth like focus firing. You want to kill the other things. They just take so much time to kill. They have huge HP. They have ward save abilities. It is a problem for sure. But Hadrius is up on points pretty considerably. Uh, it could get to the point where he's going to be able to do a Lizardman Helm's Deep. We see the Bastillon on Solar Engine moving on to the objective here. And the reason being is that he wants to get the Terror out on the point. He could route off the Orc Boys, some of those other units. We'll have to see. But value is within 800. So kind of in the parameters of healing still being, uh, you know, online. Saurus Warriors arrive and they got their cudgels out for the old ones. Got to be taking some of these Savage Orc uh, boys here to the Pound Town. That is for sure. So we see the Savage Orc Biggins getting absolutely taken to the club here. Routed off. And now the Saurus Warriors, are they going to have an opportunity to get the point back? Hadri's with a bit of a flank here. He's got Skink Skirmishers moving towards the Error Boys. Not going to do much, though. Those Error Boys could probably beat them in combat. And Tim is going to be calling in some Wolf Riders. So they ambush out of the tree line. And the Gabos are going to be uh, running down these little lizards. Poor little guys. They're going to have a really, really bad time there. As the Saurus Warriors need to get up to help their little buddies. Middle objective is going to be flipping to the Greenskin Wa. On the low ground here, we do see the uh, Spears and the Battletoad trying to hold back the Greenskin Tide. But overall, they seem to be running out of steam a little bit. I do think that the Lizardman build is maybe, maybe miss missing Croxigors. I, I think they're just so good in this matchup. Yes, they are vulnerable against the Orc Warboy Biggins, but with their high armor, they really absorb missile shots super cost effectively. Uh, and on top of that, with the Life Slant healing them, they can usually endure quite well. But we're going to see if Hadrius can pull this one back. It's looking pretty good for Tim, though, I would have to say. It's going to be some Croxigors coming out, maybe a little bit late to the party. Uh, the Orc Warboy Biggins move in. It looks like they're trying to sneak around and maybe get on the Battletoad. If they could isolate the Battletoad, that'd be pretty cost effective, but... Something we've been seeing a lot of this game is Sarah Spears fighting up against the, uh, against, you know, infantry that are designed to fight infantry. So the Spears are in a bit of a, you know, tough situation, I would say. So Feral Cold Ones make it to the middle. The Bastilodon is there for the terror routes, but the Orc Warboy Biggins are certainly going to be very well equipped to deal with the Bastilodon. Reinforcements coming in is going to be Croc scores with their spanking paddles, but they are a little bit overextended and unsupported. So the Orc Boar Boy Broken Tusk Boys probably will be able to turn around and just maybe finish these off or at least do some good damage to them on the way in. So looking at the points, we do see Hadri's closing in on 1,000, but he's falling pretty massively behind in value. He's down by about 1,600 right now. And again, with healing taken into account, it's it's probably about 800 to 1,000 value, which is like two extra units on the battlefield for Tim the Wilder, give or take, when you look at the green skin. So waking the wood going down, going to be triggering the Earth Bloom here as he Croxagors do battle something that is kind of a counter against him, which is the Broken Tusk Mob. But the Croxigors will kill a couple of the Broken Tusk Mob, but yeah, where Croxies really shine is when they're in combat and supported by infantry, right? Like either Skinks or have the uh, Saurus Warriors underneath them really, really getting it done. But yeah, I think Tim is probably going to close this one out. Looks like he's maneuvering with his archers as well as Azag the Slaughter heading over to Objective 2. And the bottom objective is going to be taken by the Greenskins as well. And that will likely be the match, uh, or the, yeah, just that particular match, not the entire uh, round, of course. Going to Tim the Wilder. Um, certainly very, very on point with his plays and his engagements and his builds, as always. A very, very clinical, scientific player, I, uh, I should say. But Hadrian's maybe down for this match, but he's certainly not out. This is a best of three series. So he will have a little bit of time to get this one back. But it is basically 100% over. Um, Soros are moving in. Croxigors, yeah, we got the Feral Cold Ones. Battletoad is being surrounded and taken down now. So the Battletoad is in trouble. I also think that there were some other issues with um, the engagement. Maybe if Hadrius just played two objectives instead of trying to play all three, it would have been a little bit safer for him, um, for his more elite army to cover ground and really bolster one another. But he tried to play all three objectives, which Elizabeth can do with Croxigors, I think. But in this case, it was very dodgy. He, was, he got overwhelmed in a couple areas and took some losses, whereas if the forces were more consolidated, I think that he can clean that one out. So, Battletoad is going to go into the old can here. You can see him running for the hills, 137 HP. He's being chopped up by the Choppas of Du Bois, and the Battletoad has been sent back to the warp. GG, uh, not the warp. Well, maybe maybe Battletoads are secretly demons, although his Star Chamber is probably more likely the location. But Hadri's not realizing it's over quite yet. Maybe going for that, uh, you know, last desperate push here, but that is going to be it. And we just see Tim Tim basically abandoning all, you know, uh, micro and strategy and just sending everything he has at the advancing units, knowing that he has such a numerical advantage and a value advantage that it's not really going to matter. So he just kind of swarms down on the Sar Spears here. We get Savage Orcs chasing down uh, something that they normally wouldn't chase, right? So we're seeing that he is very, very comfortable. Salamander, yeah, a single Salamander could be cool. I didn't hate the solar engine, though. This bad boy did okay on value. We do see a fate of you of the ho-ho-ho going down on the Sars Warriors, basically going to one-shot those. I mean, it looks like Hadri's going for a bit of a resurgent push, considering he has the points lead. 
He's given it one last try to see if his terror can maybe get some points back, which I respect for sure. Nice shot there from the solar engine. Hadri's also going to be trying to ninja the high ground point, but Tim is probably going to respond pretty quickly with some units. Yeah, he's got squid curds in the trees there. We can get there and deal with that. But yeah, certainly love the tenacity. Always fun to see. Million skinks being rowed down by the cavalry units, and the terror route from the Bastilodon is the hope for Hadri's. They're hoping that it's going to be able to route the position. Maybe he'll be able to flip an objective back. But Tim has already kind of closed the points lead. He's got Azag still in the battlefield. Azag's got some good buff items too. Bringing Slagus Slashes is always quite good. Giving eight melee attack and leadership to all nearby boys. I mean, that's really, really good. Greenskins are a pretty low leadership action in general, so that's quite a nice buff. And now we see the big Chungus here about to get focused down by all these missiles. So yeah, Savage Orc Air Boys here and another Savage Orc unit, another one here. We do also have Morgrub's Mangy Marauders, which of course are a mobile armor piercing unit. So they'll be able to punch through the armor of the Basilodon, not super quickly, but with some effectiveness. Feral Cold One's called in, and yeah, I just don't think he's kind of grasped it's over, and now he has. GG, well played. All right. That was quite a bit of fun, man. Enjoyed that one. Very, very sweaty stuff. The series between Berserk and Houseplant is literally still going. That match is just probably every game is coming down to the wire, which is nuts. Normally, I would alternate between the series, but since they're still going, we're going to wait. So that is going to be one victory for uh, Tim. And yeah, it was a good build. It was honestly solid. Yeah, no, nothing to really critique here. It was very clean. With green skins, you either switch between the goblin characters to rampage. Uh, the goblin war boss, if you want to rampage big targets. Azag, if you don't really want to use rampage against big targets, you just need Buna. And, or you can do the uh, night goblin shaman if you want to snipe. Uh, Lizardmen are very durable against sniping. Rampaging isn't that good against the Lizardmen meta, so overall Buna was the right choice. And yeah, for Hadri's build, it was good. Maybe a little bit lighter on the, the Saris. Switch to the shielded Saris with the cudgels. Maybe keep like two or three spears. Uh, I think consolidate down on two points and more Croxagors. Like this Croxagor did really good on value, even considering it was fighting its hard counter. I think if Hadri's comes out with three or four Croxagors, he can spank some greenskins and consolidate on two objectives. So yeah, lesson learned. It was a good game. GG well played to those chads. And now let's get our next match going here as they are going to be moving into their picks and bans. All right, checking it out. And cool. It's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun. Can you swap? All right. So we are going to switch to the next map here. And the map is going to be... The Decrepit Moor. Ooh, evil. Yes, the Decrepit Moor. It's a very, very cool map. A little bit of a Sylvanian theme. Vampire counts are always fun. So there we go. And we'll see what gets picked. Now, players, mirror matches are extremely unlikely in our new pick and ban system that we're utilizing today. Very, very low likelihood that that's going to be happening. So uh, for all of you guys who hate mirror matches, including myself, we can celebrate a little bit. I'm going to cast the... No, tomorrow I'm uh, going to a family member's birthday, so I won't be casting anything tomorrow. Fashion. Extraordinary content as always. If we had a massive best out of three tournament between all players who would win between... Who would win between the, be the winner? Doctor... Are you talking about Professor Pwn? I'm not sure who that is, Fashion. Is that like an anime reference? I have no idea. Of course, Professor Pwn would win. He's the GOAT. They're, they're lucky that he didn't decide to play today or else it would be 100% uh, over. Yeah, I think you got to consolidate down on two points against green skins. I think playing three is a little bit too risky. Lizardmen really benefit from like sacking on each other too. Croxagors and Saris are such a power combo. Like green skins don't really have a super effective answer against that except trolls maybe. Like if you have a Saris unit and a, and a Croxagor standing on top of it, they're going to be able to fight off pretty much anything the green skins can throw at them. Uh, of course, the missiles can do some nasty work, but that's where you have a battle toad nearby, giving them ward save and giving them, you know, earth bloods, all that kind of goodness. Are the heralds for demon factions? There, some of them are okay. The herald of corn is—he's not a terrible choice for like a really cheap lord, but he's a little bit squishy. Like I think he's always worse than the chaos and human equivalents. Um, the herald of Nurgle is viable because he can bring good lords of magic. He has mobility and he has a free AOE heal, so I would say he's viable. The Slanesh one is just such a glass cannon. That it's very dangerous to pick. Um, yeah, the Zinch Heralds, I suppose they're not bad. Yeah, the Zinch Herald Lord is okay. I've used them before against like Ogre Kingdoms in competitive to have pretty good success. Yeah. Pretty good success indeed. Thought about casting some novice tourneys? Yeah, I think so. I think I would do that at some point. I think I would definitely cast some of those, uh, those mid-level tournaments. Could be fun. All right, so we're waiting on the picks and bans now. Tim almost sent me the invite. That's pretty funny. 
So those lads going to start. Should be a minute here. And um, once the other match is done, I'll have them start on their picks and bans. So when that is ready, we should be able to jump into that one like right away. But well, this is our first best of three of the day for anybody just joining. Uh, we have Tim the Wilder versus Hadris and uh, Scrambled Lake Special versus either Berserk or Houseplant. So we're going to see who wins that one. Houseplant is the current uh, defending champ of Total Tavern. He won the last big championship. So we're going to see if he can do that again today. Very fun stuff. Tim the Wilder has gotten to the finals of Total Tavern's championship several times. I think three times or twice. Yeah, he's gotten to the finals. I believe he was defeated by Houseplant once or maybe twice even. But yeah, Tim is a very, very good player. Dr. Pwn has arrived. Uh-oh, Prof Pwn's here. And Gunhound. Hey, Gunhound, how you doing, man? I think it's going good. Good to see you as always, brother. Yes, we're just getting it uh, going here. We just finished our first game of the day. And now we're getting ready for our second one. Players doing their sneaky, sneaky picks and bans. All right. Grand Finals. No, so basically, Season 5 ended a while back, like almost a month and a half ago, two months maybe month and a half give or take uh and i just wanted to i was waiting for there was like a patch that came out a couple weeks ago i was waiting for that and then some other things came up so this is the grand finals of the previous season yeah that's that's how we roll hmm. sounds good Mesheva. i'll look into casting some of the intermediate tournaments as well it's probably a little bit more wild there i've been experimenting with some corn as well uh i think corn has some okay tools against green skins i still think it's massively green skin favored but the Minotaurs of Corn are very good at killing a lot of green skin units for the same reason Croxigors are. Croxies are better because they're higher armor, but the Minos definitely kill a little bit quicker in my experience. Is this tournament listed somewhere uh, else that the normal tournament page? Would love to see the brackets. Uh, yeah, so it's we have a Discord, like a event Discord where we're running this tournament, but um, I can tell you who was playing today. So the top 16 was Tim the Wilder, Dustman, Catholic, Alcoholic, All Rick Roll, Outer Region, Charix, Hadris, Noctrum, Houseplant, Subutai, Berserk, Hitman Hippo, Syracuse Stingers, Housecat, and Scrambled Lake Special. Uh, those were the players who could appear today. Opponent says, I'm the only one not in this journey because I was banned from it for not having enough tourney wins. That's right. If only you didn't get banned for not having enough tournament wins, you could be here crushing all opposition that lie before you. Okay. Really curious what they're going to be picking here. Uh, Tim will probably switch on to Lizards because that's he's a main like he, it's not that he's he's certainly not chasing that meta bandwagon He is a Lizardman main. So uh, he will probably play them in this game What would Hadri's counter pick be? I don't know what his counter pick would be. Hadri's is pretty good at ogres um, He's good at Warriors of Chaos. Warriors of Chaos Against dinos is an interesting one. It is winnable for Warriors of Chaos. It's not the easiest it's very sweaty, but typically what you would do is you just bring a Bunicaster, okay? Uh, you use the Bunicaster to kill the Salamanders, and then you use Chaos Armor Trolls uh, with a varying, you know, depends on what infantry you want to bring, but yeah, Chaos Armor Trolls with infantry. Valkia is actually really good there too because she's super hard to kill, and you can use her to hunt down Salamanders the entire game and just make sure those things can't really uh, get the job done. Yes. Felix say we'll go back to two lords. Two lords. Yeah, so the new news was pretty interesting. How they, um, I don't really do like news videos and things like that. Um, but yeah, the fact that you're, didn't they, didn't they say that you're going to be able to buy the um, aspects of the DLC separately? If so, that's kind of a kind of a neat thing. I think that's nice. Because like, you know, there's been plenty of DLCs where I myself was like, I'm not interested in this faction. Um, you know, so that would be kind of a cool thing to be able to just choose what you want to play. Pwn just comes into the Grand Finals with the Stone Cold Steve Austin music. <laughs> just with the Skaven Mass Eschen build against like Houseplant or something. That would be that would be pretty legendary for sure. I'm going to play this game until High Elves finally become S tier. High Elves, how are they doing this, this season? Let's see. I think they're like mid tier. Charix plays them. He's pretty good at them. Uh, let's go here. Where are the High Elves at? Uh, okay. Yeah, High Elves at 50% basically, that's pretty good. Like all these factions, like these factions are a little bit too strong in my opinion. These ones right here, right? I think these guys need a little bit of a tuning down. Um, Norska, I don't know how I feel about Norska. I don't feel like Norska is that bad. Lizardmen and Greenskins are just a little bit too easy and strong. Um, vamp like all these, Nurgle at a 53% win rate. I don't know what Dark Pact was made. Uh, I think I know why, though. There's a player in our community who's in the top four. If you take a look at him, uh, Scrambled Lake Special, he plays Nurgle like, in competitive matches 
and beats like high tier factions. So if anything, I would have to say it's his fault as to why Nurgle has a good win rate at 53%. Um, but yeah, these guys are all honestly looking pretty good. Like even Grand Cathay is starting to climb their win rate. They're fine. Um, for the weak factions, yeah, Skaven, uh, Corn could probably use a little bit of milk. Warriors of Chaos, I think, are actually fine probably. I don't know why they're down there, but I guess just a lot of newer players maybe play them and lose games. But yeah, Vampire Coast needs some buffs too. They seem really haggard. Like I try playing Coast all the time and it's just always just a rough experience, you know? All right, so Hadris, we can show you guys what this looks like real quick. All right. Uh, he has gone for Ogre Kingdom, Skaven and Tomb Kings. Oh my God, guys, we have a dreaded Skaven pick. Yeah, this is, this is pretty nuts. This is pretty nuts. And Tim DeWild are going with Norska, Dark Elves, and Empire. Okay. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to, there's not going to be a mirror match here. And this is going to be fun. Yeah, shout out to Subutai for coming up with the new pick and ban format. I think it's really good. I think it's much better. Uh, let me see for a second here. You can do this. Yep. So they should be done with it in a second. We're pretty close to getting our matchup and we'll see it in just a second. I feel the warp overtaking me. Oh, look, I found the voice line. Pwn, you saw it, right? From Dawn of War. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can play it. I have it on my desktop. It's probably going to jump scare you guys. It's my favorite voice line from Dawn of War 2. It makes me laugh every time. Yes, this is the Nurgle. Here we go. Hopefully it's not too loud. Let the Nurglings feast. <laughs> so good. Let the Nurglings feast, yeah. Oh, I don't know why that one always makes me laugh. So good, man. So good. Okay, let me switch this back now. Give me one second. Probably going to explode my computer. Come on. All right, and move back here. Great. Should be all good. Oh, well, it's very good. A Tomb King matchup. Chariots, more chariots. Yeah. I, I would love to see some Tomb Kings. They're pretty good. Tomb Kings are like a strong faction, but they don't feel overpowered. It feels like you have to work for it, you know? Oh, it was very loud. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, it was, it didn't look that loud on my, my levels, but yeah, hopefully it wasn't too bad. It's, it's better when you say it. <laughs> the Loki Feast. Yeah, we're going to, Pone and I are going to be playing some Dawn of War Ultimate Apocalypse mod soon for Ledron. It, the, the prophecy is finally coming fully, full circle. Uh, he downloaded it the other day and he was showing me how it works. So, um, so we'll do that. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, Nerglings are great. Little bandits. They're fun little creatures. <laughs> you like the my delivery better? Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. I do appreciate that. Okay, so they're doing their deep thinking right now. No problem, no problem. So, yeah, it's it's got to be Norska versus Ogre, Skaven versus Ogre, or, or, yeah, oh, man, I don't know, not Skaven, or Skaven versus Norska, probably. Hadri's doing his picks and bans right now. Yeah, they're taking taking their time with the old picks here. I don't know who's won the other side. I think Berserk and Houseplant are legit still playing, which is crazy. I'm just gonna message them and confirm they're still playing. You and Ur are still playing, yeah? Okay, just confirming with Houseplant. They may have finished and not reported the score to me, who knows? Uh, won't there be a disconnect? It's Dawn of War 1, yeah, it's Dawn of War 1. Yes, correct. I did, I, I did spoil it, Professor Phone, I did. Turn at the Warhammer Soundbot, best best top 40 radio DJ out there. I feel like being a radio DJ would be a pretty wild job. I mean, radio is definitely like a, like a dying medium to an extent, but, you know, I still put it on when I'm driving every now and then. Um, and it's so like, I wonder what the history is. You know how when you listen to like FM radio, it's like, you know, relatively normal. But then when you switch to AM radio, it's like, it sounds like you're in an apocalypse, you know? Like the quality is terrible. It's all these like weird, really esoteric stations that are just like, just really creepy. <laughs> you know, what, what is the deal with that? Well, like, why does FM radio sound like it's like normal? And then you get, you go to AM radio and it's like, you're in some like biblical apocalypse or something. It's, it's very strange. It's very strange. The Lord of Buildups, Tim, I know. Sigma bless this ravaged body. Yeah, Carl, I'll have to get a good proper soundboard going. I'll work on it. Uh, Green, uh, Kislev is banned from the event. They literally have no counters. Kislev is just stupid strong. Kislev used to lose the Greenskins, but after they got those Halberd units, they don't anymore. The Halberd units basically counter the trolls, uh, which was the one way that Greenskins could kind of take them on. So yeah, in my experience, Kislev just doesn't have any counters and is really unfair. So we just we just kind of ban them. Uh, how do the picks and bans take so long? Players, you know, if it were 
It depends on the player. It depends on the player. All right. That sounds good. Yeah, Berserk and Berserk and Tim or Berserk and Houseplant are on game three right now. Yeah. <laughs> Tim saying he wanted to play Empire, but Hadri's banned it out. Oh no. Hadri's with the evil bands. Extra evil. AM is where radio stations go to die. Yeah, I don't know what it is about that. I don't think radio, it's basically live podcast. I guess so. But yeah, that's what I'm saying is like podcasting is, you know, in online podcasts and things like that, I feel like just crush them. But I don't know. My experience is extreme, extremely limited to where I live. I, I know that like in the Midwest, I have some family out there and in the South who really enjoy radio shows. Like they go really hard on the radio shows. Yeah. AM channels are cheaper. Okay. Okay. Got it. How would you like to see Kissel have nerfed? Uh, I think you need to maybe consider massively lowering the change of Glorious Charge. The fact that Kissel of Cavalry get like a disgusting charge bonus, like as if they flanked you when they're charging you from the front is really broken. On top of that, I think Armored Cossars need a nerf. They're just literally like such an oppressive infantry unit. They're really good in melee. Their shooting is really strong. I would start by maybe lowering their stats a tiny bit and reducing the armor piercing on their missile shot to be the same as free company militia. So they wouldn't like just annihilate things with their shooting. Uh, and number two, I would probably make a 50 gold cost increase on the halberds. With all that being done, I think you could also buff the frost worm as well for Kislev, make that thing because it's awful. Uh, and yeah, then Kislev would probably be more or less, they would be really strong still, but it wouldn't be as bad. AM is shorter range, so it's inherently local, and larger networks largely ignore it. Got it, understood. One ton hammer, thank you for the donation. Yes, hopefully we're getting there soon. One ton hammer, thank you. Greatly appreciate it, man. AM signals, yeah, you, man, we got a lot of people in chat who know about the AM FM thing. This is impressive. Hey, one ton, thank you. I really, really appreciate that, boss. All right, so it's either Ogre Kingdoms versus Norska or Tomb Kings versus Norska. I wonder which one Hadries will pick. Um... Hmm. I don't know about that. They're both a little scary. The burning... I would probably go Tomb Kings with Kotep. I would go Tomb Kings, Kotep, Spell Spam, Lich Staff to block the magic and burning heads. Um, I would go maybe like one Catapult and like two Shopty Grapos. Uh, I don't know though. It's still risky. Norska Zangabunga can be very hard to stop, but this map is very good for Tomb Kings artillery. You just kind of plop it up on the open and with your Shopty Grapos and use Nehekara Horseman to defend your backfield with like a single Sepulchral Stalker, and I don't think Norska can shut down your backfield. But your front line typically will lose because of Burning Head and Wolfric. Uh, and Wolfric's a bit of a problem too. He can like hunt down Kotep, so that is actually kind of dangerous. Hmm. Yeah, who knows? Did they ever fix Katarine Sled? I don't know. I don't know if they did. Kislev are supposed to cause fear when they charge. That's why Glorious charged it in the tabletop. Yeah, it's just a little bit busted in the scope of this game, though. They would, you know, I don't mind them keeping Glorious Charge, but if you want to do that, make them more expensive. Like, you need to add a pretty big premium on top of that to make the Kislev Cavalry more expensive if they're going to be that strong. They fixed the sled already? Okay, that's good. Hmm. The only answer against Ungabunga is more Ungabunga, Ogres. So Ogres against Norska is tricky. The Javelins are very strong, um, although really sweaty Ogre play can do it. Like Noblar Trappers throwing into Marauder Berserkers is really cost effective. Iron Blasters can be, you know, kind of fun too. Uh, it depends on which matchup Hadrius has actually practiced. We're going to have to see. Uh, yeah, but we got Berserk and uh, Houseplant wrapping up the other series. They did Greenskins versus Demons of Chaos and Greenskins versus Grand Cathay in their matches. Okay, very, very interesting. Yeah, Berserk plays, he plays pretty off meta as far as I can tell. But like, it's his meta, you know. Um, he plays Grand Cathay, he plays Demons of Chaos, if I'm not mistaken. Like, okay, Norska vs. Ogres. Hey, this is a fun matchup. This is going to be a fun one. I'm, I'm excited for this. <laughs> YouTube subtitles. Yeah, YouTube subtitles can be really janky, especially when people are talking fast. Man, by the way, there is a show that I've been, um, that I've been uh, listening, or not listening to, that we were talking about podcasts. My brain was on another frequency there. But man, this show on Netflix called Physical 100, it is so fun. I, I binged that show in like two days. So it's basically a fitness show, a fitness competition um, that takes place in Korea and it's modeled after Squid Games. So they get a hundred participants 
And many of them are elite athletes. So you get like Olympic rower, you know, national team athletes, you get Olympic athletes, you get professional MMA fighters. Um, you know, you get, you get like people who aren't necessarily traditional pro athletes, but maybe like someone who's like a CrossFitter, um, power lifters, whatever. And it's, it's really, really fun. I was so addicted to it. And the challenges are intense, right? Like, I feel like if it happened in America, people would be too worried about getting sued to like do some of these things. But like some of the challenges are intense. Uh, you know, they have like one-on-one, -on -one, like kind of pit fights where they fight over like a ball or like a rope. They have like climbing and it's, it's really good. Normally like those fitness shows are really corny and not like kind of lame, a lot of them, but man, this one is good. I, I can't recommend it enough if you guys are into that kind of thing. Yeah, it's really, really fun. Really, really fun. Yeah, ogres are coming, dude. Yeah, they're coming to get you. The ogre theme song is for sure uh, very fun. Okay. Perfect. All right. And here we are. <laughs> CrossFit is OP in Physical 100 <laughs> because all the challenges are random nonsense. <laughs> That's a really funny take, dude. Yeah, that's a really funny take. Yeah, no, it's really fun though. It's it's a it's a very fun show, and um, yeah, there's two seasons. I think it's great. If you guys are into that kind of thing, it's good. You know, like it. What it, what it does really well is the reason why I think a lot of people, myself included, liked MMA and mixed martial arts in the '90s. It was like. You know, before the 90s and the 80s, you had all these like, you know, Bullshito martial artists. You're like, who is actually the best, you know, butt kicker, right? Is it the guy who kicks a lot? Is it the, is it the kickboxer? Is it the, you know, the boxer, the, the street fighter guy, whatever, the jujitsu guy, the wrestler? And like MMA kind of showed which ones were the best and then fused them all together into what we now call a mixed martial artist. So, but it was so fun seeing people from different professions compete, right? Like in this show, you can see somebody who is a special forces guy who's also a firefighter competing against somebody who's like an Olympic, you know, or, uh, you know, a professional rugby player. Like it's very fun. It's very, very fun. Yeah. Yeah, it did have a lot of military in the first season. Yeah. Man, wait for the <laughs> dogs of war. Yeah, I don't know if that's... I remember that was a meme a long time ago. Now that you finished that, you can... Uh, yes, Pone. It's next. It's, it, it's somewhere on the docket. Yes. Firebelly, uh, yeah, honestly, yeah. I don't hate the Firebelly. I think he's good. This matchup, in my anecdotal experience, is massively favored for um, for the Norskins. Like, massively. But, I mean, Hadrius is a really good player, but he's also playing Tim. Tim is somebody who practices matchups a bit. Uh, he knows the matchups pretty well in and out, so Hadrius is going to have to really outplay him here or surprise him in some way. Yeah. The first UFCs were fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. They were that, that shit was the Wild West. I remember one of the first UFCs you had this, like, there was this, uh, I don't know if, remember if he was French or if he was, like, if he was somewhere, somewhere in maybe Holland or something. It was like this kickboxer guy, Gerard Gordeaux or something. I can't remember his name. Oh, man. But he, like, fought a sumo wrestler. So one of the first UFCs, you have, like, a freaking sumo wrestler. This, like, huge guy, like, like 500-pound dude, like, sumo wrestler, like, coming out of kickboxer. And the kickboxer, like, kicks him in the head and, like, knocks it. Like, or, no, he kicks him while he's down. I can't remember. But he knocks the guy's teeth out. You could, like, actually see the guy's teeth flying. That shit was savage. Like, early UFC was wild as hell. Yeah, wild. Have you heard about the, uh, I have not, I have not heard about that series. No. Pride FC. I loved pride. Pride was some of my favorite stuff. Like watching a Hongman Choi battle, uh, Fedor Emelianenko was, um, Emelianenko, excuse me, was one of my favorite, just ridiculous freak show fights of all time. Like freak show fights, I think are the spice of life in MMA. There's a couple promotions in Eastern Europe that are really good at doing freak show fights. You'll get like, you'll get, you'll just get the most wild stuff. You'll get like, uh, like there was one I saw recently on YouTube. It was like a morbidly obese dude, like just a huge guy that looks like Kingpin. And he's like fighting against like a, a, a couple, like a really, really small couple. So like, it's just like huge guy fighting this, like this. And it's just the wild shit, you know? Yeah. Gordo is one of the dirtiest fighters of all time. He blunt. Yeah. 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 Fast one city. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that. How long do we keep covering Total War? Oh, well, you know, a long time. Yeah, I, I love Warhammer Fantasy in general. I think it's such a good setting, so. 
we'll cover we'll cover Total War Warhammer uh, for a while, a long time. Don't you guys worry. Oh my God, Don Fry versus uh, Takahama was his name, Yoshihiro Takahama. Yeah, that fight was freaking insane. I wish I, I wish we could like watch this stuff together. I feel like YouTube would karate chop us, but I would love to show you. Um, yeah, so look up Don Fry versus Yoshihiro Takahama. Mansoor in chat has typed it. That shit is freaking wild. They literally just grab each other's faces and just start going at it. Like, it's not even, there's no MMA. It's just like a two dudes fighting in a phone booth. And if you look at the video of them, like, after the fight, one of their faces, like, literally looks like a 1980s, like, body horror prosthetic. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah, no balance on the matchups. But that's kind of what made it fun, you know? That's what made it fun. All right, so Norris goes ready. Hadrius is doing the big scheming right now. Um, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> no, no, no worries. Tim is Tim is uh, he's apologizing a little bit for the uh, for the build. He's like, I apologize for how long this is going to take me to attack, <laughs> which is totally fine, dude. You're good. Don't worry about it. You know, this is we want to see the sweatiest of the sweaty. Here we go, baby. Game two. Yeah. Don Fry, yeah, Jack Freddie Mercury. He really did look like Freddie Mercury, didn't he? Yeah, he did. They were too scared to put Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal, in my opinion, is such a fraud. Yeah, but, you know, I could, I could be wrong, but... All right, wow, look at that build from Hadrius. All right, so he's got a Slaughtermaster Beast and a Firebelly. Triple Lead Belcher. This is a truly forbidden build. Wow, look at that. Triple Lead Belcher, double caster hero. Which is, I'm surprised it's not like a tyrant or something. Maybe he's got, maybe he's got troll guts on the Slaughtermaster only. I'm really curious about that. And he's got throwing weapons, couple Noblars, and one Ogre Bull. All right. What is my favorite Warhammer 40k faction? Death Guard. Yeah, Death Guard. I, I love, I, I'm a big Nurgle enjoyer, but I like Nurgle mortals. I don't really care for Nurgle demons that much, except Nurglings. Uh, so if you give me like Nurgle marked humans, that's like my favorite. Like I love the Death Guard. I, I love the Baroque scary armor. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think they're so cool. That's a beast slaughter master. Probably flock of doom spam, maybe. All right, guys, taking a look over at the old forces of Hadries. Hadries going to be coming in with the fat chungus here in the woods. It is going to be the slaughter master, a flock of doom, and uh, extra ingredients. On top of that, lead vultures are good here. I mean, they can tear apart whatever they shoot for sure. Um, a little bit hard to defend them with the beast of Tashnar and condom wolves coming for them. Skin wolves, it could be hard. A lot of noblars and um, also some ogre bulls. I think bringing like the uh, sky striders might actually still be worth it in this matchup. Although Hadrius did not bring troll guts, so bringing big expensive cavalry might not be the best play. It could be a bit of a you know a blunder. Yeah, I like great unclean ones too. Actually, yeah, I do like him. I just don't care for the plague bearers and like the other stuff. All right, so Marauders, and we got Throg the Troll King. I mean, no surprises here, right? Throg is an absolute beast. He's got anti-large, he's got armor piercing, he's got frostbite. He's got a lot of great tools. We got skin wolves, which again are excellent against ogres. They regenerate their, uh, especially the armored variant, right? Because most ogre bulls in general don't have huge AP. So having the armored skin wolves is going to be very, very tough for Hadrius to deal with. He's going to have to shoot them with the lead belchers, which is very hard to do when they're flanking around your army and you know, getting extra sneaky, sneaky. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, just skin wolves and marauders with Throg and uh, the caster. I don't know if we saw the caster from Tim, but Tim said he's basically going to be building up and uh, chilling out in the trees. Okay. Let's see here. And it is time. Let them feast. So it's going to be five or six minutes before Tim attacks, probably. So Hadrian should definitely triple cap him and just, you know, Keep him honest, force him out of the tree line, and uh, then just kind of helm deep on your back objective when you get enough of a point lead. But you don't want to like fight on all three objectives per se. What you want to do is get your dudes, go get objective here, get this one, and then grab this one, and then only leave like one unit holding this while your lead belchers are sitting right here and covering it, right? Uh, to make sure that Tim doesn't get any points. You gotta kind of completely starve him out. You gotta, you gotta starve him out here. Yeah, the Toads of Nurgle are cool too, but the tabletop models, I guess, eh, they're alright. They're kind of haggard, but they do their best. They do their best indeed. So where's the caster for Tim's army? Uh, he does call in a metal caster. So it is going to be Plague of Rust, most likely designed to help deal with the, uh, the big armor targets. So like Iron Guts, as well as the Crushers and things like that, and the big cavalry, you know, the Mornfang Cav, not Crushers, but Mornfang. 
And uh, Searing Doom, interesting choice. I'm curious to see how effective this is against the Ogre units. It's something that you would think is only really good against infantry, but yeah, in my experience, I've seen it do okay against monsters infantry, and the Ogres, of course, are not the uh, you know most high armor of lads. So Lead Belcher's heading out. Hadri's probably going to be calling in Iron Guts. Uh, you could get a little Scrap Launcher, I suppose, and shoot into the trees, but Tim is going to be doing a big dreaded buildup here. We got the Ogre Bulls maneuvering out, so here they come, looking extra big and extra thick. So, yep, yeah, they're moving out and uh, looking cool. I feel like ogres are a pretty underrated faction. I mean, they got nerfed a bit in a lot. It was like the the meme from Toy Story. You remember, like when when Sid is is it Sid or is it the the main character? No, it's the main character. He's like, I don't want to play with you anymore. You know, that that's basically what the ogre kingdoms became. I I still feel they're very competitive and very viable in the hands of like the right players. But yeah, obviously when they become became not broken anymore, a lot of the good players abandoned them. But um, yeah, I still feel like they're good. I still feel like they are good. And somebody in chat asking, what is the use of marching column formation? Are you, if you're talking about old world, it's pretty terrible. And generally, I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, but yeah, in this game, I mean, yeah. Uh, the pencil formation, as they call it. So if you're doing what I call the pencil formation, um, it basically is, if you have a really crappy unit, okay, engaging against a superior unit, you give less surface area and let them only beat down the front rank. So then your crappy unit will survive longer. Yes, your damage is going to be pretty negligible, but overall, um, yeah, that that's the way. So I really like the play from Hadri so far. He's doing exactly what we talked about. He's screening with the Lead Belchers to make sure Tim can't even contest this objective. But Tim will be surging out here soon-ish. But he is going to be losing all three objectives out of the gates, which is going to give Hadri's a pretty substantial lead. And um, yeah, a little bit of a fun tidbit about this. So before the game started, Tim the Wilder told me he said, I have ne I am 15 wins and zero losses in this match of this season uh, in practice games and whatnot against other high-level players. So apparently Tim has never, he literally just hasn't lost this matchup like since the Ogres got nerfed. Like he hasn't lost it. So this is going to be, this is going to be a very tough test for Hadrius because Tim practices with the best of the best. And Hadrius is certainly one of the best of the best. He's, he's, he's a top tier player. Um, but Tim seems to have, uh, you know, practiced this matchup quite a bit. So, yeah, maybe Hadri's build is unorthodox and we'll catch him off guard. We do see the dreaded pencil formation setting up. Why is he waiting? So let me explain. So what Tim likes to do, and this is, he's really the only player who does this. He, he likes to maximize his supplies. So you see how you're getting supplies here? He does that. He builds up a huge army, like as big as he can possibly squeeze out. And he's done, he's like a, a math guy. He did the numbers on like the biggest army he can squeeze out while alpha striking his opponent and still having time to capture the objectives. I'm telling you, it gets really, really wild. So he's just trying to get as big of a force as possible to overwhelm the ogre position um, and make sure he can swarm effectively. So we do get the sky striders. I like that choice. They do magic damage, so they can kill the Armored Skin Wolves super effectively. So they're going to be a really good sweeper for the Lead Belchers. You keep them in the secondary, and you have them fight. But yeah, this is like, he's the only one who really does that. Um, myself, it's a little bit too anxiety-inducing. Like, playing this way is, uh, you know, very, very nerve-wracking. I, I really don't like it. But he's going to move out around the five-minute mark, as far as what he was telling me. He, he was giving me the play-by-play -play here, for sure. He's not the only player. Who else does this, Serkia, in your experience? Uh, it's not super common, you know. He plays land battle and dumb basically <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, no, he plays early land battle. This is like land battle in the early days before it was when it was more Wild West and we didn't have any, as many rules. I have no idea how the Houseplant Berserk game is still possibly happening, which is just nuts. I have no idea how that's happening. But nonetheless, it is on. Throg just kind of spinning around doing some circles. And uh, looking here, we got the Marauder Hunters. Skinwolf's going to be moving out now, so Tim will be advancing out probably in the next like 30 seconds to a minute, I would guess. Yeah, who else does this playstyle? I, I don't run into it too often. It's not uncommon in RTK, you're saying? Okay, fair play. So you're saying a lot of the RTK guys do it? Yeah. It, it can work. It's just so scary. It's so scary. Like, you give your opponent such a points lead that if the fight's even kind of close, like I feel like it just gives them an advantage, you know? I mean, but the matchup is obviously, he's saying Norskin favored, but... Laggiest game of all time? No. Yeah, maybe they're lagging on the other side. I sure hope not. Because then we would have to suffer through that as well. Yeah, that would be that would be painful. But yeah, Hadrius is happy to just kind of consolidate his defenses. His call-ins are going to be Ogre Bulls and Noblars. He does have his triple lead belcher. He's got Saber Chest Packs. And uh, for his caster, he does have Flaming flaming Sword of Ruin. Okay, I don't hate that. It's kind of a check against the, uh, against the Skin Wolves and some of the physical resist that Norska does have. 
And on top of that, he does fire damage and is a good fighter. And this bad boy is Flock of Doom. So he's got a damage spell and he's got a buff spell as well to try and help win some of those fights. Uh, the Sky Striders do do magic damage. You don't really need a Flaming Sword on them, but Flaming Swording on your... Um, I guess you could do it on Lead Belchers too to give them a damage boost. I believe it's range units, right? Yeah, base missile damage as well. So it's not just that. Oh, yeah, I always forget you can do that. You can pull that up. It's pretty neat. I wonder if this would be a good scat for greenskins. Maybe. Yeah, it depends. Norska, Norska's going to push out, though, like right now. You can see Tim's coming out of the trees, so he's going to do a big envelop, right? So this this kind of reminds me of the scene from the 13th Warrior. You remember? Oh, I love that movie, by the way. It's so good. The one with Antonio Banderas. It's like a late 90s, early... I think it was late 90s, mid 90s. When the when the big like barbarian horde comes down and you see the line of fire in the mountain. This is like kind of like that situation, although it's it's obviously not like a human faction fighting them, but... You feel like Tim is overcooking? Yeah, he might be getting a little bit too... I mean, 750 points is absolutely insane. Like, by the time he gets there, his opponent's going to be, like, close to 800 points. Hadris should yield the home objective. Do not, I repeat, do not try and fight for this. You pull back, consolidate your strength on two points. If I were Hadris, I would even pull my army back a little bit like this and create, uh, like, a more defensive formation that is harder to envelop, right? I, I think that's what he needs to do. But he might be getting a little bit too crazy. A little bit too crazy. And Hadrius did pick Skaven, by the way. So if we do see a victory from him here, which, uh, you know, is not going to be easy. We could see a Skaven pick in the next game, which would be very fun. Not many people play the Skaven. All right, so Lead Belcher is going to start shooting on all fronts. And they're going to get attacked pretty quickly. He's going after the Spears. We do see a Spear unit getting blasted into the Shadow Realm. And the Ogres await the charge of the Norskin Ungabunga. Almost 900 points, and we do see a little bit of an outflank coming in. So Saber Chest Packs and Iron Guts are getting ready to support, while the Condom Wolves continue to uh, prepare to, to uh, get into the back line if they can. Noblar is being sent to Skin Wolves is very cost-effective. Very, very cost-effective indeed. Uh, I think the Lead Belchers need to get slightly more cost-effective shooting and start shooting into the monsters. Throg, it looks like he's moving straight in for it. But yeah, are they shooting Skin Wolves or not? So a bit of a misplay from Hadri's, in my opinion. We do get Skin Wolves on top of Ogre Bulls here. So Hadri is a little bit overwhelmed, but should be engaging here and getting his trappers into support, and he could actually win that fight. Meanwhile, on the side objective, we do see it being contested a little bit, and the Iron Guts being focused down by a lot of Javelins. Overall, Tim is getting the better engagements, I think, in some areas. Uh, those Javelins are going to be brutal, and also the Skin Wolves are going to be nasty. So Hadri could just fall back in Helm's Deep now. Like, that's also a very viable thing. In the middle, we see a big flock of Jim going down, but oh man, Hadri's might have thrown the game. Yeah, letting a Slaughtermaster get caught in combat with Throg is very, very dodgy. Like, there's no reason that should be happening. Here in the backfield, Ogre Bulls getting the Flaming Sword of Ruin, and they're going to continue ripping shots. We see the value massively favoring Tim the Wilder. Yeah, I think Hadrius might have just blundered by throwing a Slaughtermaster into combat here. And also on this side, it's looking very rough. You know, maybe consolidating back and pulling onto your home point would have been the way to do it. The way he's kind of playing right now, uh, he, he kind of just, a lot of his units got isolated and picked, and... You know, this would be a close game, actually. Like, the Slaughtermaster is pretty much giving up all the value here that Tim the Wilder has. But we do see the Slaughtermaster getting killed. Adrius needs to just Helm's Deep on his back objective right now if he can. Just get everything there and try and hold it. Up in the front, though, we do see the Norskin Ungabunga overwhelming these troopers. And uh, the Ogre Bulls here, though, they have the Flaming Sword of Ruin. Probably not going to be holding for too much longer. And here, uh, old Tim, you know, playing a little bit dangerously, but getting it done, it looks like. A couple Ogre Bulls still fighting on the point. They do trade pretty considerable into uh, considerably well into those units, but overall it's going to be a bit of a mass route here. Um, yeah, the Slaughtermaster getting thrown into the middle. Uh, yeah, the waiting makes your opponent sleepy. That's right. That's the plan. You, you lull them into a false sense of confidence, and then you uh, you do it. But yeah, Tim the Wilder has won this game a million percent. The Norskin, uh, the Norskin Horde just crushed it. Uh, super hard. Super hard. And again, it was kind of a similar mistake to the same game. I mean, I think pulling back a more defensive formation... Not throwing away the Slaughtermaster, obviously, and uh, it still feels massively Norskin favored, but, you know, there's a lot to experiment with for sure. Saber Chest Pack here does get a good pick. This is a nice find for Hadri's. The Feral Man Square will not trade well into all these high DPS uh, kind of monstrous uh, little doggo units. Back objective looks like it's perhaps going to be flipping. Uh, Hadri's, you know, kind of closing in on winning on points, but I don't know if he's going to be able to find a way. If he can, like, ninja some objectives and really kind of rally here in the backfield, maybe, maybe something could happen, but... Overall, I think maybe just pulling back here and um, defending that third objective could have been the smart play. Just creating a box, basically, and forcing your opponent to fight you in a choke point instead of getting enveloped and punished by javelins. Really hard to say, though, honestly. I, I suck at ogres. I don't really know how I would go about that. It seems like it's hard. The javelins seem super cost-effective. Norska has so much really, really good anti-large between skin wolves, javelins, throg. Uh, it just seems hard for the ogres to feasibly compete with that. You know what I'm saying? 
So that is going to be the steel chair for sure. But well played to Hadrian's. Let's give our boy a big shout out. He's been a top dog since the Warhammer 2 days. And on top of that, he has not been playing like at all. Hadrian's, I haven't seen him in tournaments whatsoever. And he came in today. He got to the top four and he only then lost to, you know, one of the best players in the entire world. So yeah, no, absolutely no shame in that. And uh, yeah, it's a tough matchup. It's a tough one. So the Chungus is moving in. Probably Tomb Kings would have been, in retrospect, a bit of a safer one, but that is going to be it. GG. Well played. All right. So moving on to the brackets, let's go take a look. That is going to be a 2-0 victory for Tim. Tim showing why his build and strategy against Ogres is literally 16-0. He has not lost with that. So that is pretty brutal indeed. All right. You ready for the fancy graphics? Oh, yes. High production value is why you guys are here. So GG, well played. That is going to be Tim advancing on to the Grand Finals. And how are they still possibly in Game 3? Uh, you two... Still... Okay, so this was like 30 minutes ago. Let's see. Uh, 1 hour... at uh, uh, one sixteen p.m. He said he was on Game 3. So that was like, like almost 45 minutes ago. I'm checking in with Houseplant to see. It looks like they're sweating. Let me check the RT RTK Discord. I can see if he's he's streaming his game in there. Uh, is he? No, it doesn't look like it. I don't think so. All right. So we'll find out in a second. Shows us MS Paint skills. Need an epical, epic musical effect. I do indeed, you know. Now you know where the budget went. I know. Big budget, yes. But looking at the value of the army, I mean, obviously, Skin Wolves probably did good. Yep, pretty nice performance. Throg with 1,200. The Slaughtermaster getting caught and beaten down there was tough. It was, it was a hard matchup. It's a really difficult matchup. I feel like it's just like a huge, huge favor for Norska. Yeah, Triple Lead Belcher isn't bad. I think maybe pulling them back more and being like really, really defensive. Maybe two of them. Maybe three is overkill. I don't really know, though, to be honest. I don't know. Can you move the wall like that every time you move a graphic? Yes. Perhaps that's a good idea. Okay, so looks like they're still in game three. That is insane. They must be having like the sweatiest matchup known to man. So let me get the next lobby set up. So we're going to get that set up with Scrambled Egg Special. All right, so let me find him and do this. And this is going to be egg versus, all right, host the spectator. And it is go time. Scrambled Egg Special is a really fun player. He's extremely, extremely off meta. And he's been dominating a lot of tournaments lately. All right. Uh, you are up. So Scrambled Egg should be joining us. And as far as the map goes, let me go ahead and check that. Matchups and maps on the bottom side of the bracket. It's going to be Chateau de Rockfort. All right. So the Chateau is upon us. There we are. Scrambled Egg says they'll be there in just a moment. And now we just kind of wait. And hang tight. So sorry about the downtime. It's total war. You know, it's it's a little janky at times. We're gonna be seeing who gets there. Uh, we're not gonna be doing third place today. No, just first and second are gonna be winning the prizes. Yep. I can smell their match from here. It's it's for sure very pungent. I'm sure. Yeah. If Tim was a corn main, yeah, yeah. I think single individual good players can bring win rates of factions up because our community is small enough. Like if Tim the Wilder played only corn, he could probably win 50% of his games for sure. He could bring the win rate up to 50% because he would probably, in every tournament, like SFTs, he'd probably go three and one. He probably wouldn't win, but he would go three and then one. And like that would be consistently bringing their win rate up, which would be really funny. That would be hilarious. So Scrambled Egg is going to be, uh, let's see what he's going to be playing. Okay, copy that. All right. So... <laughs> Somebody sent me a funny meme. Okay. Uh, let me find Berserk. Wow, bit of an upset. Old Berserk of the VM clan has defeated Houseplant. So Houseplant has fallen. That is certainly not something you see often. He was defeated by Berserk in a game three. So you're up. So I messaged old Berserk. He should be arriving here shortly. Let's go ahead and update the nameplates and everything. So this is going to be Scrambled versus Berserk. All right, so I'll reset that and looking fine. Scrambled versus Berserk, very good. So this is a top four matchup and we're going to go update the bracket now. So let's do that together. You ready for some more fancy skills? 
look at look at this typing. Just look at it. It's beautiful. All right. Berserk is also a really good corn player. So if you were to ever see corn being picked, like in a competitive high level tournament, it would be right here. I believe he spells his name with two R's. Yeah, he does. Okay, so we got his name right. Ladies and gentlemen, big upset here. The new uh, the new season title is up for grabs. The defending champion will, I'm sure, be back next season. But this is it. Prepare for the lag fest of a lifetime. I really hope not. Why would you put that evil on us, dude? Oh, you're saying, I know Scrambled Egg has had some, I really hope this isn't laggy. If it is, oh man, we might have to just figure something out. We might have to figure something out. Hopefully their pick and ban phase is at least quick. So we'll see. I'm going to message Houseplant um, and see if he lagged actually his opponent. Uh, okay. So checking here. First Berserk. Picks and bans. Go, go. All right. So what is it going to be? You thought TBD was a player? Oh, that's pretty funny. Berserk is also one of the top land battle players from what I've heard. Yeah, yeah, I think so. He loves playing Chaos Demons. Yeah, he played them in the last series, which is cool. And it's always fun to see a really high level player adopt, like, you know, factions that are considered crappy and then, like, win in high stakes events with them. It just goes to show that there's a lot more to the game and the meta than, you know, meets the eye. Hmm. Signs point to lag, unfortunately. Let's hope not. Uh, I don't know where Scrambled Egg is from. We can actually check. I know that Berserk, I believe, is from Eastern Europe, um, somewhere. And uh, let's see where Scrambled Egg is from. On our Total Tavern leaderboard, it often people will choose. Yeah, yeah, Tim is, Tim is uh, this would be his first season final victory. And I believe Tim is the last hope for RTK, which is pretty wild. Normally it's like we got like four RTK guys in the top four, but today it's, uh, we had two, I believe. No, one, only one. Yeah, it was Tim. All right, so Scramble Egg is, has he played this season? I don't know if he's played too much. He must have. There he is, all right. Uh, it doesn't say where he's from. All right, he didn't, he didn't list it. A lot of people, like if you look at Total Tavern, you can see where they're from, but he did not list it. I, we just have to hope to the dark gods that it doesn't lag, you know? That's basically what needs to go down here. Because, yeah, I've lagged with both of these players before. So I'm a little nervous. Yes. Just made it to stream. It looks like I missed out. Yeah, Hadri's played very well. He, he he was in hard matchups, you know. Like, Norska is hugely favored against Ogres from what I've seen. Hugely. So that's that's hard. I think Tomb Kings may have been slightly better, but even not easy. You know, not easy. Now that Total War Warhammer 40k has basically been confirmed, what are your expectations for the game? Oh, dude, I've, been saying, I've been saying for years it's going to come. It's like the most obvious thing ever, right? Like, yeah, it's it's 40K is 100% going to happen. What are we going to start? Well, here's the thing. Uh, Games Workshop is going to decide that. So look at the Games Workshop poster boy factions, and that's who you're going to be getting. Uh, so probably like Space Marines with an Ultramarine focus. You'll get Ultramarines. Um, you'll probably get Black Legion. You'll probably get Necrons. Um, and then Orcs, Eldar... Craft World Eldar, Imperial Guard would maybe be, a, yeah, probably Imperial Guard would be like a starting faction too. I'm not sure. But those would be like kind of the ones I would think out of the gates. And then, you know, the thing about Total War Warhammer 40k, if Creative Assembly doesn't screw it up, okay, which, you know, we know we know it's, it's, it's possible, but if they don't screw it up, uh, there is such a freakish amount of DLC that they could do with that game. Like, oh, a Death Guard versus, you know, Death Guard versus whatever. Uh, you know, Iron Warriors. Uh, you know, you could do the Death Core update. You could do, you know, uh, Dark Eldar. You could do Harlequins. Like, it's it's freaky. Yeah, Tyranids too, yeah. Like, there's so many, like, Space Marine chapters you could add and just, like, add unique units and different things like that. Tau, yeah, like, Tau, whatever. It's going to be nuts. Guard won't be a base game faction. Yeah, you could be right. How disappointed would you be if they announced Age of Sigmar Total? I would be so disappointed. I, I would not. I would probably not cover Age of Sigmar Total War. I, it'd be close. If it if they launched Age of Sigmar Total War and it had a really good multiplayer system, like good dynamic multiplayer, I could be lured in. But it'd have to be like really competent, which typically CA doesn't really do a very good job with multiplayer. Um, so in that case, I would be very nervous. Um, yeah, but I really dislike Age of Sigmar. <laughs> 
yeah, I just don't like the setting. I, I don't mind the models and the gameplay that much, but yeah, the setting is tough. Um, I just don't, don't enjoy it. Yeah. They should announce the old world, yes. Total War Warhammer 4. We're back, baby. Okay, no response there. And it's uh, it's go time. Yes. I would love to see a Chaos Dwarf match, by the way. That would be a huge power fantasy. I'd be more hyped for AO. Yeah, I mean, look, I would if AOS had good multiplayer, I would still cover it. And maybe maybe I could develop a love for it. But um, I don't know. Let it cook for 10 more years. It'll probably happen at some point, though. Like, yeah, I, I bet you, like, you know, when I'm in my mid-40s, we could be getting a Age of Sigmar Total War. I don't think that'd be impossible. Hadri's in chat with a really good point. He says, Realms of Rune flopping makes me think that AOS games are going to be avoided by devs that need to make a profit. Yeah. Like, most Age of Sigmar games that I've seen don't do too well. Um, it's kind of hard to relate to the setting, you know? Like, Warhammer Fantasy is very derivative of a lot of, you know, real-world culture, which... You know, some people levy as a criticism against it, but I personally feel it's a huge strength. Like, I, I don't know. I like I've always enjoyed history. You know, I like Central European history has always been something I've been kind of interested in. So when I got into Warhammer Fantasy and Total War Warhammer, and I saw the Empire, and I was like seeing these guys with Zweihanders, like two-handed swords, battling like huge Baroque chaos warriors and stuff, I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. Um, it's, it's like grounded, but whereas when I see a Stormcast Eternal, I just see a Space Marine battling, you know, a Chaos Warrior, it, it kind of, um, or a Chaos Space Marine, which I don't really enjoy as much because we already have Space Marines and they're, they're good in their setting, right? We don't need more Space Marines in a fantasy setting. I don't know. It could have been done a different, differently, I guess. I mean, that's just my opinion, but I don't know. History made fantastical. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. So we still don't have the matchup yet. They're obviously doing their 3x3 three three grid. It can take some time. And uh, Tim awaits the winner in the Grand Finals as well. <laughs> Seeing Orcs he has the representation. Just tuned in. Love this take. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's. But, you know, it's not for everyone. You see, like, I'm, I like history a lot. And I like seeing history represented in my fantasy universes. Whereas many people don't like to see that. They like to see a completely unique from the ground up fantasy which is completely fair, you know, which is completely fair. Um, yeah, so I mean, teach their own. I just I just like that more for, for Warhammer, I guess. Which emperor is more awesome? Karl Franz or the, cor or, or the Corpse Emperor? Oh, Karl Franz all day. Yeah, yeah. Franz was going strong until the bad writing of the, the bad writing got him, you know? Franz got cheesed, basically, you know? He got cheesed by, by the Games Workshop writers in corporate. Whereas, you know, he, he definitely is a more pragmatic leader, I suppose, willing to work with, uh, you know, other races and cultures and, uh, which I think is great. So Warhammer 4, Return of the Mullet. Yes. Stormcast exists only because they wanted high fantasy Marines. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah, the AO, I, I did play, uh, I played over 50 games of AOS and played in a couple tournaments and I, I do admit I had fun at times. Um, I built a Cities of Sigmar army, which before Old World came out, the original Cities of Sigmar list uh, was Warhammer Fantasy models. You basically could use your old Empire models, which I had, I had fun playing with them. You know, I kind of got to role play that I was still playing, you know, an Empire army. But then they they basically squatted them too. They, they got rid of all that and moved on to, uh, you know, a full rework for Cities of Sigmar. And then a couple days ago, they squatted the Beastmen. Um, <laughs> So Beasts of Chaos got kicked out of Age of Sigmar, basically. And they're being sent back to the old world, which is which is fine, I guess. All right. Okay, perfect. So matchups, we got Beastmen, Slanesh, and Warriors of Chaos for Zinch, Greenskins, and Doc. Uh, I'm, I mean, I love this already. These guys are clearly very off meta. I'm really excited to see one of them face Tim in the finals. Because you have Tim, who's a very scientific, uh, you know... Uh, scientific player who likes to play like kind of the traditional meta. I'd love to see him play one of these guys who is kind of off meta a little bit. Turn, do you think you can take a regular skink from a cohort in melee? 1v1 weapon of your choice? How big are they? Yeah, yeah I mean, if I was healthy, yes. If I didn't have my crippled hands, I think so. Because I think like a state trooper can typically take on a skink. Like in a straight fight. 
Like, if you put a unit of state troopers with sword and shield against, like, a skank cohort, I'm pretty sure the state troopers win. I'd have to test that. I don't have a Dawi army, no. I don't. Yeah, so my state troopers have been double rebased. Correct, they have. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, though. My lovely wife helped me out with it, and she's, the, she's a champ, so. Order versus Chaos Final. Yes. Yeah, I don't like the double turns. Um... My one critique of Old World as a tabletop game is I don't like how strong mounted characters on dragons are. That's one thing that I think if they bring that to check, the game would just be in a much better spot. Like characters, characters on dragons are very oppressive in Old World, in my opinion. And that's one thing I didn't like about Age of Sigmar is how like a stupid 900 point model can just like determine the outcome of a game with some RNG, right? Like, okay, I'm going to shoot all my missiles into your 900 point model, your Archeon or your whatever. Uh, and all my attacks into it. And if you roll hot on your ward saves, uh, then I'm just going to lose the game. You know, there wasn't a lot of room for fluidity and back and forth. It was kind of like, you know, they have these big cheesy centerpiece models. Like, uh, like you know, playing like an Archeon list with like six Varengard or whatever. And then, and then these, like, I really dislike that. Uh, I like more boots on the ground. I do like big monsters. Like Old World did a really good job with, um, a really good job with like, most monsters not being that bad, like giants and, you know, the Necrosphinx and, uh, you know, whatever. These various monsters that don't have, can't have items attached to them are fine. I think they're good, but they also have their weaknesses and can be killed. But like big mounted monster characters in Old World are a little bit toxic, in my opinion. I do bring Monster Slayer. I bring like freaking three or four Tomb Scorpions in my Tomb Kings list just to try and cheese dragons. But I don't want to have to do that, you know, to try and win. Yeah, double turn sucks too. Now, at a high level though, once I got more developed in my tournament experience, uh, I only played two tournaments, but I also played against tournament players on a regular basis in, old, in uh, Age of Sigmar. I found that there's plenty of ways to work around the double turn. It wasn't like that bad, but that was somebody who had a lot of reps and was very competitive. For a casual player, a beer and pretzels, or somebody who's getting into the game, or I, it, it's not a very fun mechanic in my opinion. It's very like lame to just get smashed twice in a row. Um, so yeah, a little bit of ranting. The Necrosphinx who can do six decapitating strikes. Oh, uh, that's actually not true. That's that's like a those are those are just people abusing the rules. Yeah, because it's clearly not the intent of that unit. Um, the decapitating strike is supposed to only be done once. Um, and most tournaments I've seen that I've talked to, at least here in California, have made that same ruling. Yeah. Yeah, Nurgle's not doing badly, dude. Okay, we got Zinch versus Bretonia. No, he didn't pick Bretonia. Warriors of Chaos for Zinch. Okay, interesting. Berserk is on Zinch, and Scrambled Egg is going to be on the Warriors of Chaos. Wow. I play Death Guard in 40k. Yeah. Uh, how do you work around double turn? You, you just have to be really cagey with your movements and your positioning so that even if you do get double turned, they can't necessarily get really you know colossal charges and run you over. It's very... It, it, you'd have to give me more details about... The matchup and the factions and all that and honestly i don't know what the game is like anymore because i haven't played into sigmar in like three or four years but yeah rules were always secondary yeah yeah selling models is their biggest priority of course yeah i agree with that uh i think dragons and so somebody in chat garrett saying i think uh dragons and magic need to be toned down yeah yeah i think that dragons are a problem like the biggest problem for me level four wizards are very strong and they are an auto take. Uh, I would, yeah, maybe, I don't know how they really adjust that. Could be like a points cost increase. So it's really like you bring, but then it's still mandatory. Like I, in my games, I haven't found magic to be too brutal. There's a lot of like the fact that you have unlimited dispels. And if you have your own level four wizard, you can stop half their spells, right? Um, statistically. So it's, it doesn't feel too bad. Magic to me isn't as big of a problem. I, I feel like more of the dragons are. Oh, I'm sure it's coming, Raksha. I'm sure it's coming. Hey, Griffith, I'm glad you're enjoying the Vernius politics. And sorry for the downtime in between games, guys. If anybody's new to Total War, this is just how it is. Because it takes, it's all, there's, you don't just load in and build the units on the map. You have to build your army beforehand. So this is where, like, all the strategy and thought comes in before the micro. Um, yeah, Thousand Suns are really cool. That's a faction I would definitely consider playing someday. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. Just finished the old world game with my vampire counts for Swiddles. Love the system, but I agree with you about Hero Hammer. It's not even Hero Hammer. Because basic heroes are not bad, right? Like, if you have a Chaos Lord on foot with some items and he's like 350 points, yeah, he's a raid boss, but he's he's slow. He's going to move four or five inches. He's tied down to either the unit he's in or a space on the battlefield. Um, he And he's only got like, what, four, three or four wounds? That's not a problem. But when you get a dragon that's like toughness seven that has a five up ward save and a five up regen save and like you have to reroll hits against it, that's when you get really degenerate. And the dragons can fly, so they can avoid, they can basically fly over, they can choose all their engagements. Whereas like the foot characters and horse characters, generally it's not a problem. I don't, I wouldn't say Old World is Hero Hammer as much, except as it pertains to dragons. That would be my two cents. Like those, those are big problems. Have you ever experimented with using lists in tournaments like in tabletop? With using lists in tournament like tabletop. You're saying like one list for the whole event? Yeah, we've done that before. Yeah, yeah, Peter, that's a good point. It is a good point. Yeah, I and I think I think that Games Workshop probably will do some sort of an FAQ for dragons at some point. Um, maybe like a I don't know about a probably not a, ban a blanket point increase, but maybe they'll get like a special rule where they can't stack ward and regen or something. I don't know how they adjust that. But something, that would be the one thing if they do that and they FAQ some of the other weird gray area things in Old World. The, the game system is amazing. Like Old World is super fun to play. I, I enjoy it more than 40K. I enjoy it more than um, Age of Sigmar. It's just such a fun system. No, I'm not even an Elf Hater pwn. Well, I am an Elf Hater, that's true. But um, the thing is, is that Chaos Dragons are actually the worst. The, the Nurgle, Chaos Lord, a Chaos Lord on a Chaos Dragon with the Mark of Nurgle is the most oppressive one because he comes with a natural ward save from being a Chaos Lord. So you just buy a regen item for him and you can still give him something else, which is really, really wild for sure. Yeah. So Zinch is ready for Berserk um, and Scrambled Egg is just about there. I'll, I'll put a rule on the players. I'm going to ping them that five minute, they have five minutes to pick their armies from now on. We gotta, we gotta, you know, move this on. As much as I'm sure you guys enjoy hanging out, we gotta, we gotta keep them rolling. Yeah, Pone, Pone is the master of hot takes, dude. He likes the Tau, he likes the High Elves. You know, it's, it's, it's just out of control here. Yes, and Anna says brings the power too. The Scrambled Egg Special is a Vampire Coast guy. He's, he's tried to make them work on a number of occasions. Yeah, he's tried. I usually don't like to pressure the players too much about their pick time here, though, because this is like a really high stakes event. So I want to make sure that they, um, you know, they do it. Okay. <laughs> what about a friend? Yes. Elgi schemes. What do you mean? This is the best part of the stream? Yeah, yeah. To be fair, some people enjoy this more than the actual gameplay. I love just hanging on. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Vampire dragons seem pretty oppressive and all. Oh, uh, they're okay. The thing about vampire dragons is. The, if a vampire dragon attacks like a huge rank of, of infantry, it can still lose, because if it loses combat, it can lose wounds, which is not as good as the other alternative. All right, so yeah, Warriors of Chaos with Valkia and uh, no caster out of the gates, probably we'll call one in. And then for Zeech, we do have a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Metal with some horsemen and a uh, little Razzle Dazzle on top of that and the Changebringers, the new, uh, the new flamers up in the sky. Very destructive unit if left to their own devices. Yes. <laughs> Fellow believer in the greater good. How dare you slander the Tau with these awesome crew coming out. Dude, oh my god. I I don't know what it is, but all my friends are Tau enjoyers. My my buddy Andrew, who I went to high school with, played high school football with for years. I lured him into the hobby recently. He's awesome. He's he's the man. Um and I, I was I, I tried to steer him away from the Tau, but he saw the Tau and just got him. I was like, No. You went to the dark side. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Pwn recruiting his own heretic army in chat. All right, let's see how laggy this is going to be. It doesn't look too bad so far. I think we're okay. Crisis averted. Yeah, today has been a, a good day indeed. So looking at the army of Scrambled Lake Special, he's got a Marauder Core, which makes sense. You know, Chaff-centric. Warriors, of course, are okay here, but yeah, he's got the Marauders to take the beating. Triple Warrior in the secondary. And basic Chaos Warriors are honestly very cost-effective for 750 gold. That's a really good unit. Armored Chaos Trolls are rad. They can uh, mitigate a lot of the damage coming in from pinks and blues because they do have 110 armor. So yeah, absolute giga chads. And then we got some Chaos Warriors with gray weapons here in the secondary. So I am loving it. All right, Valkyrie the Bloody. Going to be hunting, hunting, hunting. 
Now for Zeech, trying to show the Undivided Warriors that Zeech is the way, it is going to be Berserk. And Berserk certainly looking to be, uh, you know, one of the scarier opponents here today after having defeated Houseplant 2-1. He does have the Marauder Horseman of Zeech, backed up by the Shrieking Sky Ray. So these are the ROR Screamers. And they have a little laser beam they shoot out of their eyes. Very adorable. And it does good damage against Marauder units. So we'll see how he does here. And in the backfield, we do have Marauders with Spears, the Sour Guts, Pink Horrors, and the Changebringers with the Sorcerer on horseback. Yeah, Scrambled Egg and Berserk. I feel like they kind of have some similar play styles in some ways. Um, but yeah, the Sorcerer of Zinch on horseback has been seen quite a bit. These like Mounted Chaos uh, Sorcerer Lords do have 100 armor, so I suppose they're relatively resilient as well. But so it begins. Let the Nurglings feast. Well, I guess there's no Nurgle on this map, really. It's mostly like a like an undivided army with a bit of a, you know, a light seasoning, a pinch of corn uh, facing off against the Hordes of the Changer, right? So Berserk is, has the unique uh, kind of characteristic of being a top land battle player as well, which is very fun. So he's bringing over the uh, land battle shenanigans as well. Perhaps that's why his grip on the meta is a little bit different, because he brings some of the influences that he's seen be successful in uh, in land battle. Pretty fun, man. I like to see it. Scrambled Egg Special, going to be advancing up the hill. He's moving fast, but the Horsemen of Zinch are going to get ready to poke. Obviously, they want to target the trolls. There's not too much for them to really focus here, but the horseman can be used as a screening tool and uh, also can grab the side objectives if need be. So objectives going to be opening up here in a minute. Shrieking Sky Rays, that's their ability right there. That was some good damage. And then the Changebringers come in. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Am I just realizing that? What was that shot? What? What was that? That was so weird. Oh, that went like, oh, it was after Valkia. Okay, I didn't see her. She was very sneaky there. So Valkia is trying to keep the... The, the Changebringers Honest, which I like. Without Valkia, oh my god, Scrambled Egg Special would be in huge danger here. These Changebringers would just be roasting all the trolls and all the infantry, and it would be a pretty bad time. But yeah, Valkia the Bloody, what a really, really good tech. She's uh, keeping the Changer Honest, and we all know that Corn hates magic, so this is very, very lore-friendly to have Valkia the Bloody hunting down the uh, Changebringers here. Looks like she's going to be pulling back to the ranks, and the Shrieking Sky Ray is using their uh, Sky Ray Blasts on top of the Marauders here. It's funny because Zinch is like super, super oppressive in land battle, but in Dom, they're just like a decent mid-tier faction. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe we will see what they got here today, but neither of these factions are, I would say, meta in any regard. They're both pretty uh, pretty uncommon. Not uncommon, but more middle of the road. Up in the sky, we do see the Changer running away here. So the Changebringers are fleeing away from Valkia, and it looks like they do land on the ground. Valkia is potentially going to get surrounded here. What you don't want to have happen is get have Valkia get pinned down by a lot of high mass units where she can't really do a whole much. And look at this, another Changebringer being called in from Berserk. Uh-oh, this is going to be big damage. Berserk is going to be going uh, Berserk. And he gets his first roast there, and oh man, bathing those units in hot fire. Takes half the HP off those Marauder Horsemen here, and now there's going to be a Buna, probably. Uh, oh no, a Rampage. Okay, the Pavane of Slanesh here from Scrambled Egg Special. The MLG Scrambled Egg Special. Okay, he lures them into melee, but he needs to kill them now. We see the Chaos Warriors will begin to attack them, and the Marauders will begin. This could be a dead Changebringer. They're going to be Rampaging for another 20 seconds. So they're likely going to crumble and die because they're very, very much a, a glass cannon unit. Now, the other Changebringers have come and are trying to get attacks where they can. Yeah, beautiful attack into the side of the Mirror Guard. Changebringers doing disgusting damage, but also showing that they are a bit of a glass cannon unit. Now, we do see these Changebringers shaken and stirred. The Rampage is going to be gone in two seconds. I'm sure Berserk is eyeing them very fervently, but Slanesh and Korn are tag-teaming Zinch here. And it looks like Zinch is going to be losing the Changebringers. The Scrambled Egg Special uh, claims first blood. Now another shot coming in from the Changebringers. Nice volley there. So he is getting a little bit of value and also Searing Doom quite good. So Searing Doom is excellent at hitting blobs of infantry. Looking at the objectives though, it is going to be favoring the Warriors of Chaos. And the reason being is that Zinch invested 3,000 gold in two Changebringer units, okay? And these two Changebringer units are not really doing much of anything right now. They maybe have like 400 value, give or take. Yeah, about 600 value, which is good, but not enough. So we do see the double cap for the Warriors of Chaos. They are going up on points. On the side objective, one single Marauder Spear is going to be holding that one down. Meanwhile, Berserk is going to be trying to re-rally his forces. So probably we'll keep poking here with these and maybe start maneuvering to the middle. It's going to be his game plan, right? So we see the Weird Spawn coming in. Not a bad choice. Weird Spawn do Sunder Armor so they can make the Chaos Warriors much squishier and also bring the Marauders down to basically no armor. So kind of cute. Good DPS. But yeah, I would say that uh, Scrambled Egg Special is very well ahead in this game and likely is going to be dropping a Pavane of Slanesh on the other Changebringers here. A little bit of lag, but honestly, considering we have, you know, we're connecting from, I think, Western Europe and, um, and you know, Eastern Europe and then the United States, it's really not too bad. But the Warriors of Chaos holding it down, the Pavane of Slanesh and Valkyatek has been very, very clutch this game. But Berserk is incredibly scrappy 
And if anybody can find a way back into the game, it's certainly potentially going to be him. The Screamer is lurking around the back. It looks like they're going to try and get on some of the trolls who are a little bit out on their own, but Scrambled Lake Special is going to maneuver over with his two horsemen units and uh, chase down these Shrieking Skyrays, it looks like. And yep, they're going to get melted, take a big beating. I'm sure, uh, you know, what I really think would be cool in this matchup too for Zinch is to use Village and use the big Vortexes to pound the Chaos Warrior units. That can be very, very strong and use like Aeocold and stuff. But it looks like my game may have froze, perhaps. Oh no, hopefully that comes back. Oh, it's just my graphics, okay. Are you guys seeing the frozen screen? I think you are. Because, ah, oh, is it still frozen for everybody? I think maybe I just crashed, which is kind of weird. Uh, it looks like the players are still playing. Okay, my internet's being a little bit funky. The dreaded lag switch being pulled. Um, okay. Am I still in the game? Hold on, let me turn the sound off. Hard to tell if I'm there. Yeah, I think, I think, man, that's a shame. That was such a good game so far. Oh no, it's still going. Okay, I can cast through OBS. Hold on. Oh, still freaking got it, baby. Still got it. Okay, I can cast this via OBS. So my main screen is frozen, but I can see my side, side monitor. So we can keep this game going. It's a weird bug that myself and a couple other people get. All right, baby. We're back in the game. Sorry about that. So looking at the points here, it's a little bit hard to see because I'm having to look at like a micro monitor right now, like a really, really small screen, but I'll do my best to get all the action for you guys. So, looking at the objectives here, would you obviously see the Warriors of Chaos are holding down pretty comfortably on two points. Some of the change breakers on the other side have returned. Valkia is going to be hot on their path, and you can see the Slanesh Sorcerer as well. So, if you look right here, you can see the Slanesh Caster, which I believe is on foot. So, that's a bit of a mistake here. Maybe having it on mount would allow it to catch some of these units, but he did go for the cheap variant. He's trying to chase down the uh, change bringers here and get that sweet, sweet uh, Pavane of Slanesh on those bad boys, right? In the meantime, Zinch also using some of the Marauder Horsemen to protect the Changebringers, knowing that they're one of the big kind of epicenters of uh, value that he is going to be needing here. And he does also force a bit of an overextension on some of these Chaos Armor Trolls, getting a really beautiful breath attack. So you can see Berserk is trying to like chip and get value wherever he can in this situation, just scrapping and hoping for the best. Now back to the middle, we do see objective number two firmly under the control of the Warriors of Chaos here. They got their Armor Trolls and oh baby, Chaos Knights coming in. They're going to be charging into the Sour Guts and taking a little bit of explosion damage. But the Chaos Knights get a huge charge right there. Absolutely brutal. And ye old Sour Guts uh, are not going to be long for this earth. You can see their HP starts to diminish very rapidly uh, after their shields go down. But that Searing Doom is going to be good. And Sour Guts do have that weird explosion ability when they die. And it does have 100% AP, the Sour Discharge. Good counterplay here, though. We get Zinch Tentacors coming in. I really like that. Searing Doom, though, is dodged mostly by Scrambled Egg Special. Very, very clean. But now the Centigors with their armor piercing great weapons, and this is another unit that you don't see used too often, but in theory they're very good against Chaos Knights, right? They have good armor piercing and pack quite the punch. Chaos Sorcerer Lord in there, and the Night Pick uh, could be a bit of a comeback here for Berserk. These Chaos Knights, even though they look super cool, uh, they'll trade okay into the Centigors because Centigors are pretty lightly armored, but with the Sour Guts here and also having the Chaos Sword and the Weird Spawn, it's going to be a big 3v1 fight that I ultimately don't think is going to be super good here for ye old Chaos Knights. So yeah, they're going to keep duking it out. And it looks like some magic coming down from... Is that going to be a Slaneshi spell? Is there another caster for the Warriors of Chaos? Uh, the Slaneshi caster... Oh, that was the... Oh, Sloutnir. Okay, that was Valkyrie's Spear. That makes sense. I was wondering. And man, the Chad Chaos Knights hanging in there, defeating the Centigors decisively in combat. Despite the fact that the weird spawn were there and there are several other units, these Chaos Knights not hearing any bell whatsoever, although maybe they're starting to hear the bell a little bit. You can see they're wavering. Now, looking at the other units around the battlefield, we do see objective number one here is being uh, actually stolen by Zinch. So Zinch was able to get that, but the Warriors of Chaos traded and got the other two objectives. So on this side, we do see some uh, Chaos Armored Trolls being harassed and harried by Marauder Horsemen and also by Screamers, but I think this one is going to be going to the forces of Scrambled Lake Special. But very, very tight game here. Although it could be a triple cap for the Warriors of Chaos. It looks like here they do have some Marauder Horsemen and Chaos Knights threatening the point. Though the Sour Guts with their exploding uh, ability were able to force them back. Oh, that's going to be a nice Searing Doom if that does land. Let's look up into the skies and see that coming down. Bonking those guys on the head. Big attacks there. A lot of Marauder Horsemen probably going to fall or more HP more than actual models killed. The point is still being contested. Value is going to be 8.4 for Scrambled Egg Special compared to 5.5 here for Old Berserk. So Berserk has managed to maintain an equal trading situation where he is trading more or less equally with his opponent. But the problem is he took so much of a value loss in the beginning. He's basically lost 3,000 resources on these change bringers, which obviously isn't even fully included because I don't believe the value meter here includes the uh, damage loss from crumbling and all these different variables like that. Now in the middle, firm hold for the Warriors of Chaos. 
over here. Uh, Zinch actually scrapping very well. And, you know, I actually can see a potential opportunity for a comeback for Berserk. Because what Berserk can do is he can use, uh, you know, the lack of the magic running out of steam and the fact that Scrambled Egg did not put his caster on a mount to get these change bringers into the fourth quarter to clear up a lot of the army. And now we have a double cap here from Berserk. Man, he is so scrappy. He was down by like 3,000 value, and he is somehow, some way, finding his way back into this match. So armor trolls here do get nailed with Plague of Rust. They're at 50 armor, so a little bit more vulnerable against some of the shooting. Chaos Knights have returned like Palpatine, and uh, they're going to make some quick work of these pinks, probably. The pinks are going to get popped like popcorn. Call in at 4 Zinch is going to be Marauder Horseman to just try and chip value away from the Chaos Knights where you can. And a couple of those change bringers. Valkia has been having a hard time dealing with these. And uh, yeah, they're getting that good roasting on. You have to remember, too, Zeech does have shield. So some of the value that you are seeing against the Zeechi and army is shield regen. So the value in the game in general is probably a little bit closer than it actually looks. So Chaos Armor Trolls against Zangor is very favored for the Chaos Armor Trolls. Uh, they have huge AP and their regeneration and armor should help them outscale and outpace the DPS of the Zangor. But, you know, Zangors are a decent little roadblock there that will hold. Chaos uh, Knights do get broken, and man, these trolls are now going to get cooked, showing the true power of the Changebringers, right? Having only a couple of them online, they've been able to get up to 1,400 value and pay for themselves. So that is a very, very clean potential comeback here from Berserk. Berserk's hitting a 9.4 against 7 point, or at 7.6 against Scrambled Egg at 9.4. Scrambled Egg's hitting on the middle with his Chaos Warriors, and is going to need to find a way to get back on the points. Where is his army even? Okay, so he's got some Marauders heading to the point here. Uh, versus the Santagors of Zinch, which might be able to defeat them. Although, up we do see some Marauders fighting them already. So maybe Scrambled Egg finds a way to get this point back. Berserk is going to be passing them in points here, though, guys. We see the points at 599 against 562. Man, his Zinch play is really, really forbidden. He's, he's doing some nasty work here. This one's still being held by Zinch, but we do see a lot of Chaos Infantry moving over there. Valkia is... Uh, I believe hunting down the Changebringers, but she's a little bit tied up. You can see the Screamers are trying to distract her. So Berserk is using the Shrieking Sky Rays to go after Valkia and try and keep her from, uh, you know, causing a lot of havoc here. So there she goes. Going to be chasing down the uh, Changebringers, but not before they get a ton of value. And man, just the Warp Fire is bathing this Chaos Army. And now the value is down to about 2,000, give or take. And oh my god, those salvos are disgusting. And oh man, what a big mistake by uh, Scrambled Egg. The fact that he put his sorcerer on foot, I think might cost him this game. Because if that sorcerer was on horseback, it would be able to effectively catch or at least keep pace with the Changebringers, who are very fast, mind you, but he could take angles of pursuit and screen them better. But now he's just getting his goose absolutely cooked by these guys, right? So a couple of Chaos Warriors with Great Opens do arrive, and they'll, of course, trade okay into these troopers here. The Centigors with Great Opens might be able to get them, but yeah, this is a dodgy game, man. This is a really dodgy one. Now on this side, we do see Scrambled Egg Special making a play for it. His Marauders and just swarms of very cost-effective infantry might be able to keep him in this match. Uh, you know, because he is falling behind on points now. And Berserk does have that really, really nasty kind of mobile playstyle where he's able to isolate things and just cause tons of drama. Centigors waiting to get a little bit of a charge in, a little razzle-dazzle. You'll see what he's doing here is he's keeping the Centigors on the point for as long as he can without losing models to try and mitigate the capture speed here of the Warriors of Chaos. The middle, though, was owned by the Warriors of Chaos, but it looks like a couple Zinchian horsemen might be able to make their way over as far as the side point goes. We do see the Haggard Changebringers uh, still just ripping huge shots and getting big value. I mean, only a couple of them. They're probably up to about 1,700 value now. 1,800. Wow, that is insane. Valkia finally catches her prey. So we do see the Changebringers get caught with Pavain. And now they're going to be landing on the ground right away. Really, really clean micro by Berserk. Absolutely incredible. And he's going to be fleeing away. Yeah, like, and most players, if they lost, had that catastrophic, catastrophic of a start, would not have too many chances of getting back in here. But he's really showing his mettle. But the Warriors of Chaos and Scrambled Egg Special is no slouch of opponent. Scrambled Egg is an absolute terror. I lose to him all the time in tournaments. He is very, very good. And now he's going to be heading up to the middle with his Hordes of Chaos. And remember, he has healing too. All these Chaos Armor Trolls are regenerating HP right now, which is huge value city for him. And one thing about Zinch is they are going to get weaker the longer the game goes on because they like their magic. And their army abilities are contingent on magic, all that good stuff. Uh, so they will be losing some of their perks as the game does go on. Now, on the side point, we do have a Chaos Warrior camping there. Probably going to be able to hold it down. Sour Guts going to be called in. So the game plan here for Berserk is to get the Sour Guts. Oh, we got to We got to do the Forbidden game plan. So his plan is to get the Sour Guts here and here, okay? And then move up. Oh, that wasn't a very good one, sorry. But yeah, he's going to try and soften up the Great Opens to maybe get that point later on. Warriors of Chaos going to grab this one. Side point is owned by Walk as well. So that is going to be a triple cap 
for the old scrambled egg special. He wants to secure that advantage and make sure that Berserk cannot come back. But man, oh man, this is a tough one. Another Chaos Knight coming in. That's going to be tough to deal with. Yes, Screamers can kill it pretty effectively. But aside from that, if we don't see Screamers coming out. And this is kind of an interesting, like, really, like, deep, deep tactic, right? So calling in Chaos Knights in a very contested objective game is going to bait your opponent into calling in Screamers, right? Screamers have no capture weight. So you're kind of relinquished, like, even though they might not trade well into Screamers and might have a bad fight, you're taking away your opponent's ability to recapture the objectives when they're behind. I think that is brilliant because what, you know, Zeech needs to do is get boots on the ground. They need to get the objectives, right? And uh, Screamers certainly aren't going to be doing that. So Sour Guts are moving on up and the Warriors of Chaos are going to be getting their Erect Troll Legion. And we do see the value 11 point against 9.4. Berserk has done a good job pulling the value back a little bit here. But overall, Scrambled Egg, I think, has stabilized against that counterpunch. And um, yeah, his trolls are going to be, like I said, perpetually regenerating. And that is going to be nasty. Yes, enjoy the Total War slideshow. It's still a really, really good match, though. Really good one, indeed. A couple Chaos Warriors moving up. And Chaos Armored Trolls are going to be setting up behind the Chaos Warriors to bolster. Uh, it's going to be very tough. Changebringers, how are they looking on ammo? We do see a fair amount of Changebringers here. It's going to be seven of them, and they do have some ammunition left, so definitely need to save that for the trolls. That would be ideal. And uh, on this side, is there going to be any hope? I don't think so. I think Zinch is just going to get run over by the Chad Chaos Knights. So the Chaos Knights will get the slow motion total war. Yeah, getting in there. Sour Guts will do some explosion damage as they die, which is a really, really nice perk, actually. That's why you often see it being brought. But Chaos Knight should be able to endure that, tear them apart, and then get them crumbling and move back to the middle point to stabilize that one. Changebringer is doing the, the work of the Dark Gods here, man. They have been nasty this game. Valkyrie is even getting a little bit worn down. Her value is almost 2,000, though, so Valkyrie has been an absolute beast this game. She's uh, she's fighting hard. But the uh, Screamers of Zinch, these are ROR, so their stats are a little bit better. And we do see the Zinch army ability going down on Valkyrie. It's the attempted snipe to try and wear her down. A couple of Marauder Horsemen getting a little bit danger close to the Chaos Warriors, and it does miss. So Korn has blessed Valkyrie this day to dodge that missile, but man, oh man, Changebringer DPS is so savage, and the Screamer screening is very, very good. So Sour Guts getting crumped over here. They're going to get taken apart by the Chaos Knights. Chaos Knights and Trolls. Uh, wow, look at the amount of damage those Chaos Knights took from the exploding Sour Guts. Okay, I'm, I'm taking notes, man. These Chaos Knights, of course, did get good value beating them down, but those Sour Goat explosions that have 100% AP... Those are very, very good. So if you're expecting to be dope by any sort of armor, yeah, get those Sour Guts. They'll get you your value back any day of the week. So it is 11.4 against 10.5. Berserk has pulled the value back, largely probably from the Sour Guts blowing up on the Trolls and Chaos Knights down here. But Chaos does have the points advantage. It is currently 1113 points against 963. Berserk has fallen behind. Worries of Chaos probably going to be trying to get it to a triple cap situation. We see Valkyrie hustling across. Chasing down the Changebringers, so she finally is going to be able to get this screen down. I kind of wonder how good, uh, not Pavane, but um, what's it called to be here in this matchup? Buna. Like, does Buna one-shot these guys? Be something worth testing. Uh, but Buna's, you know, twice the cost of a Pavane. And Pavane, you know, is arguably more dynamic against other threats like single entities and things like that. So, yeah, but just chasing the Changebringers off the map is Valkia. Side point is being held by the Warriors of Chaos, but we do see some counterplay coming in here. You get some uh, Centigors of Zinch, and they have arrived, and they have really good AP, so they'll be able to put some hurt on the Armored Trolls. Although Chaos Knights countercharging into Bolster and pushing back the Centigors. Man, this is such a razor, razor close game. A couple Chaos Warriors of Zinch with Halberds have arrived, so we're finally seeing the Zinchian Warriors. And uh, yeah, Halberds are not as good as great weapons at just straight up fighting armor, but they're still enough, not slouches either. And he's trying to move over to the point, so he's trying to grab these Halberds to come help out against the Chaos Knights. Scrambled Egg Special. Holding on to Objective 2. He is certainly clutching that one. On this side, we do have a Marauder Spearman unit and uh, the AFK Shrieking Sky Ray. So I don't think Chaos is going to make any plays for this point. I think the Warriors are just going to be focusing on Objective 2 here and on Objective 1. So that is probably going to be the game plan. In the meantime, though, which is kind of hold on for dear life as the value gets closer and closer. We do see Scrambled Egg uh, barely, barely has a 1,000 value lead now. So he went from like a three or 4,000 value lead to Berserk, like, almost bringing this one back. Do we see Pavane of Slanesh anywhere? Where is that Slanesh-y caster? Uh, up on the high ground here, we do have the Slanesh caster. It's sitting on the middle. Uh, it probably has enough WOM for Pavane, I would guess. But, yeah, this point could be relinquished here as Berserk does call out some more uh, Changebringers. Nasty firepower. The warp fire of Zinch taking no prisoners. And unlike the Beast Bend, the Warriors of Chaos do not have access to Harpies, right? Harpies are a very effective thing to just kind of chase down Tentacore since they're infantry size. They can avoid Screamers too. And Valky is doing, you know, a similar job of doing that, but she's pretty much having to do it all on her own. So as it currently stands, I believe it is a triple cap situation here. 
So the Warriors of Chaos, if they want to, can just hunker down in the middle and, you know, try and disrupt that as much as they can. Uh, Scrambled Egg, you know, if this unit actually leaves two, I suspect that Berserk is going to call these into the middle. He could go for a ninja cap, like with some Chaos Warhounds and some Horsemen, and try and steal that one back. Certainly a lot of dynamic tactics in play here in this game. But the Warriors of Chaos got a great weapon unit coming over with their Armored Chaos Trolls. Valkia trying to put this game on her back. Another beautiful roast here from the Changebringers. Berserk's Micro is pretty insane. Um, it's very good. And so is Scrambled Egg. I mean, both these guys are just, just absolute linebackers. So horsemen coming in, trying to ninja the point. We see a lot of horsemen play coming in here from Berserk. A thousand value on this one, but they've probably been summoned twice. So it's not like they've done insanely well. Uh, the Chaos Warriors here are going to get bombarded. This is a really good tactic, by the way. So you get the Chaos Sorcerer, you attack a unit, they surround him, and then you do the bombard right on top of yourself. So Searing Doom is going to wreck these Chaos Warriors, probably to the point of breaking. And the middle objective could actually flip, and just like we talked about, yep, we see it. He moves over the spears. In the middle, we got some Chaos Trolls heading up there, but they're going to have a terrible time because of the Marauders here. On the far side objective, uh-oh, is Berserk going to reverse cap him here? So we got objective one in the clutches of uh, old Zeech here. Let's go ahead and see. So yeah, we see, no, that's Warriors of Chaos. So the Warriors of Chaos didn't into that point back. Objective two is owned by uh, Warriors of Chaos, but not for long. It looks like Zeech is gonna get that one back. I think it's Helm's Deeping time. Yeah, 1441. Warriors of Chaos just need to hold on to the side point with all of their might. They need to hold on to this point. They need to just clutch it. And we'll see if they can. Chaos Trolls there. Zinch going to be maneuvering everything over. Is Scrambled Egg going to go for a ninja cap over here? Doesn't look like it. Looks like he's committing to the fight. Change Breakers scooting and shooting and Valkyrie being attacked by missiles. She's at 800 HP, but the Maiden, uh, the Valkyrie of Corn, yes, not Maiden, Valkyrie of Corn, is going to continue fighting to the bitter end to make sure to keep these Zinchian demons at bay. But I think the Warriors are going to be able to hold on to this point. Only 10 seconds left. GG, well played. Scrambled Egg special barely pulling off a W here in game one. What an excellent match that was. That was awesome indeed. So let's take a look at the value there. That game was incredible. I loved every second of that, and hopefully you guys did as well. Sorry, I couldn't see chat during that game because I was having to use my OBS as a screen. Uh, so I'll take a look at all that after. All right, so where are we at? So Valkia, 2300 value. Uh, the Pavane caster was pretty clutch. I actually really like the Chaos Knights too. They felt pretty disruptive and needed a lot of resources there. But the Changebringers, 2700 value on those Changebringers. And these ones got 1,900. That is crazy good. I like the Centigors too. They each kind of did well. Look at that. 2,000 value, 1,000 value. Centigors of Zinch showing their uh, their merit for sure. All right. So now let me fix my uh, my thing. And we will go to the four-man bracket for now. So that was game one here. And that is going to be game one going to the Scrambled Egg special. All right. All right. And where are we at? Perfect. So let me close my Warhammer. Close my Ham of War. It's been closed and I just need to reboot my game now. We should be all good. Thank you guys for joining today. Hopefully that was fun. That was a really, <laughs> look at Adrian's Yas score queen. <laughs> That's really good. That's so funny. Oh, sorry. I missed the sour gets value. I had to restart my game because it was frozen. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll hopefully try and look back. They probably had a lot though. The exploding guts easily got over 1200 value. Mm -hmm. Yes. Valkyrie was, Valkyrie was great. Yeah, she was a beast. Uh, all right, let's do it. And get the lobby back up. Let me tell these guys, remaking lobby. I crashed at end. All right. So just telling the players that I have not abandoned them. All right, there we are. What's up, Turn? Hey, welcome. Glad you're enjoying the stream. That was a super good match. Scrambled Egg Special has really been doing super well in tournaments too. Because the previous season, he wasn't in the top 16, but he got in because a couple people dropped. But recently, he has been just terrorizing tournaments. All right. Egg versus Berserk. Okay. Let's get the Spectator, the dreaded password. Yes, the forbidden password. And it wasn't too laggy, honestly, a little bit, but it was nothing like we haven't done before. I've casted way worse games. Way worse games than that. And let's do this. All right. Outstanding. All right, all right. So let's get back into the lobby here. Thank you guys for your patience and sorry for the technical difficulties. It's Total War, you know. Total War is just janky, so it happens. Sigma bless this ravage stream. All right. So what's it going to be? And... Yep, Scrambled Egg is in, and um, looks like they're in as well. Perfect. 
So the next map is going to be what? I need to check the Discord and see. Uh, it is going to be on the Kassar's Cursed Oasis. All right, going out to the old Tomb King's Oasis. It's a fun one indeed. Do you have the full top 16 bracket? Any? Uh, yeah, I can read it to you. If you um, the one on Total Tavern isn't quite accurate because there was a bug on the website where a couple tournament hosts didn't finish their tournaments. So it didn't prop, like when I finalized it, it was it was right before it got finalized. But when I finalized it, if they didn't finalize their tournaments, it's, it's a long story. But um, yeah, I can read the top 16 from, um, from there. It was, one second. Okay. Yeah, if you go to Total Tavern though, you can typically see the top 16 players um, on our leaderboard. Yeah, you can check all that out. Okay, it looks fine. Settings are all good. Nothing's falling apart. And we're on the Kassar's Cursed Oasis. Yeah, these players are very fun to watch. They they both are using kind of off-meta factions, which is very interesting. Scrambled Egg is on Demons of Chaos. Oh God, I would love a Demons of Chaos game. Imagine if we got Red Olgor just winning the season finals. The, the Sour Guts was the value of friends we made along the way. Yeah. Sorry, I meant who beat uh, who in the top four. Okay, so yeah. Uh, we do. So, looking at the Discord here, let me show you guys. I, I should be able to pull this up. So, this is from the Discord where we're running the event. Let me find it. Um, here we go. Yeah, it looks fine. So, you can see all the, the wins and losses here. So, Tim the Wilder defeated Dustman. Catholic defeat, uh, defeated Ulrich. Outer Region defeated Charix. Hadris defeated Noctrum. Houseplant defeated Subutai. Berserk defeated Hitman Hippo. Serkia uh, lost to Stingers 2-0. And uh, Scrambled Egg Special defeated uh, uh, House Cat of War. So those were the initial rounds. And then we had the round of 16, which obviously you know the winners because they're in the top four now, right? Which are up here. So yeah, those are the top four there. But those were all the players that were in the event in total. Yeah. Pretty fun. Yeah, he did great. Well, he's also a Dom player too, Benjamin. He's like both. I wouldn't say he's just like a land battle guy showing up and just playing Dom. He's somebody who actively plays in Dom tournaments too. But yeah, he's he's just really good at both modes. Which honestly, like, I think you could take the top players from like Dom, like Houseplant and, you know, most of these guys. And, and like Tim the Wilder is also really good at land battle. Like you could, it, it's pretty interchangeable. The game is similar enough, you like unit functionality that once you just learn the meta for either one, you can you can compete. I haven't read Drakenfels, no. I, I've read gotcha, the Gotrek and Felix books, a, a handful of them. Yeah. Finals are best of five, yeah. So this is best of three because this is a semifinal, and then the grand finals is best of five. All right. All right, all right. Jankiness for the jank god. Yeah, that's basically what Total War is in a nutshell. Yes. So I expect the Demons of Chaos, and I expect a Nurgle pick here. Uh, oh my god. So we got Norska. Wait, no. Wait, what is NO? Is that Norska? Maybe Norska. Okay. So one of them went like full sweat and going, no, is that Nurgle? Or what is NO? No, no. We Scrambled Egg went with Nurgle, Zinch, and Beastmen. And Scrambled Egg Special went with Norska, Greenskins, and Lizard. No, wait, no. Sorry. The way they posted it was a little bit funny. Scrambled Egg is on, on Nurgle, Zinch, and Beastman, and Berserk is on Norska, Greenskins, and Lizardmen. So we basically have a fully meta range of factions from Berserk versus like all, all relatively off meta from Scrambled Egg. Scrambled Egg going Nurgle, Zinch, and Beastman, um, which is crazy. Yeah, and he, I mean, clearly Scrambled Egg, won, he won games with Nurgle earlier. Uh, I saw, I saw on the stats when they were sending me the goods. Yeah, Norska would be NO, yeah. I don't. I think Pavane is fine. It's it's good, but Slanesh needs to have something like that. I think it keeps them keeps them competitive. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, Scramble definitely going more off meta here. I would love to see a Nurgle pick though. Nurgle against Greenskins, I feel is a Greenskin favored, but maybe he he can find a way to make it work. Kassar's Cursed Oasis is not very good for shooting. It's a bit of a weird map in that regard. Hmm. <laughs> That's right, John. Let's talk about 80s music while we're waiting for 15 minutes to pick them up. You want to talk about 80s music? I, 80s music, hmm. If I had to choose my favorites, I mean, Metallica is kind of 80s music, but yeah, yeah. Metallica, 
Um, but like you're talking like 80s with like synth and 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 that sort of thing, right? So Hollow Notes, uh, Van Halen uh, would probably be the ones I listen to the most. I'm a big Van Halen enjoyer. Like Jump by Van Halen is one of my favorite songs, and Panama. You know, there there's so many so many good ones they have. And ACDC is just god tier also. I mean, ACDC is just so good. For those about to rock, it's just one of the most epic songs ever. Que I like Queen a lot. Queen is fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's so much. Oh, Tears for Fears is great too. If you want like the most one of the most iconic '80s bands of all times, Tears for Fears. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, they're really, really good. Oh, baby, I caught a stream. Welcome, Gravity. Hope you're, hope you're doing well. Thank you guys all for joining and keeping this old, haggard, Total War engine alive. Uh, I don't know that song, Carl. I don't know that one, actually. No. Hell's Bells is really good, yeah. Men Without Hats, yeah. Pan <laughs> was so good they named a country after it. Pan uh, the Panama by Van Halen has like one of the best like outros that like that ending part where he's like in the car revving it and like that guitar like coming in is so good. I love that so much. I'm more of an Iron yeah Iron Maiden's good. I'm not as into them, but I do like them. My wife loves Iron Iron Maiden. She she's into them. Yeah, Led Zeppelin is is not necessarily '80s though. You know, I mean they were active right a little bit. In the, were they active in the '80s? Probably yeah. But yeah, more like 70s, right? Was was Led Zeppelin's prime. Tears for Fears is great. Yeah. Head Over Heels is really good. Um, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Mad and they also did Mad World, right? I'm pretty sure Tears for Fears wrote Mad World, which was later covered by a bunch of folks. Yeah. You know when you hear it. Yeah, I probably would, Carl. Probably would. So let's see what the grid looks like right now. I hope we get a Nurgle. Nurgle bless this ravaged body. If he, if he made it to the grand finals of this hyper competitive tournament with Nurgle, that would be just insane. That would be insanity. Yeah. What about uh, Def Leppard? Is fun. Well, I, I I don't like I I wouldn't even I only know like one Def Leppard song, right? I wouldn't even say I'm like a true fan, but I do like that one song. They did do that for the um, yeah Gears of War did a really good yeah their trailer was so good. Well, do you guys remember the Total War trailer uh, where they first announced Total War Warhammer? It was like it was like a celebration in 2015 of like their history. And it had everybody wants to rule the world. It was a modern cover of it, which was fine. But at the very end, it has Carl Franz coming in on Deathclaw. And I was just like, oh, my God. I remember being so hyped on that. You guys remember that? The very first teaser that Creative Assembly did for Warhammer? Nurgle's won some SFTs. Yeah, they've won. They've won several. Yeah. Yeah, Misfits for sure. Yeah, Misfits is yeah they got some they got some catchy songs. Yeah, we just talk about random shit while we wait for the uh, wait, wait for the games to start. Yeah, Nurgle's uh, Nurgle's pretty fun, man. The BFG division bit, yeah, that was I I I did like that as well, but it um, YouTube has cracked down more on that, you know that kind of stuff. Alphaville, I have no idea what that is. You're saying the song's called Big in Japan or the, or the song itself is Big in Japan. Yeah, that's a good one too, Deacon. It is. The BFG Division intro is good, but the thing is, is it's um it's from another game, which which means that like typically you can use audio, like, like it's not an issue if you use game soundtrack stuff, but it's up to the developer of that game. So if ever... The developers of doom wanted to pull bfg division or like tax your channels they could just cause a lot of drama so for me it became it became too much of a liability so norska versus nurgle all right we got some serious ungabunga here hell yeah dude hell yeah i'm enjoying these matchups this is fun dude this is really fun i i we get to see a nurgle master at work against the the meta norskins it's on oh i love led zeppelin yeah led zeppelin's great uh, one of my uh, a really underrated song for Led Zeppelin is um, is I really like the Achilles Last Stand. That song's great. Um, Since I've been loving you, I think is is literally one of the greatest songs ever made. It's so good by Led Zeppelin. Uh, just that the the emotion and like the power of the guitar and the sing. Oh, it's just so good. Since I've been loving you and um, Dazed and Confused is top tier. Rock and roll. 
Um, the Battle for Evermore is a really fun song too. And what's cool is Lord of the, uh, uh, not I was about to say Tolkien. Led Zeppelin has like a lot of like subtle Tolkien references in their uh, in their songs, which is really fun. So like in the Battle for Evermore, which is a great song of theirs, they mention they mention the Ring Wraiths, and you're like, yes, like it's 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 great. Kashmir is so good. Um, yeah, since I've been loving you, I think is there. It's my favorite song of theirs, if I had to choose. All hail the mighty. Yeah, dude, I know. Like top tier song, top tier song. Yeah, Nurgle versus Narska is going to be the matchup. Um, and then we'll go to the uh, game three, potentially, if Berserk can pull this back. But if the dreaded Nurgle closes this one out, it's going to be game blouses, and we're going on to the grand finals, guys. Godzilla theme song? Yeah, the Godzilla theme song got used by a, a rapper um, in a song called Simon Says. Pharaoh Monch, I think is his name. No. I don't know. I'd have to listen to that one, Carl. You're naming some more obscure songs. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good one, Recovering. Yeah, it is a good one. Yeah, Kashmir has such an epic quality to it. It's 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 amazing. Yeah, let's see what else is really good from eight. I mean, if we start going into nineties, nineties was a great time for music for sure. Um I feel like in the two thousand tens, like music music became very amorphous. I don't know if like it just kind of became all like, you know, lost a lot of like the unique like flavor of certain eras. Uh, I think maybe it's because technology has like, and there's more of like an algorithmic element to music now where they know what sells, they know what's safe, they know what's popular, and they incorporate many of those same elements into the industry and it spreads across genres too. So I think we have a lot of, a lot of that going nowadays. Whereas in the nineties, you know, there was less information sharing. The internet wasn't as much of a thing in the early nineties and mid nineties. Um, even in the late nineties, it's still very, very primitive. Um, yeah, I, I feel like the identity of music is definitely, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it, it's not, not, not what it once was, but that could just be my, my boomer bias. Right. It all became a lot more safe. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know if you'll ever see a band that like has the same impact that like, let's say like a nine inch nails does again. Right. Old man opinions. Music has always followed. Yeah. It, it has always followed patterns. Yes. But I feel like it's become drastically more severe uh, and uniform since information sharing has become so much more pertinent. I, I don't know. Yeah, auto tuning is awful for sure. <clears throat> I just think us old people thinking like our parents in regards to music now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah, I ha I'd have to give some modern mu music a chance. I really would with with our arms wide open. Oh man, I remember in the year 2000, one of my, my birthday gift, one of my, my dad got me, it was a Creed CD. The Living Clay album, I think it was called, or Human Clay. It's like the one that has the clay guy on the front. <laughs> it was like literally, I vividly remember that. He got me a Creed CD in the year 2000. Yeah. There's still uh, songs that are distinct, however, you probably haven't heard of them. Yeah, yeah, probably. That'd be an interesting one. Yeah, Creed, Creed is great. Creed is like kind of a bit of a meme, but they're like Nickelback. Like everybody here probably like, you know, would publicly say they don't like Creed and Nickelback, but secretly behind closed doors, you're, you're, you're loving that song. You're loving that song, you know? Like, what's that song? Uh, du uh, so this is how you remind me. That song is so catchy. It's so catchy. Oh my God, not Creed. How dare you, dude? Creed is, Creed is glorious. And uh, honestly, Nickelback is really catchy too. If you listen to a lot of their songs, it's 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 really, you know, if you talked to me in my early twenties when I actually like you know cared about my public perception, I would have like probably been like, oh, Nickelback's all right. But you know, as you become older and wiser, like how you remind me, um, rock star, photograph, <laughs> someday is so good. You remember someday by Nickelback? That song's great. I've jammed out, dude. Yeah, if Nickelback comes on the car on the radio, you're probably going to turn the volume up because that shit is catchy, you know? It's good. Uh, the th thing is, there's for sure more music and there's always more new songs. It makes sense that some of it goes... Yeah, yeah, I get you. Oh my God, remember the Nickelback soundtrack to the Spider-Man movie? They say that a hero can save us. Oh, it's so good. 
Yeah. Look at this graph. I know. Dude, look at the photograph. Embrace it. Nickelback is like carefully tested to be catchy, like the music made in the lab. It kind of is, but it's also like comedic and and how ridiculous it is. Yeah, Rockstar is a good a good one too. Yeah, Higher by Creed is great. So I went to a um, <laughs> I went to a Catholic high school. Uh, I'm not religious myself, but I did go to a Catholic high school because it had a really good college admissions program and a good sports program and stuff. So my family sent me there. Um, but. Like, so our high school football, as you would expect, you know, the coaches on my football team were somewhat religious, right? So I remember when we had at the end of the season, they made a, a highlight tape of all like the best plays from the season. And we would always watch it together at the big team dinner at the end of the season. Uh, they would like, it would always be like Creed. We would get Creed songs in there. Like it was, it was Creed. We would get some Nickelback. We would get like that kind of like Christian rock. Um, P.O.D. is another one that would always be used in there because they're a Christian rock band. You know, it was just, yeah, that was, that was wild. Yeah, that was wild. Assign a Creed slash Nickelback song to each faction. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. We could assign like a theme song for each faction, you know? Yeah. But like in the, in the early, uh, in the early 2000 days, like even though it was a Catholic high school, it was like kind of the wild west still, right? Like we would go to like a school dance and they would be playing like the Ying Yang twins and Little John. And you would just have like a nun chaperone there, like a parent. And they would have no idea what Little John and the Ying Yang twins were saying. And it's like the most vulgar music, you know. So it was still before it got really like uptight. Uh, yeah. Jesus got, a, yeah. Jesus got a highlight. Yeah, we just got like Jesus Christ coming out of the turf and just stiff arming someone. <laughs> taking it to the, taking it to the end zone there. Yeah, that would be a wild, wild experience. Dude, I am so grateful that my MySpace no longer exists. It, it is just the most cringy shit you could ever imagine. Oh my God, I'm so happy it doesn't exist anymore. Oh <clears throat> uh, yeah, we can do theme songs for each faction. So we have, we have a lot of time in between games with these guys. I'm going to put a, for the grand finals, I'm going to put a five minute warning down. So they, they, they don't take too long and I'm legit going to run a clock, but we can go, we can go through and do like a theme song for each faction. We'll do that together. Yeah. Hey, Jay Phoenix, how you doing? Welcome. They used to play Yang Yang twins at the gym I worked at and they wouldn't let me play TI. <laughs> She's turned. Oh my god. Oh, I love Queens of the Stone Age. They're one of my favorite favorite bands. Um like I Appear Missing is such a such a great song and the Vampire of Time and Memory. Um oh, they have so many good songs. So many good songs. That whole this whole album Songs for the Death Songs for the Deaf is so good. It's so heavy some of those songs. Oh, I love it. And I fell in love with you because of my, my MySpace. No, well my MySpace, I think they like changed MySpace in like 2008 or 9 and it was like you lost your old accounts. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. We're finally back to some Warhammer. And, um, yeah, this is... No, this is the second uh, best of three for the Grand Finals. We're not doing a third place match. It's only top two. So, it's going to be Plague Bears. Yep, pretty good infantry units. Honestly, they trade really well into the Norskin Berserkers. Oh, my God, that guy's a Nurgling climbing out of his ass. Have you ever seen that? I have not. Wow, Jesus. Okay, that's something new. But yeah, Plague Bearers trade well into Norskin troops because they hit really hard at almost 50 weapon strength. They poison and do magic damage. So they ignore the rage mechanic, which let's see if we can find some Norskin troopers here. Yeah, you can see they get physical resist up to 10%, right? So that's completely ignored uh, by the demonic units. He's got exalted Plague Bearers in the secondary. Going to be using the holy hand grenades to probably try and take down some of the trolls and other monsters threats and give him some range tools. And on top of that, it's going to be a Nurgle Sorcerer of Rancid Visitations. This man plays Nurgle in a very unique way. It's going to be the Rancid Sniper. So this thing is a ton of damage. Uh, it can, If you like land in one bad spot with like a dragon or a throg overextends, Rancid does a lot of damage. And then he'll probably try and goon you with the Chaos Sorcerer Lord here. Or excuse me, the Exalted uh, Hero of Nurgle. And he does have the Crown of Everlasting, uh, Everlasting Conquest. So this one gives him passive regeneration, making him incredibly hard to snipe. So let the Nurglings feast. Let them feast. All right, guys, for the champ Berserk, certainly with a big upset today, he was able to defeat Houseplant in his previous series, but he's on the ropes against Scrambled Egg Special and the dreaded Lord of Nurgle. 
This is wild. So we got triple Marauder Horseman, which makes sense. Obviously, Nurgle is a faction that doesn't really have much counterplay against missiles, uh, except for their faces. We got the Cold Voider, so the Arwar Dragon. Going to be trying to rip some Fat Breath attacks. He does have Guardian and the nice Chilling Aurea, but Guardian's going to be more or less useless here. Um, yeah, not too much. Beast of Tashnar rolling up. They're good against Plague Toads. They can certainly nibble them down, but Plague Toads also give it right back. And the rest of the army is going to be a Burning Headcaster, followed by Marauders and a couple Spear Units. All right, all right. Welcome, welcome. What warmer faction is most likely to enjoy Nickelback? Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. We'll talk more about Nickelback after this game. We're, we're, we're going to get real, real hard focused on this right now. Yes. I feel like for a Nurgle game, we do need a little bit of lag. These are both players who have I have experienced lag with before, so it can happen. Hopefully, it'll be something that we can mostly avoid in the Grand Finals, but Creative Assembly is too much of a potato to give us peer-to-peer. -peer. Ooh, I like that Hound Harass. He moves in and charges those Marauders, instantly kills like 20 of them. That is big damage. Okay, that was kind of a cheeky play. The Houndos are taking a little bit of damage back. The Plague Bearers are moving up and Nurglings to support. But look at the Alpha Strike, using the Beast of Tashnar and the Norsk and Ice Wolves, who are kind of like Monstrous Cavalry, if not Monstrous Cavalry, but Monstrous, to use their mass to bully down those Marauders. That was actually a really, really nice play. Meanwhile, the side Scrambled Egg Special does have two pretty decent units. He's got his Horseman unit, he's got the Cold Voider here, and he's going to be doing some attacks right down the formation here into the side of the Plague Bearer. So, yeah, those guys going to definitely eat some shots to the face. And Nurgle doesn't really have much healing on this build, so, you know, what damage you see is going to be relatively legitimate, so... In the front, Marauder's engaging, but being cycle charged once again. You could see here that Berserk is trying to squeeze out value like everywhere he can, everywhere he can. But man, Berserk's going to have to be really careful here because if the Exalted Plague Bearers of Nurgle are able to get, um, you know, their hand grenades on top of the Trolls or on top of Throg, they could definitely kill him very, very quickly. So, yeah, it's a it's a little bit slide, Chody. It is, it is peer to peer. So, like, all three of us are connecting right now, which is tough. You know, it, it's and there's not a whole lot you can do. You just have to pay the troll toll. Some Marauders and Plague Bears moving on the side point, but Berserk pulling apart the army very well. The Cold Voider here is going to be attacking into the Plague Bears, perhaps? That looks like it's going to be heading to the middle because Scrambled Egg Special is parking his Exalted Champion here to try and keep that Dragon Honest. Colin in the back is going to be Forsaken, so we get some very speedy boys getting ready to head up, uh, head up as the Plague Bears are now engaging in Spears. So this is going to be very cost-effective for the Demons. The Plague Bears will cut apart these Spearmen absolutely no problem. Meanwhile, on the other side, we do get these Plague Bearers getting punished pretty hard. Uh, the Norsk and Ice Trolls and the Houndos, 2v1, should win that fight pretty decisively. But where are the Holy Hand Grenades? Okay, Cold Voider with a really nice breath attack. Beautiful one there by Berserk. That was very, very good. Yeah, right into the face of those Exalted Plague Bearers. And what is the magic going to be for the Chaos Torch Lord? Okay, Stream of Corruption. He did bring that as well, right? Yeah, he brought Stream and Ranted. Okay, so mainly just going for Nurgle DPS spells, which I suppose isn't a bad idea. A couple holy hand grenades going to get thrown here, so they throw their grenades, and it does make partial contacts with the uh, trolls, it looks like. Not too much. Looking at the value trading, though, it's relatively even. Not too bad for Nurgle. They are losing out on the flanks a little bit, so this could have been a bit of a blunder. We'll have to see, but the Plague Bearers are very stalwart, and even their basic Marauders are as well. But where are these Forsaken going to go? Are they going to charge Cold Voider? Doesn't really make much sense. Cold Voider is pretty jacked, so Plague Bearers are pulling back to attack the Cold Voider. Meanwhile, the Forsaken... Getting slowed by the Chilling Aura, so they're trying to get around, and what they're trying to do is flank these Marauders here. But the point is currently owned by Norska. Uh, Norska is parking two Horsemen on the point to maintain four Capture Weight, which is a very, very smart play. Up in the middle, we do see this point being owned by Norska as well. So Nurgle is currently triple capped right now, so they're going to need to find a way to get these points, which the middle should be flipping to them soon. And is Nurgle going to be doing anything on the far side? It does not look like it. They're just going to be yielding this point here to the Unga Bunga of Berserk in the trees there. But the middle objective does go to the Plague God, as now we're going to see Marauders get on top of Throwing Axes, which is very cost-effective for Nurgle. Throwing Axes are you know, not the cheapest unit in the world, and these Marauders will crush them in combat. They do poison damage and, uh, yeah, obviously are more designed for grinding in that type of a fight. So Burning Head, Stream of Corruption is being launched. Burning Head does get those Exalted Plague Bears down nice and good like. And on the side, it's looking to be a complete disaster for old Nurgle, as the uh, Plague Bears do get picked apart by Javelins. Forsaken are fighting a big armored dragon, and Scrambled Egg Special is going to reroute his army. So now he's going to pull up this way. Need to switch to the other arrow there. There he goes. So he's going to be moving over there. Yeah, the Blessed Strategy. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But yeah, so those Forsaken probably head back to the middle. I think Nurgle needs to start playing on the side point. Maybe send some Toads over there. It's a little bit hard to say. But how Berserk is going to play this? He's going to play the two side objectives, and wherever Nurgle goes, he's basically just going to be playing whack-a-mole. So Exalted Plague Bearers uh, getting ready to waddle up and try and help. A couple Nurglings, little turd burglars getting in there. And these are the Frolickers Bubonic, the Arwar Nurgling. And they do have, I believe, the Blisterbacks. And when they get attacked, they do heal, but they also have damage reflection. So pretty good unit, honestly. Healing Nurglings, 
with good combat stats and Vanguard deployment is, is good. So if you're a little bit confused about who's who, I saw somebody in chat saying that the green player is going to be Scrambled Egg and uh, the red player here is going to be Berserk. You can see the nameplates up here that correlate to that. Uh, Scrambled Egg did pick a bit of a weird banner instead of going for like a pure Nurgle banner. He did like one of the special ones. So a little hard to tell. But yeah, Nurgle needs to get up on this point. Although we could see a bit of a polarity shift in the fighting now that the Marauder Horsemen have been sent off the battlefield. So when they ran out of ammo, he just unsummons them straight up. So now Nurgle might have a bit of a better time, but this dragon is just dominating over here. Like Nurgle doesn't really have much of an answer for it. Uh, the Exalted Champion, I suppose, is nearby, but Scrambled Egg Special, has he forgotten about it? No, he hasn't. Okay, it's going to be on the way in. Uh, obviously, these units potentially could suffer against Forsaken. We get Exalted Plague Bears moving up. Value is 21 against 35. Nurgle's definitely losing this fight. Um, it's still contested. It could go either way, but I do think that the advantage lies in the hands of Berserk here. And uh, we do see the Chaos Sorcerer Lord getting bullied now. And the problem is Throg does have Frostbite, right? So he's able to slow down this Chaos Sorcerer Lord to 55 speed, and he's 56 speed. So Throg is just taking the Sorcerer Lord to Pound Town. And I don't know if Scrambled Lake Special has any support nearby or anything that can really help. But once again, Nurgle successfully pushing the forces of uh, Norska off the middle. They have two Exalted Plague Bears there, so it's no surprise. On the side objective, Forsaken battle and get out against Marauders. Very good for the Forsaken. They're high armor and shock DPS. Excellent at clearing out light troopers, so that is very cost-effective indeed. And here we do see the Cold Voider swooping down. But he's going to be potentially eating some Holy Hand grenades. Nope, looks like he, uh, grenades were going after the throwing axes. And now the Exalted Champion of Nurgle, or Hero, is in massive danger. He's being attacked by a huge Arwar Dragon with excellent combat stats. He can fight this thing pretty well. Honestly, with, but with a little bit of support. He doesn't want to be fighting, you know, surrounded by enemy units and taking chipping damage. Uh, but the Cold Voider retreats, seeing the coming of the Marauder Horsemen. So the Horsemen were calling for the old Scrambled Egg to get some good focus fire into the Cold Voider. We'll see how that works. Yeah, Nurgle's holding on to the middle reasonably well. They do have the trees they can kind of use, but Berserk is getting good throwing axe fire. So throwing axes into the Exalted Plague Bearers. More Marauder Horsemen are back. It's looking very, very tough for Nurgle. They're falling behind in value. Hmm. Need some water there. And it's not like it's a healing Nurgle build. It's more of a Nurgle build that's just using its durability and its DPS spells. Um, there will be a little bit of passive healing from the lore of Nurgle if he did bring that. Uh, children, he did. So it's a little bit of passive healing. And on top of that, he does have Fecundity, the army ability. But I do think that Berserk is probably taking over this game a little bit. Although, right as I say that, the value does start to ebb back in there. Exalted Hero of Nurgle is never in massive danger. Ah! Yeah, I mean, he would lose to a dragon in Skin Wolves, for sure. Breath Attack going down on the Exalted Plague Bearers. That one does kind of miss. It looks like uh, Scrambled Egg was able to partially dodge that. And now he's going to be trying to rip some grenades into the Cold Voider here. Exalted Chad of Nurgle going after the Skin Wolves. A very bold strategy. I mean, he probably would win it, but he would take some pretty heavy losses during the uh, process here. But I guess there's some horsemen coming in to support him, so it should be okay. Plague Bearers getting attacked by the big dragon, and we do see Norska up on points pretty heavily. Objective uh, 2 here is owned by the forces of Nurgle. Side point is owned by Norska. No Plague Toads, really, so we're not seeing Plague Toads being brought in. Although Plague Toads, understandably, are kind of vulnerable against the Javelin, Throwing Axes, Skin Wolves, Monsters, Throg. So I can see why Scrambled Egg would kind of opt away from that playstyle. I do kind of feel as if the traditional Nurgle, Festus Double Character, might be stronger against this build because you would have more bullying tools to fight off Throg and to fight the Cold Voider. It feels like there's no answer for this dragon. It's just been going bananas. So right here, Throg is now in Mortal Kombat. This is a very bold strategy indeed, once again. But the Exalted Hero is a raid boss of a fighter. He poisons Throg, lowers his stats, and a couple Forsaken going to come into support. Forsaken do charge the Skin Wolves. And now Cold Voider's on its way, throwing axes, trying to provide a little bit of fire support. Exalted Chad of Nurgle fighting tooth and nail, but there's no fleshy abundance for him. In the middle, looks like it could have flipped a Berserk at some point. No, not quite. He doesn't have quite enough here. And these guys are about to run out of ammo now. Burning heads have been going down pretty much nonstop. And in the back... This could be a pretty decisive fight. If somehow Scrambled Egg can get something cost-effective out of this, he might be able to make something work. We do see a stream of corruption going down, which is going to be doing the passive healing on the Nurgle army. So you can see their HP going up because of the children of Nurgle. Plague Bears, as we talked about, trading very cost-effectively. Honestly, they're really good. The only Norskin unit they might lose to would be... I think they might be able to edge it out against Berserker. Um, they would lose to a Marauder Champion, though, but we're not seeing Marauder Champions being super common here. They were meta for a while, but people have kind of shifted to more of the cheaper stuff in my experience. But yeah, Nurgle's fighting well in this point, and the Exalted Hero is, uh, you know, still giving it his all, but Throg is a pretty worthy foe, and I think it's safe to say that the Exalted Hero is indeed in massive danger now, as a giant dragon is going to be descending from the skies, coming down and landing on him, and that is going to be a rough one for the Exalted Hero, and down he goes! The Cold Voider, taking no prisoners whatsoever. Very, very clean finish there by Berserk. 
So here, I don't see too many options for Old Nurgle. I mean, they're close, but they are down. Uh, they're down 2,000, and the points are just so stark. There's no healing. Another beautiful burning head by Berserk, showing that Norska certainly has got some teeth. Meanwhile, on objective number three here, we do see Marauders of Nurgle battling it out against basic Marauders, which, again, normally they would win, but um, I don't think it's going to happen. We get a couple Toads coming in, but the Toads are just going to be counterplayed by the Horsemen here. Uh, also, a couple Norska Ice Trolls going to come in and be problematic. Middle objective is slipping. Scrambled Egg probably taps out here soon. It just seems like Nurgle has run out of steam, and honestly, he did not have any answer for the dragon. Nurgle has always kind of struggled against big things. That's often why Nurgle's meta was bringing two exalted uh, heroes on horseback, because they can fight. They could fight together and, and win some of these fights, uh, especially with Rancid Visitations. If you have like two exalted of Nurgle on horseback fighting a dragon, you Rancid Visitation that thing, it's going to die or, or get routed. It's going to be brutal damage, but... Yeah, really cool attempt to see Old Nurgle in here. And Scrambled Egg has won, I believe, two games with him today in the tournament in the earlier rounds. But this is going to be a tough one to clean out. Toads do arrive, chewing these guys down. Um, 9.2 against 7.5. Nurgle is pretty close to losing the middle objective, but some Forsaken do arrive. On the far side objective, we see just a unit of Plague Bears fighting, but Throg and the Dragon likely going to be kind of clearing all this out. Yeah, we're going to see a Terror Route going down once their friendly wears off. I think they're... Oh, no, they're, they're, they might be ITP permanently. I'm not sure, but... Yep, route, route. They're gone. Middle objective going to be flipping. Far side objective is actually very close. We do see Scrambled Egg uh, trying desperately with his Plague Toads. The Norskin Marauders showing their Rage mechanic, right? Very strong. They get leadership from that, so they are much higher leadership than a lot of Marauders. And of course, the throwing weapons are just doing excellent point blank shots into those. Norska probably going to call in like Beast of Tashnar or something, maybe to come over and try and nibble on these Plague Toads or just another infantry, and it would probably do the trick in tandem with the Horsemen. But middle point is uh, restabilized by Nurgle. So Nurgle finds a way to hold on to the point, and the value is actually closing a little bit. Could we see a forbidden comeback? I don't know. I feel like getting past that dragon is going to be so hard. And now the dragon is hunting down the Lord. The Lord does have really good passive healing. Um, Cloud of Flies is active too when he gets attacked, which gives him some MD. Nurgle's sustainability is no joke, but we do see a wave of reinforcements coming in from Berserk. It is going to be Javelin pressure with some Condom Wolves. High ground objective still being held onto by Norska's Unga Bunga. Marauder horsemen are just doing a number on these guys, but looks like Nurgle will have a slight chance of flipping this, although the trolls do rally. The trolls could come back in and put some hurt down on these guys, although, man, they're at like 12 leadership, so they probably wouldn't last terribly long. But Norska gets a big wave of reinforcements up from the back, javelins and marauders, and likely will be flipping this point here. So I think it's safe to say Berserk probably has got this one in the bag. He completely crumbles the Nurgle pressure on the side point and is going to be getting his horsemen and the skin wolves over towards the middle objective. So here they come. And uh, yeah, there's no way. Like, I, I, it would be a pretty big miracle to come back from this because, like, I can see maybe over a long game Nurgle can find its value back and maybe equalize that. But I, they're just so far behind on points on top of that that it is going to be Trixie Hobbits. Soul Grinders are okay in this matchup, um, but a little bit vulnerable against, like, you know, the Cold Voider, for example, and Throg. Um, so I probably wouldn't recommend that. I would probably myself go with Festus and just the double Exalted Hero on horseback and just try and cheese with that. But, you know, honestly, Scrambled Egg is a, a stronger Nurgle player than I am, so he probably knows better. Dragon attacking the Chaos Searcher Lord. He's going to be forced to waddle away once again. Middle objective being held onto by Nurgle. Nurgle's just desperately trying to hold on. They are going to be ripping the side point. I mean, maybe if Nurgle can win a decisive fight here in the middle and somehow ninja the side, but this just seems like such a uphill battle. We see another Plague Bear unit coming. Nurgle holding on to the point here. It is triple cap territory, by the way. Oh, no. He's chasing off the point. Scrambled egg. Oh, no. Big blunders there. Okay, he moves back on. He does realize it quickly, so it's not really a blunder. It's only going to you know lose him a second or two. But, yeah, he gets back on the point. That, that could have been close, though. On the middle, Norska is getting very close to getting it. We do see the big dragon coming down, Forsaken, going to get broken here in a moment, probably. The Cold Voider, absolute menace this game. 2,000 value, looking really cool. I love when, like, dragons and things like that are actually, like, good, right? Yeah, I think they're pretty good. Plague Bear is moving up, and the objective is flipping heavily to the forces of Norska. Norska, of course, loses the outside objective, and we are going to be seeing these guys move to the middle, probably. So, yeah, they're thinking about it, but as soon as they do, like... You know, there's another capture there, right? So Berserk is really utilizing his value lead. Because uh, he has healing too on his trolls, right? Like Throg has been healing Skin Wolves and, you know, all his units. Uh, not all, but several of them do have healing too. Nurgle's going to lose the point. Scrambled Egg Special is going to tap out. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to a game three here in this series. Yes, yes, yes. That was great, man. I enjoyed that one. That was a really cool game. Very scrappy. The Nurgle army was a little bit too static and certainly got punished, but... It tried its best. No healing, too. You know, no healing. Always weird to see that. 
Uh, all right, so just typing to the players here real quick. Cold Voider, 2K value, Throg, 1400, and the Javelins all did very well. 900, 900, and 700. I mean, that's amazing, right? He did bring some Rotter Champions, actually. Yeah, he did bring some. Yeah, cool build. Wasn't quite able to pull it off against Berserk. Berserk's like skirmishing and horseman play was very clean. Kind of forced the Nurgle army to consolidate in the center and pick them off on the sides, which is a classic play style to play against them, right? So game three, it begins. So it begins. Hmm. Yes. Let it begin. So map three, what's this going to be? We go to the Discord, check that out, and map trace is going to be what? Where is it? Okay, Total Tavern Grand Finals, and bottom of the bracket is going to be the road to Talapheim. Uh, certainly a good shooting map. Like maps that, you know, factions I like to shoot, like Empire, Cafe, Dwarves, um, they're going to be pretty good on this map. So we're on the road to Talapheim here for this next one. So the picks and bands will go. Uh, answers to the dragons, like double exalted champion or hero of Nurgle is really good on horseback. Uh, you can also fight it with like Marauder Horseman play, so you can, you know, throw throwing axes at it and stuff. It's not easy though. Nurgle doesn't really have like an awesome anti-large option. So yeah, it's a little tricky. Uh, you know, it's not like you just, that's kind of a Nurgle thing in general though. Nurgle has always kind of struggled with big things. I mean, obviously, Kugath could beat the hell out of that dragon in a fight, but he's he can't, like, catch it. He's not going to be able to kind of keep pace with that bad boy, so. Yeah, dragon on its own would 100% lose to Double Exalted Hero. Think Scramble didn't expect Throg. Yeah, Throg was pretty good. He he, he keeps those champions honest because he regenerates. He has anti-large against their horses. It's pretty nasty. Like, Nurgle's good at blobbing, um, but, like, it's a style maps can be tricky for Nurgle. They can be pulled apart. Like, maps with a home objective are often safer for Nurgle because they can just blob on the neutral one, and then it's easier for them to defend their home objective. But, like, it's a style maps can be tricksy hobbitses for Nurgle sometimes. Yeah, multiplayer is reasonably balanced. I mean, it has, there are some issues and some factions that are a little bit too god tier, but it's, you know, it's like trying to balance an RTS game with, like, 20 plus factions is brutal, right? Like, I, I don't know. Like, like a lot of game studios can barely balance three factions. So they do, you know, I wouldn't say they do their best because they don't focus on multiplayer that much, but it's not bad considering the circumstances. Could you park Kugath at one point? The problem with parking Kugath alone is a lot of javelins and throwing axes and horsemen could ambush him and start really getting a lot of damage on him. So you got to watch out. Yeah, Great Unclean One wouldn't be terrible in that matchup, like a, a regular one, an exalted Great Unclean One. Because it's faster, it has some Mortis Engine still, it's a little bit quicker than Kugath. So yeah, I mean, it's it's on the table, but Norska is really good at killing big targets. So I would just recommend Festus Double Exalted Hero on Horseback, would probably be how you do it. Sure, you're not going to catch the dragon though, but if you're just trying to survive it, yeah. Uh, each Chaos God kind of has their weapon specialty, like Korn has dual weapons, uh, Nor Korn has dual weapons, Nurgle has great weapons, Zinch has halberds. And um, Slanesh has whips, right? So they're all kind of good at different things. The one balancing dude is doing his best. Yeah, the one balancing dude they have chained up in the the, the dungeons of, uh, of Horsham. Mm. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I, I definitely recommend getting some games in our Discord. And, you know, Quick Battle sucks in this game. It's terrible. That's like one of the biggest problems. Like the gateway to multiplayer in this community is so haggard. Because CA just kind of dropped the ball on that, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's still, uh, it's still fun. All right. Notepad. So what were we, what were we going to do? We we're going to do like theme songs for each faction. So let's go, let's, let's work on that a little bit. Okay. So faction theme songs. This is actually kind of a fun discussion. So I'll start with some easy ones, okay? We're just gonna knock knock the uh, the easy ones down. So for Kislev, we will have, I mean, Sabat uh, so Kislev would be Sabaton when the winged Hussars arrive. That's like the most obvious one, right? Nurgle is probably like, uh, we don't need to put the band, we can just put the song name too. Yeah. Nurgle is down with the sickness, for sure. You remember that song, early 2000s? Yeah, Nurgle, I think, is the easiest one. Um, so those ones are really easy. So Corn, Corn would be probably Raining Blood by Slayer. I think that's, ask ChatGPT, that'd be pretty fun. 
Yeah. Yeah, Reigning Blood by Slayer, BFG Division, you know. I think those are both very, like, good choices. Okay. So we've started with some easy ones. So let's just go through all the gods right now. What would, what would Slanesh be? Oh, Slanesh is closer by Nine Inch Nails. Closer, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Come on, we're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> the Empire of British, no. The Empire is more Germanic. Yeah. No, I mean, Closer by Nine Inch Nails, have you heard that song? That's like literally the, uh, that's literally the theme song. Yeah. Slanesh, Britney Spears, Toxic, yeah. Those are just Britney Spears in general. Yeah, Lizardman, Lizardman could be Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> we got fun and games, I like that. That's very apt, although, is it? Yeah, I suppose it is. That's that's a pretty good one. Okay. Um, so we've gotten through those. Let's try and let's try and focus our efforts. Whatever one we're on. So let's let's talk about the Empire. I need some suggestions for this actually. Okay. Oh, Empire's I Stand Alone. <laughs> I Stand Alone by Godsmack. Right? So got like, dude, every empire campaign, you're like, ah, stand alone. And you're just surrounded by like, like Festus, vampire counts, green skins, like everything. Chaos Dwarf TNT. Are you talking about by the ACD song, ACDC song? Yeah, that could, that could actually work. That's not bad. All right. So I think that empire is I stand alone by Godsmack, right? <laughs> Flight of the Valkyries. Yeah, I think dwarves might be Flight of the Valkyrie. That's like so accurate. Dun, 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 dun. Although that's really only for the gyrocopters. Um, hmm. Yeah, we need some Ramstein. We need some Ramstein in there. Yeah, probably. Okay, dwarves. Let's talk about dwarves, guys. Let's focus on dwarves. Yeah, Empire Fortunate Son. Yeah, Fortunate Son is also a good one for Empire. Slash Fortunate Son. Oh, by the way, let me make sure the game is still like yeah. So okay, we're on we're on dwarves now. Let's talk about dwarves. Um, all right. They're still doing their picks and bands, so I ain't stressing. Let me check here. So Beastman, Bretonia, dwarves uh, versus Zinch, Doc, and Corn. Oh my God, there's a corn pick. Holy shit, are we gonna get corn in a sweaty tournament? Okay, they're still doing their thing, so we can get back to the uh, the fun times. So okay, where are we at? Okay, so we're on dwarves. So dwarves diggy hole. Yeah, it might need to be diggy hole, right? No, Hall of the Mountain King. Oh my god, yeah, Hall of the Mountain King. Are you serious? Hall of the Mountain King slash diggy hole. Yeah, I think I think those are both like very viable. I think we've Yeah, yeah, I think we've nailed it. I think we've nailed it. Nick, thank you for becoming a channel member. Greatly appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, Hall of the Mountain King, the classic song, is so good. It's like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, Ed, by the Edvard, yeah. And Jiggy Deagle, I think those are good. Okay, so we've done Zinch. So we need Zinch now. All right, guys, Zinch. Zinch suggestions, let's go. All right, I've never heard them, but we will look. Okay, let's see here. Let's see what else we all got. I. So what's what's the song that's all about like treachery and scheming and duplicity, right? Uh, huh. A random geek playlist. It kind of is, right? Yeah, it's just a random nerd playlist. Zeech the Harry Potter theme song. Okay. Um, Fantasia. Oh yeah, the the OG Fantasia composure. Yeah, yeah. Master of Puppets? Yeah, you know, Master of Puppets is pretty good for Zinch, because Zinch is kind of metal. Zinch could be something like Tool, yeah. This is really hard, actually. Changes by David Bowie. I don't know that one. Changes. Changes by David Bowie. I don't know that song. That sounds really good, though. Master of Puppets is pulling your strings and, like, haunting your dreams and shit. That's definitely very Zinchian. Infected Mushroom Guitar. <laughs> I'm Blue is kind of fun about it. Oh, this is tough. 
Yeah, I think Master of Puppets. It's literally like, yeah, guys, Master of Puppets is the song. The name of the song is literally Zinch. He's like the puppeteer. I think we're going with that. Okay, so we got all the Chaos Gods. Um, and then Sweet Dreams, yeah. Okay. This would be a really fun discussion to have on the Total War Reddit, you know? I think it'd be really fun. All right, so we got the Chaos Gods. What about Bretonia? Let's go Bretonia. What would the what would the ladies theme song be? Purple Purple Rain. <laughs> Insane Clown Posse? That would be like a greenskin one. Greenskin's probably listen to Insane Clown Posse. Yeah, we'll do Skaven. That's an easy one. For whom the bell tolls. That's very Skaven. That's very Skaven. Okay. Uh yeah, players are still deciding on their picks and bands, I think. The French national anthem, yeah. Uh yeah, Bretonia's tricky. What would they what would they listen to? Okay, so <laughs> the French national anthem. Alright, we'll see the French national anthem for them, I guess. That's like they're just French, I guess. They're just French. Uh all right. So we've done all the humans, right? No, Cathay. What would Cathay be? What about Cathay, guys? What's what's like a what's the most popular song in China? I guess that would just be Cathay, right? Skaven, the the rap. <laughs> yeah. Knights of the Round Table from Monty Python, yeah. War pigs. War pigs is a little bit too dynamic though, because it's talking about wizards at black masses, which it doesn't include really the green skin flavor. Let's get down to business and defeat them. Oh man, 99 loop the balloon. Oh my God, the balloon song. Bretonia, I need a hero. Yeah. Okay, we can add Monty Python too. Bretonia. Monty Python, Knights of the Round Table. Okay, we added that for Bretonia. The Piao Piao song? Dude, I have no idea. Kung, kung, oh, Kung Fu Fighting? Oh, okay. Uh, that's, that's, that song's actually Korean, Flowmaster. Yeah, wouldn't work. Kung Fu Fighting, though, could be kind of fun. They do do, like, their wizards and stuff do do Kung Fu moves. Um, hold on a sec. Let me just go check and make sure. I think they're still deciding. Oh my god, the pick and ban process is so long. I like we're gonna have like a five hour stream because of how long these pick and bans take. It's crazy. Wolf Totem by the Who? That would be like I have the Tiger. Okay, so we're gonna do Kung Fu Fighting, I have the Tiger. Eh. What about something Dragon Force? Doesn't Dragon Force have like dragon thematics? Because they're like all about that. Yeah, we'll just put Dragon Force in general. I'm just going to put Dragon Force and Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's get down to business. Yeah, that that's... Let's get down to business and defeat the chaos. That's, and we can do that. Let's get down to business. I like that. <laughs> Jeopardy music intensifies. We're actually making some reasonable progress on this. Sorry, my internet's lagging a little bit today. I don't know why. Classic, well, thankfully it's not during the game. Uh, Tomb Kings would be Darude Sandstorm, 100%. Phone, phone nailed that. Darude Sandstorm. Ogre Kingdoms. I don't, I don't know them. I'll, I'll, I will check them out. Um, all right. There's a song called Rise of the Dragon Empire. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I think we're good. Turn Chowie is definitely Ramstein. Yeah, Firefly. Yeah. <laughs> Chowie would be Ramstein. Yeah, ramming you with their like demonic machines and stuff. All right. So we'll do Chaos Dwarfs. We'll just put basically Ramstein. And then um, for Ogre Kingdoms, let's talk Ogre Kingdoms. Ogre Kingdoms basically have their own song, you know? I feel like Ogre Kingdoms would have like a, like a song that you would hear like soccer hooligans singing, you know? at like one of the English soccer leagues. I don't know, I, I don't know. Eaten by, okay, Fat by Weird Al. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we're, eat it, eat it by Weird Al. Yeah, eat it, oh. 
Weird Al. I, that's actually really good. I like that. Eat It by Weird Al. Oh, no, Shrek. Yeah, All Star. All Star by Smash Mouth. Okay. Yeah, guys, it's got to be it's got to be All Star by by Smash Mouth. <laughs> Fat by Weird Al. Yeah. Yeah, I think Weird Al is the winner, but we'll put like Smash Mouth as like an honorary one. Yeah. Fat by Weird. Yeah, we're 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 nailing it. Okay. Eat it. We're making good progress, right? How many factions? Uh, Vampire Coast. They already have it. They already have their theme song. Pirates of the Caribbean for Vampire Coast, right? The Pirates of the Caribbean theme. Yeah, yeah. Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran for Norska. Right? Wardrona, yeah. Wardrona is pretty accurate for them. Hungry Like the Wolf. I think are good for Norska. We just bang that one out real quick. Oceans, man. All hail the... Yeah, they kind of already have their... Yeah. Yeah, we have the Monty Python one for Bretonia. We're just going to do Monty Python and the Knights of the Round Table. I think that's, like, better. Okay. Coast is Thriller. Ooh, that's not a bad one. But Thriller is more Vampire Counts than Coast, in my opinion. Because you need, a, you need a, like, a, like, a naval element to that. Let me make sure the players aren't waiting for me, by the way. Zeech vs. Bretonia, by the way, is going to be our matchup. For anybody who remembered this was a Total War tournament. Uh, <laughs> this is game three, though. This one's getting real sweaty. Shipping up to Boston for Vampire Coast. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Okay, so one sec. Let's continue our, our saga here. Norska. Norska. Oh, yeah. Norska, the immigrant song. Oh, man. By Led Zeppelin. That I think that just like... That's perfect. I come from the land of the ice and snow. Oh, come on. Immigrant song. Nailed it, dude. Nailed it. Immigrant song all day. Black Pearl, Vampire Coast. Yeah, the Vampire Coast kind of already have their own best. Alestorm. Okay. Random pirate-themed music. There's so many, like, pirate-themed songs. You know, I think for Coast, it's, it's tough. I'm going to put a time limit in the Grand Finals. I'm not going to change it in the middle of a series. Yeah, Vampire Counts would be, um, yeah, Spooky, Scary Skeletons. Um, and what was the other one that was mentioned for Tomb Kings earlier? Not Tomb Kings for Coast. That the Lich 109 has. Counts Bad to the Bone. Yeah, Bad to the Bone. That's pretty good. I like that. Black Sea Gale. Okay, the Dreadnoughts. We'll put, we'll put Jay's suggestion down there. That sounds apt. The Dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts by Black Seagale. Uh, the Dreadnoughts by Black Seagale. Okay. Monster Mash? Yeah, Monster Mash. Pretty much any, like, 90s Halloween song is going to be good for them, right? Who wants to live forever by Queen? <laughs> I mean, there's so many good ones for counts. The Island of Tortuga? Oh, that's a... Oh. Oh, Yeah. Island of Tortuga. Yeah, the SNL one is pretty good for Vampire Coast too. Yeah, man. Oh yeah, Tomb Kings hold on, walk like an Egyptian. Man, this is getting really crazy. Uh walk like an Egyptian. Yeah, that's really good. Dark Elves? Yeah, Dark Elves would be like uh like my chemical romance. Um it could be like Go, yeah, Dark Elves would be like My Chemical Romance. Not Death Cat for Cutie, because they're like too peaceful. It'd be like MCR. It'd be like violent emo music. Let, we'll just put MCR here. I think that's really good. Yeah. Static X Cold. Okay, guys, we're actually back in the game. I know we're having fun with this, but we got to get back to the tournament. All right, we'll get back to that. Oh, Man Eater. Oh, Man Eater by Hall & Oates. That's really good. Man, you guys are all, you guys are better at this than I am. Okay, I'm going to put Man Eater by Hall & Oates, because all the Dark Elves are... Yeah, Maneater. That's the last change we're going to do. We're adding it to the bottom here, see? Maneater, uh, Maneater, uh, Hall and Oats. All right. That was pretty fun. Evanescence, wake me up. <laughs> like, we're, I'm not okay. Yeah, I'm, oh, Deftones are for sure Dark Elf music a little bit, yeah. Dark Elves have a little Black Sabbath. Warriors of Chaos are more Black Sabbath. Like, honestly, for Warriors of Chaos, I, you could even put War Pigs. 
You know, just listen to the lyrics of War Pigs, you know. Generals gather in their masses just like witches at Black Masses, you know. It's like evil minds that plot destruction, sorcerers of death's construction. I mean, that is like just straight up Warriors of Chaos. Yeah. All right, guys. The Polish Cow song for Beastmen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's 100% apt. All right, guys. Here we are. In game three of our uh, other semifinal match between Berserk and Scrambled Egg Special, the winner of this series is going to be going to fight the dreaded Tim the Wilder for the big old uh, grand prize. We got Marauders on the flanks, or in the center with Zangors on the flanks. Some Marauders here, back line for Scrambled Egg, is going to be some Blues with Halberds and Deep Reserve. So they're going to be there to fight the Bretonian Cavalry. And this is it for the Hordes of Zeech. Caster is going to be a Chaos Lord. Whoa, look at this. So we got a Kissel of uh, or a Chaos Lord of Zeech on a disc with the Change or Die, the Ward Save ability, and he does have an anti-large halberd. Okay, we're seeing the new Chaos Lord of Zeech. I love it. Now for Bretonia, talk about a mismatch in this guys. It's gonna be the King, baby. Hail to the King! It's gonna be King Lewin. All right. So King Lewin is uh, a very good fighter. He regenerates. He does magic damage. And many things that are good against Chaos. The rest of his army here is going to be the dreaded Peasant Hordes, and to no surprise is Footsquires, right? Footsquires trade turbo cost effectively into Chaos Warriors and Halberds. So, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, just bring Halberds against Bretonia. Well, it doesn't work because of the existence of Footsquires. You still want to bring some, but not like as a unit that you're going to be massing like super, super hard, right? Chumbo Wumba for Greenskins. Yeah, it's, it's fun. We're having a good time. Highway to Hell is also a good one for Warriors of Chaos. It is. All right, so the Chaos Lord of Zeech is going to be duking it out. Uh-oh, Lewin does take a bit of a big hit here, and the Chaos Lord able to absorb that damage on his shield, so Scrambled Egg actually able to chase off King Lewin, who got a little bit greedy, to be honest. He came deep into enemy lands and took a hard fight. And the thing is, is that Zeech Lord is now going to be able to regenerate those shields, but Lewin also will heal his HP, but that goes towards his healing cap, whereas the shield has no healing cap mechanics. So we get Screamers battling Lewin once again. So Berserk getting very, very aggressive here with King Louie and taking a lot of HP. We'll see how that works out for him. It could be a bold strategy, Cotton. Now up in the sky, Berserk going to be calling in the elite of Bretonia, the Royal Pegasus Knights. So here they are. And yeah, it's going to be some nice damage if they're able to get in contact with the Shrieking Sky Rays because they do magic damage. So demonic flying units will suffer. But, you know, it, it goes both ways. The Sky Rays will also hurt the Pegasus Knights. It's going to be a bit of a messy fight. Now, what is the caster for Zeech? We have a little bit of shooting here. Bretonia just shoving Zinch back in the trees. It looks super aggressive here by Berserk. He's able to just push him back into the bushes here. In the meantime, the Chaos Sorcerer Lord still hunting Lewin. Skyray is going to be pulling back and trying to regenerate their shields. And it looks like they are going to be taking the fight here. So the Chaos Lord has not been hit by Lewin yet. He's doing very well. His melee defense is 60, which is very, very strong. But look at the Pegasus Knights dunking on these guys, man. These Screamers are getting wrecked. We do see the Change or Die going down for the ward save. But my god, those Pegasus Knights with the steel chair, they broke them in half. That unit just got plowed into another dimension, ladies and gentlemen. That was not good for the forces of Zinch. And they do go down to half health, but again, there's probably going to be some healing, right? So now Zinch is moving out on all fronts. We do get the pencil formation of the peasants uh, getting attacked by the Marauders. So they'll be breaking relatively soon. A little bit of shooting for the Blues trying to wear down the peasant mobs. Meanwhile, Zangor is also emerging from the tree line. So Zinch doing a bit of a push on this objective, but the real epicenter of battle here has been the air force so relatively even trade it depends on the caster that we see for bretonia and where is zinch's wizard by the way who is it okay centigors coming for an ambush here mounted eelmen do get caught in the woods centigors of zinch with their ambush are able to pop out and do some okay damage but these are a very cheap unit we got more yeomen over here on the other side so it doesn't look like there's going to be too many expensive cavalry for bretonia out of the gates we do have a damsel of life in the bushes so she's just back here with regrowth okay so this is like a <clears throat> Excuse me. Like the medical tent. <clears throat> Something caught my throat. Oh my goodness. But basically, this damsel is just going to sit back here and heal anyone who needs it. In the meantime, the Chaos Sorcerer Lord, or the Chaos Lord, not Sorcerer Lord, has not taken any damage. We do see some Zangors in ambush over here. So they're going to be emerging from the trees and trying to steal that objective, which is possible if Bretonia doesn't reinforce. Uh, once again, the Chaos Lord taking a fight with Luan, but this time Luan does penetrate through his armor and gets some big damage through the shields. And yeah, you better watch out. He has a large target, and those uh, Pegasus Knights are no joke. These are Royal Pegasus Knights, so they're pretty elite, right? Screamers have arrived. They're going to help the Chaos Lord a little bit in this Duel of Fates, but we do see the Pegasus Knights retreating using their superior speed to get it away from the Shrieking Sky Race. And another Pegasus Knight is going to be called in as well. All right, so big heavy hitters up in the sky here for Berserk. Over towards objective number three, Zinch is going to be wrestling this one away, so Scrambled Egg Special is now going to be on the board a little bit. 
as Azichi and forces, you know, enact their schemes and prepare to take the objective. So this Chaos Lord, is he happy to fight Luin? Kind of looks like he is. I mean, he's not doing bad. He's already up to a decent amount of value. We have two Screamers. Uh, maybe some, like, one unit of Furies would be a nice buffer for the Screamers to help out. But Luin could get surrounded here and take some considerable damage. But the thing is, the Shrieking uh, Skyrays are about to get rear charged by Double Pegasus Knight. And they're both Royal, so yeah, they're pretty elite. Luin does take a lot of damage, but it's going to be landing on the ground. And now we're going to see the Pegasus Knights coming in, potentially with a Steel Chair. No, they pull back. They pull back. They get away from that fight. So, Zinch firmly controlling this objective. Uh, a little bit slow to move to the middle. I do think that some of the Blues and Halberd Warriors need to move up to the middle. We see the Chaos Warriors with Halberds running away from Foot Squires. Very, very good control. Like, the nuance, the little tiny nuances of the battle. Scrambled Egg is doing an excellent job of making sure he doesn't get caught. But so too is Berserk. They're both playing a very, very tight game here. And remember, Zinch does have the shield healing. So, I don't know though, but there's true healing on Bretonia. Regrowth on those Pegasus Knights is going to mitigate all the damage that that Screamer unit did do earlier. So Bretonia probably just finds a way to hunker down on these two outside objectives. Although here we do see the Zangors just obviously kicking the, uh, bra just beating the brakes out of these uh, these spearmen here. These guys taking massive damage. Zangors do hit relatively hard. They were nerfed recently, and not nerfed per se, but they were re reworked. So they're more in between a Gore and a Bestigore now. They're not quite as elite as they once were. They were basically like Bestigores before, right? But now they've been kind of brought into check a little bit. So yeah, we'll see how it all unfurls. The fight rages on, and up in the sky, we have another big Air Force fight, which is not going to go well for Zinch. Those Royal Pegasus Knights are no joke whatsoever. And what is the Zinch magic, by the way? Okay, we have a caster here. He's only got the Pink Fire. Okay, so he's just designed to kill the Bretonian Infantry, whereas, you know, the Zinch Air Force is going to be kind of on its own here. And we'll see how they trade. So far, it's okay. Shrieking Skyrays do have Change or Die, and they do get a bit of a leadership buff. That's actually really nice for these, like, Air Force blob fights. The ward save can't be, you know, surpassed by the uh, magic damage. And another Screamer does come out of reinforcements, forcing one unit of Pegasus Knights to get back. And overall, Zinch trades okay there. Change your die is keeping these guys from breaking. Otherwise, they would have crumbled and disintegrated. So you can see how, you know, much of a difference that probably made in that fight there. But they continue duking it out here. Pegasus Knights refreshing their cycle charge. Lance is couched for the lady, flying into the Zinchian Air Force. And this is for a spot in the Grand Finals. Whoever wins this is gonna be facing the dreaded Tim the Wilder. So we're gonna see how that goes. On the side, Halberd's holding it down. We do have some blues, the Mounted Yeoman. He's not even using, like, Bretonian Heavy Cavalry. Oh, speak of uh, speak of them and they shall arrive. It is going to be Grail Knights. So we got the Grail Knights coming in. These guys, absolute Terminators. So whatever they can find, whether it be the Centigors or uh, Infantry, they can do quite good. And, yeah, the Chaos Lord, uh, you know, fighting okay. One of these Screamers is going to be forced back here. Some Unsummons going down, but the side objective has been stolen by Zinch. So Zinch is going to be on the board a little bit. And Zinch is winning a lot of the ground engagements. Here you can see the forces of Bretonia are faltering a little bit. Bretonia is winning the sky, that's for sure. But the ground seems to be going a little bit better for the changer. Although Grail Knights here are going to be a big problem to deal with. So here they come, running into the Chromatic Abominations. Oh, they do get blocked up by the Centigors a little bit, but they still get in with a decent little penetrating charge. Centigors are going to pull back like this, and then they'll probably loop back in and charge them. No, it looks like they're going to be going after the Yemen over here. Not going to be bad. Grail Knights, of course, uh, now doing a little bit of damage, but their charge did get kind of stifled. Now, this is not good at all for Zinch. We do see the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. He's uh, doing the dreaded humping animation, so it looks like he's pinned in. He can't escape. He has been surrounded. And is he going to get away? He does squeak out and is pretty fast at 105 speed, but Luin has 100. He might be able to get away, but it looks like the Zinch Lord, oh, man, he could get routed off the battlefield, which would be very, very scary for uh, for the forces of Zinch, right? Taking that leadership penalty is no joke because, honestly, he's doing very well, and um, he might triple cap Bretonia here. I mean, Scrambled Egg could definitely win on points. The Air Force fight has been going to Bretonia, but remember, guys, Bretonia is investing a ton of stuff in the air. Like, double Royal Pegasus Knight, that's way more expensive than the Screamers. The Screamers cost, like, half as much, so that's big. And we do see some Screamer units trying to get Luin off, but Luin's going to be hunting the Lord off the battlefield. That's going to be a negative 16 penalty. Unless Luin, like, runs into a tree, I'm sure Berserk is sitting there sweating fervently um, and just spam clicking on top of the Chaos Sword here, like, just straight up spam clicking. Yeah, they're getting in there, and I think we are going to be seeing the Chaos Lord routed off the battlefield. Pegasus Knights are now going to kill these Screamers. And yeah, Zinch, has, they have the, you know, their work cut out for them. They need to win the ground game. And so far, they are. Uh, pink Fire right here would be super good. So basically, what you want to do with that Pink Fire is you want to, you know, either land here or here and do a tiny little kind of missile right through that formation. That would do some good work for sure. Side objective owned by the forces of the Changer, but not being contested. Maybe sending like a peasant mob over there could be pretty good for Bretonia. Yeah, Zinch has got a lot on the ground. And remember, the Zinch Lord fled off the battlefield, but, you know, Zinch is duplicitous. 
he he can potentially come back. He could be resummoned. Uh, you know, he wasn't killed or anything, so you know, lore wise, he would be okay. Really nice flank with the Centigors. That's a brutal one. Brutal damage into the back of the Foot Spires, which are going to get countered hard by the Centigors of Zinch. Really, really cool stuff. And that is going to break the Bretonian position, potentially losing them their Damsel of Life. Bretonia does have its uh, fast cavalry, which is going to go try and capture that objective to get back in the uh, kind of scorebooks. But now we're seeing Knights of the Lionhearted cavalry units and more uh, mobs being called out. Complete break of that position. And the damsel is potentially dead here. Not dead, but at least broken, right? So we got two Royal Pegasus Knights. They're going to be trying to find a way to isolate the Centigors if they can. Side objective is going to be ninja'd. And no way they're going to dive that. That's so risky. Yeah, and he pulls back at the last second. He realizes how dangerous that was because there's a full health unit of halberds down here, right? And Centigors, of course, would do uh, quite well indeed. Side point, we got a Halberd unit and uh, also a Blue Horror, probably going to get run down by these Cavalry units. You can see Berserk's trying his best to isolate what he can. But the Halberds are going to move on top of them. Scrambled Egg is very, very privy of his uh, intent here. Do we see Scrambled Egg rebuild and summon the Chaos Lord again? I don't think so. I mean, Zinch leadership is pretty good anyways. Uh, it's not bad. Yeah, a little bit of tickling of the tips here. But the Knights of the Lionheart are going to retreat back. Meanwhile, the Bretonian Legions are on their way up. Did the damsel get saved? She was in distress, and it looks like she might get saved here, yeah. But if he lands, remember the Centigors have the counter charge option, and there are halberds nearby as well. So the damsel's in huge distress. The Chaos Wizard is trying to fight it, but Lewin comes in, Centigors got a counter charge now. They got a counter charge to those Pegasus Knights and kill as many as they can. And they'll do fat damage. I mean, you can see their stats are really good right now. Not stats, but their damage output. Um, Why are you not charging? <clears throat> get in there. Go for it. If the Chaos Lord of Zinch goes down or Chaos Sorcerer of Zinch, that's going to be a problem. Oh, it's because of the Grail Knights coming in on the side. Okay, it's getting a little bit crazy over here. Knights of the Lionhearted eating some shots as well. Zinchi and Halberd screening back the Grail Knights. Berserk with the Turbo Sweaty Micro. We do see the Centigors trying to countercharge them. And what is the call-in for Zinch going to be? It looks like just Halberd's fam, which is a good idea when your opponent pretty much has exclusively cavalry on the field. As far as the objectives go, it's 2-1 two, two to one, um, favored for Zinch. <clears throat> but Bretonia is up in value pretty considerably. I think Britannia does have the stronger army on the battlefield, but a lot of it is up in the air, so that can't really contest the objectives as well. And here we do see some Knights of the Realm getting caught out by the Centigors of Zinch, some of which are going to be trying to escape. But the, oh, the flank, yeah, the Royal Pegasus Knights with the surround. A couple of Halberd boys trying to come in there and salvage that situation, but I think Berserk is slowly starting to take over a little bit. If this position breaks, like, horribly, we'll see what kind of damage the Halberds can do. I guess they are chewing down some of the Knights of the Realm, and also these Marauders aren't fighting terribly either. Another Centigor coming in could help salvage this fight out. The Halberds were in a good grind there, but meanwhile on this side, it looks like Bretonia is having a moderate amount of success. But yeah, those Halberd bricks are so tough to get rid of. Scrambled Egg Special closing in on 1,000 points. It's certainly not a triple cap situation. So Berserk has his uh, has his time cut up. You know, he's got plenty of time. Probably are going to see the Chaos Lord. The Chaos Lord would be good against all these cab units and also could, you know, contest Luin a little bit. Not super hardcore, but um, yeah, what's going to happen now is we're going to see the Bretonian Hammer maybe move over here and try and do that. Nope, he actually charges in with Grail Knights, gets us around here, and then moves into the infantry. Yeah, very aggressive play, but there are Halberds nearby, so, you know, a Grail Knight does die on the charge. And yeah, two Grail Knights are dead, uh, potentially going to be another one. I mean, charging into the Zinchian Halberds is no joke. Yeah, they lost two in total, so not the end of the world. Uh, side objective here, Halberds trying to hold, but Bretonia's resummoning its Dread Legions, right? So... While the forces of chaos maybe resummon their lord, no, it's actually another Centigor of Zinch. We see Bretonia bringing out a lot of capture weight, a lot of sustainability. That's going to be tough. I, I think this position is going to fall. I think that Scrambled Lake Special is going to lose this side point. Um, I don't know, he does have some decent units here still. He's got the Centigors of Zinch lurking in the shadows, and he's microing very sweaty with them too. He's like doing his best to keep them away. Uh, if Zinch could maybe find a way to get this side objective, maybe with some Centigors and Halberds, maybe just kind of send something decent over there. That could be big, because this one is going to start to be problematic. Once the Bretonian reinforcements arrive, like the uh, the foot squires, right? We got one foot squire here. We have another foot squire here. We got the AO men in the back, which, of course, provides some good capture weight. In the rear, we do get Screamers. I like that Centigors have kind of found their place, and they're honestly trading well into the Knights of the Realm. As long as they don't eat ahead on charge by Knights of the Realm, they're going to be okay. Nice Zinchi and magic there. Could lead to a quick break. The Sorcerer getting the work of the gods in. And here we got Grail Knights versus Halberds. Um, you know, Grail Knights did get them kind of off guard. We're going to see how good Berserk's Micro is right now. You definitely don't want to stay in sustained combat here. The Halberds probably would find a way to win this. Just because the Grail Knights are pretty beat up and they're obviously facing something that is a counter to them. So, yeah, losing a lot of models. 34, but yeah, Grail Knights are no joke. Maybe they win it. Who knows? We'll, uh, we'll jump back to that fight in a minute. 
In the woods, we got Screamers of Zinch attacking the Pegasus Knights in the sky. They are debuffed by the Sword of Crone, which puts their melee defense at literally to zero. Absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. That debuff is so strong. And the Zinch Sorcerer and the Chaos Warriors or Zangor is holding on to the point. I think Berserk is starting to feel the squeeze a little bit, right? A little cycle charge action going down over here. Is there going to be any ninja play? Man, like a single Centigore could really threaten that side point pretty hard. But also, you know, you, you need to keep fighting to hold the objective that you already have. <clears throat> Yeah, Zine Chenchis are cool. They're they're a they're a pretty expensive glass cannon unit, but if you can micro them well, they're definitely good in the Bretonian matchup. So how are the Screamers faring in the trees? Uh, looks like the Centigors are fighting Lewin on the ground. Also, some of the Screamers are kind of like, some of them are in the air, some are in the ground. We got Zangors heading up to the middle objective to try and bolster that, because there's not a lot of capture weight here now. You just have this one Halberd unit, which could be outmuscled by all these like Chaff units that are arriving here. Man, this game is razor close. 1,100 points, uh, I believe. Yeah, let's see. So he needs 750. And uh, yeah, so I think we are going to be getting to a triple cap situation here. It's going to be close, but I think we will. Depends on how much longer Zinch is able to hold on to the objectives. Yeah, it's a really close match. Really, really close. Certainly a game of chess. It's a shame it's laggy, but you know, that's what that's what Creative Assembly gives us. So we got to suffer. Hmm. The overlords are just too troll. Now back here, we do see Knights of the Realm engaging Centigors and uh, the Chaos Sorcerer, but Bretonia getting a lot of momentum. The Foot Squires have arrived at the objective, and I think that the forces of Zinch are going to have to find a way to ninja this far side or something. A lot of Yale men, a lot of peasants. The capture weight here is pretty heavy duty. Zangors will provide five capture weight, which might be enough to salvage the objective, but the question is, will they get there in time? I don't know if they will. The value is 12.4 against 14. Really, really close match here, but Bretonia is scrapping tooth and nail. And it looks like they do manage to take down the uh, Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Siege there. They do do it. <laughs> do it. And they get it done. Over here. Zangors battling it out versus Mounty Diamond. Zeech army ability, not a bad cast. I mean, it does get rid of a lot of the peasant density, which could help you with capture weight. Zangors getting run down by the cheap cavalry units. And will Zeech be able to find its way back in this? I don't know. I think Bretonia with King Luin is going to be a little bit too dominant. Uh, you know, the Chaos Lord was impactful early on, but that's just too much. GG, well played. Berserk wins the series 2-1. And advances on. It is going to be RTK versus VM in the Grand Finals. Two of the great uh, Total War competitive clans duking it out. And here we go. All right, all right, baby. Let's have some fun. Let's get to the finals. I'm going to put a, a limit on the players in terms of their uh, army pick time. But yeah, it was cool. It, Bretonian army was rad. Lewin's badass. Pegasus Knights, like, did you guys think that you would see this today? 3,800 value on a Royal Pegasus Knight. Awesome, dude. Those Pegasus Knights are great. See, I wouldn't have thought of that. I would be like, ah, you know, we'll just, you know. But those Pegasus Knights were really good, and I'm certainly taking some notes. Um, and good play on Zinch. I personally feel that matchup is Bretonian favored, so it was a bold strategy by Scrambled Egg, but he played very well. He was an absolute chad today. He did take down Houseplant, and then Berserk took him. No, Berserk. Berserk took down Houseplant, and then Scrambled Egg, yeah. Okay, I'm getting them all confused, but the narrative is still there. And now, you ready for the Masterwork graphics? Here we go, baby. Do it. Oh, that was so smooth. Tim the Wilder versus Berserk and the Duel of Fates. And let's hope there's no lag. Tim finals. All right, all right. So here we are. Do it. Uh, one, two, three. Spectate this. And now it's time to get Tim the Wilder in there. The lady willed it apparently. Yeah, it would seem so. And then we are going to get Tim the Wilder here for his opponent. All right. So they'll be joining in a second. And um, we need to go to domination mode. And let's take a look at the maps and update all these scorecards and everything. So we'll see who the first one to join is going to be. In the Discord, will Tim avenge his fallen teammate? Got to create all the drama, right? Finals is going to be Celestial Lake for the first map. All right, there we are. Hopefully the lag won't be too bad here, but I usually don't lag with Tim, so it should be okay. Berserk versus... All right. Uh, let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger there. That's what she said. All right. Uh, it's kind of hard, yeah. His name's usually we just do this for him, but we could do his full name actually. We'll just do his full name. Tim the Wilder versus Berserk. Let's make that fit, nice and pretty like. There we go. All right, all right. 
So now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the finals. It is best of five. I'm going to warn the players to keep army picking under five minutes. Okay, and let's do it. Where is that? Keep army picks. I'm going to tag the Discord. Uh, Tim. And then we got Berserk. Please keep army selection under five minutes after bans. Thank you. All right, so we're going to try and get through this final series. It's going to be quite an adventure. Uh, we were doing something. I, yeah, we were doing the music thing. We can get back to that for now. We have a little bit of time. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so we were doing that. All right, so Man Eater by Hall and Oates, I think was really good for Dark Elves. Somebody else had a really good one too. So we have High Elves still to do. Uh, we have Wood Elves. Um, what other factions are we missing? There's probably a couple. We got Chaos Dwarves in there, yeah. Skaven, we already did them. Bad to the Bone. Yeah, Bad to the Bone doesn't really fit Vampire Counts. Warriors of Chaos were another one. I think Warriors of Chaos like War Pigs is pretty good. Yeah, War Pigs by Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is, of course, like very, you know, come on. Throwing up the horns, right? Um, Imperial March by the Dark Elves. Uh, yeah, Organized Evil, I guess. I don't know. Dark Elves are kind of like like obviously evil, though. The, Empire, the Emperor is like a little bit more schemey. We are the champions for Hiles? Nah, I don't know. I don't know how that fits. Let's see. I mean... If, if I remember correctly, they lost the War of the Beard, so they're not really champions of much. Our High Elf Sound of Silence. Hello, Darkness, Miles. Oh, yeah, Beastman was, Beastman was um, Bulls on Parade by Rage Against the Machine and uh, Dancing Polish Cow Song. Yeah, that's an easy one. All right, so we need Wood Elves and High Elves. Uh, yeah. Ramstein. Skaven, we already have a good one, right? Yeah, we have for who the, whom the bell tolls. Come on. That's like literally Skaven in a nutshell. Coldplay for High Elves. <laughs> when you try so hard and you don't succeed. <laughs> That's the High Elves theme song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, High Elves. I think, I think Enya is pretty good for High Elves. Like, you know, that like Tolkien-esque, like, yeah. I think, I think Enya is good for High Elves. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. Enya for High Elves, I think, is really... Rhapsody of Fire? Okay. And Anna says Rhapsody of Fire, so we'll add that one, too. Okay, now we just need Wood Elves. Uh, oh, man. I don't know what that is. Those are, like, really... Obs that's obscure music. Uh, all right. Demons of Chaos. Demons of Chaos would be, like... I don't know. They're kind of hard. Wood elves. Wood elves are ale storm for Vampire Coast. They're not even really. Do they, they don't. Do they have a drinking culture? I don't know if they do. Coldplay. I think we put Coldplay for Hiles too. Yeah, Coldplay. Wood elves. Hmm. Forest ambience. Birds chirping. Uh. Pamela's? I have no idea how to spell that. Anna says a song called Rune Dance. We will put that there for now. Infernal March. <laughs> Are we talking about the old one from um, from Red Alert 2? Like Hell March? Hell March would actually be good for the... Yeah, you know the Hell March from Red Alert 2 is not bad for the demons of chaos it's kind of like this industrial like like evil hmm yeah coast has a drinking problem because they can't what else fortunate son <laughs> I, I don't know if that works hunter by hunter by bjork oh i, I don't know that one okay we're getting some good suggestions you know this would be a really fun uh Chaos Dwarf rocks. We did we do Chaos Dwarfs yet? We did. Yeah, basically Ramstein, Fryer Fry. Yeah, or um, you know, Dwarves. You could also do the uh, oh Chaos Dwarfs. You could do Shock by um, Fear Factory. I think that one's pretty good too. Hell March for the Chaos Dwarves. 
Yeah, Hellmarch there. Hellmarch for Chaos Dwarfs is actually better than the Demons. Yeah, I think I think so. For Chaos Dwarfs. Yeah, I just added it there. Oh my god! I no, Lich109 just won Chaos Dwarfs. I think he just won Chaos Dwarfs. So, crazy. I'm just gonna add it here. Crazy Train, dude. Are you kidding me? Going on and on a crazy train. That's, that's perfect. Yeah, Crazy Train. I think Lich wins that one. Yeah, Wardruin is also good for Wood Elves, too. They have, like, some Celtic kind of influence there. Um, even though I, I believe that's more, like, Nordic. But, yeah, it's still kind of... Oh, oh, Empire. Empire could be Dragula. Oh, that might even be better than what we have. Uh, so, Empire, we're going to add Dragula by Rob Zombie. So, that song is literally... The lyrics are, like, basically a witch hunter killing vampires. Which is, like, perfect. Like, burn, burn through the witches. Yeah. Oh, dude. Dragula for the Empire. And like, you know, just the, like kind of the uh, the Inquisition aspect of them, I suppose. Uh, power by <laughs> Demons of Chaos is power by Kanye West. I hate the guy, but it fits. It kind of does. How could one demon have all that power, right? Isn't that how that song goes? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Power by Kanye. All right. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I think we got all the factions, right? 1812 Overture for the Empire. It literally has cannons. Okay, I like that. Um, 1812 Overture. Well, I'm adding multiple so we can like have a uh, Slanesh Careless Whisper. <sighs> That song is about like longing and not getting what you want, kind of, because he's never going to dance again. And, and, you know, he's got no more rhythm and stuff. And he's losing a friend. I think like Nine Inch Nails closer for Slanesh. Nothing beats that. Like that song is really like sexual, hypersexualized, vulgar, about, you know, depravity a little bit. No, we got ogres. Okay. Well, anyways, let's go back to the lobby now. See if these guys are ready. Okay. So yeah, him and they're doing their picks and bands now. That was sent to me a couple minutes ago. They should be mostly done with that. And we'll uh, see what we can get done. So what I'm gonna do with that, I'm gonna make a, um, I'm gonna make a post on the uh, Total War Reddit. And we'll have like a, we'll have a competition of sorts. Not a competition, but um, we will have a, like a post where after 24 hours, we close it. And whichever, like whoever's person got comment, got upvoted the most would be like the one we choose as the theme song, right? Because I'm heavily biased, but um, I think that'd be really fun. And then we can make a video about the results. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. Nurgle has got to be down. Yeah, Nurgle is down with the sickness. There's literally no other choice. Oh, I'm missing green skins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got to do green skins. That's right. Hold up. So green skins. Uh, green skins would be yeah. I nominate breaking the law by Judas Priest. Breaking the law. <laughs> okay, breaking the law by Judas Priest. It's not bad. What else do we have for green skins? My opinion on demis with lances in this game they're not very good. Demogriffs are are okay. They're they're a niche at best. Need Deftones for Slanesh. Yeah, I'm a big... I like Deftones a lot. Oh, Break Stuff. Oh, Corn. Yeah, Limp Biscuit. Break Stuff. Yeah, for sure. How could we not have Limp... Oh, no! Skaven! We forgot Skaven. Okay. Skaven would be Rollin' 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 by Limp Biscuit. Yeah. On their little, like, Doom Wheels and Hamster Wheels and shit. Rollin' Rollin' Rollin'. Oh, my God, dude. How could we have forgotten that? This is, like... This is a lot. Um, yeah, Greenskin's Breaking the Law. Oh, the boys are back in town. Oh, dude, I just won that one. I'm sorry, guys. There's no, there's no... <laughs> just imagine the green skin sit, like, jovial, jovial, excited. You know, Du Bois is back in town, and they get to go crump again, because all Du Bois are back together again. Come on. One fine day. Chumba Wumba. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Come on, how could it be not be Du Bois are back in town? It's perfect. Du Bois are back, drop, pick, drop kick Murphy's. Skaven Down in a Hole by Alice in Chains. That's a very niche one. Yeah. 
Hey now, Vampire Coast, Crab Rave. <laughs> yeah, I think we did a good job. I mean, obviously, I just went with the one song. A lot of you guys suggested songs that I don't know. But when we do do the Reddit thread, we'll, um, you know, we can see other music and then vote appropriately. Beastie Boys for the Greenskins, yeah. All right, that was pretty fun. So what's it going to be? Yep, they're doing their, their grids right now. We'll see what they decide on. We could in the future, maybe for like a best of five, have them do the bands for the whole series and then they just like push through it. Hmm. Not a terrible idea. The music doesn't fit as well as the name. That's true, that's true. Yeah, you raise a good point. I don't know that one, Cold Fusion. I'll have to look. It's not easy being green. Yes, yeah, scaving it. Well, there's a lot of entries. I was just brainstorming because I was going to put some suggestions. Yeah, I, I have I have Raining Blood by Corn. I already have that. Yeah, that was on there. We had that and Break Stuff. I mean, Limp Biscuits Break Stuff is basically Corn, right? It's just that song is like pure violence, you know. Uh, Slanesh could also be a Corn song. You could do Nookie by by um by by uh, Limp Biscuit. You know, he did it all for you know Slanesh definitely does it all for the Nookie. So it's that that could be um that could work that could work very well. What if Limp Biscuit just wins like half of them? That would be perfect. Wood Elf Coldplay. <laughs> no, High Elves get Coldplay. They tried so hard, but they didn't succeed. It's like the story of the High Elves. They tried in the War of the Beard. They lost. They, they fail with the Vortex. <laughs> you know, it's all falling apart. They do have cool dragons, though, to be fair. They do. Vampire Coast, Ocean Man. I don't know that one. Don't know. It. Yeah, we got we got a lot of like range of uh of stuff here. Oh my God, this pick and ban, These guys. I guess they're in the grand finals and they really don't want to lose, right? So, I understand them taking a long time. Yeah, I understand it. Be cool to see a Zinch game again, though. Who gets sabotage? Oh yeah, by the Beastie Boys. Uh, sabotage would definitely be that could be like a Zinchian sub theme. Bite to your right to party. Yeah. I mean, Greenskins could also be break stuff, you know, because break stuff is just literally about fighting and violence, which is what Greenskins like. So that that could, you know, Limp Bizkit could definitely fit for them too. How could you not have Rats by Ghost for Escaping? I don't know that song. I don't know it. Oh my God, Adidas, that song. I remember that one. Demograph Knights in general could use a couple different buffs, yeah. I don't know exactly what. Like, you know, the Empire is going to be in the next update, so. Like, the Empire shouldn't necessarily have the best cavalry or the best infantry, but their combined units together should function well. That's kind of like how they play in Tabletop, too. Although in Tabletop, Empire is probably one of the weaker factions. I would love to see a Chaos Dwarf game, by the way. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. <clears throat> what a wonderful wah. Yeah, that's not bad. That ain't bad at all. Dude, this is going to be a long one. The amount of time they take to pick and ban, we're going to be here for at least another hour and a half, lads. Yeah. Behind blue eyes for Dark Elves? Uh, I don't really see that. No one knows what it's like. I guess there's an emo element to that song a little bit. You know one knows what it's like. Yeah, to be the sad man. Maybe, but like the behind blue eyes kind of infers that the individual being sung about is like misunderstood dark elves are like murderous slavers so i don't know if i would really do that yeah i don't know you could do crazy crazy frog for the lizard minor zinch yeah don't they have presets yeah they're they're doing their their uh they should be almost done with that let me check here I wonder if they're all hanging out in Discord watching, probably. Oh, no, it doesn't look like it. Tim, Tim stands alone. He stands alone. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, though. Those kind of discussions are always great. I think we had some good ones today in terms of our picks. Only possibility song for Skaven is Rats by Pearl Jam. I actually don't know that one. I like Pearl Jam a little bit. Like Yellow Leadbetter is a really good song. And uh, yeah, there's some, there's some other. What's that? What's that really sad Pearl Jam song? There's Yellow Leadbetter, and then there's one that was like, oh man, I'm blanking on it. Yeah, Let the Body Sit the Floor could also be Corn. Corn has a ton of easy ones. Like any song about rage, anger, and violence is like, fits them, right? All right. 
Am I gonna have to like chaperone the pick and ban face? I feel like I feel like I will. <laughs> Necromancy and dancing by Bear Ghost around Dead Faction. Yeah, that's fun. Would you rather have a generic wizard lord or a new thematic unit for the empire? Uh, I, uh, like competitively, if the empire gets a generic wizard lord, it's gonna be so strong. I probably. Because uh, it depends, though. Like, if Carl Franz and Boris Todbringer get the Bretonian treatment and they, like, upgrade the uh, hippogriffs and stuff, or the, peg uh, the the griffins, excuse me, then, like, I don't know. We'll have to see. Because currently, Franz and um, Franz and also Boris Todbringer just... Boris is good, but Franz sucks, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but he does. I painted and made an entire Chaos Dwarf army. Damn. Yeah, you can send some pictures in Discord, ask me to do it. A movie for each faction. Oh, that's interesting. Well, Nurgle would be like any music, any movie about a plague. The Vampire Counts would be like, you know, any of 500 different Dracula movies. Um, you know, you got Van Helsing out there. You, you get a couple factions with that one. You got the Vampire Counts. You got maybe, maybe a little Empire Witch Hunter action. Will they play today? I hope so. All right. So I don't know if they've picked their factions yet. Did you two pick factions? I'm waiting to see. He said they were having a language barrier issue, uh, figuring out the rules, but now it's under control. Hey, Arch Throne. Hey, really enjoying the stream. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, we're basically like a like a just talking stream, or what do they call those on Twitch? And then we like have a Warhammer every 30 minutes. What did you say, darling? Just chatting. Just chatting. Yeah. Uh, all right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So it's confirmed Toddy is becoming a... Oh, I have no idea. I hope so. Vampire Counts that own a Dracula movie. Or Dracula. Oh, that's the, the one with um, the modern Dracula movie. Yeah. Oh, no, it's good, Frost. Oh, I'll keep tabs on them. Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean basically has Vampire Coast in it. Yeah, that's true. It basically does. A just chatting stream. It's actually tiring, you know? Sitting there for like five hours, six hours, and just ranting. Takes it out of you in a very strange way. Okay, so... Yeah, they had some weird tech issue. They got sorted, so... I'll give them, I'll give them like... Uh, I'll give them warnings. So what I'm going to tell them after they finish this one for the next game, I'm going to tell them they have five minutes to get it done. Uh, the, 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 this part of the process. And then they'll have five minutes. So 10 minutes in total in between games should be what we're dealing with. Not like 20 minutes. Yeah. The podcast with extra steps. Yeah. No cam and no. Yeah, I know. It can't be just chatting. Oh my, oh my God. Yeah. The Twitch, the Twitch meta is, is uh, pretty wild. I would imagine. Bretonian dragons. I don't think that's really their flavor. You know, that's more the Heil thing. Throt would, Throt would just be Ratatouille. Yeah. Well, Skrulk is more Ratatouille, actually, because he's like, you know, putting ingredients in a plague cauldron. Throt, Throt is, is, eats a lot, but, you know, I don't think he's like, has any culinary expertise. I mean, I guess maybe he does. I suppose he makes his minions cook for him. So that's probably how that would go. All right. So we haven't had any mirror matches today, which has been good. Yeah, five minute limit, half an hour later. That's probably what's gonna happen, John. That's probably what's gonna happen. A song for each legendary lord. Oh my god, that's really getting into it. Yeah, that makes it easier though, because like you know, Volkmar would just be Dragula by Rob Zombie, you know. So, okay, great. Five minute uh, timer starting now. Whoever isn't ready by then gets a warning. Then a game loss if it happens again. All right. So I'm warning the players. So right now I'm putting a timer. So let's get a timer. I can use my phone. Oh, that's fancy. So what time is it? So it's 4.06. So at, yeah, it's about 4.07, give or take. So five minutes. All right. They got five minutes to get their stuff together. Perfect. I told Berserk. So we got Demons of Chaos versus Tomb Kings. So they have five minutes to do their goodies. I should probably use an actual timer here. Let me get my phone out. I think this thing can do a timer. I'm such an idiot with technology. Oh my God. When, did, when does that happen, you know? What age? 
Okay, timer, probably in the clock settings. It's a freaking boomer, dude. All right, timer. So five, uh, five minutes, all right. I got a five minute timer running on my desk, baby. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna make sure they finish. I warned them both. <laughs> and we'll do the same thing for the pick and ban phase. So uh, there's an actual consequence in the grand finals, right? They'll get their five minutes and if they don't get it, they get a warning. And if it happens a second time, then they get a full game loss, you know? So it's, it's time. I am a boomer, dude. I am. I can feel it in my bones. Yeah. Although when you spend some time around real boomers, you, you definitely see that there's level to it. Like my parent, my, you know, my mom is a boomer, right? So, you know, but she's actually very tech savvy. Like my mom's on Facebook and like, she's, she has like Instagram and like all the social media. She's like very tech savvy. Tomb Kings would be Them Bones. Oh yeah, Them Bones is pretty good. That's an amazing song, by the way, by Alice in Chains. It's a really good song. I feel like having each player come with the set list of the whole tournament. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We want like fair competition, obviously. 22 minute pick and ban one thing, RTK and VM share. Not today though. There's there's gonna be a penalty. I just warned them. I did spring it on them last minute, but you know, there has to be there has to be something to it, you know. It'll help remove the uh, paralysis. I'm gonna give them like a three minute warning too. I actually like this system. We'll do this from now on. AK Claus Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Maybe I've never played Worm Roll 2. Surely it takes two minutes to pick your army. I pick really quickly, but I also don't compete at this. This like this is like the pinnacle of competitive play, right? So uh, you know, this is this is next level. Three minute warning. Okay. So three minute warning and three minute warning. I gave them both warnings. Oh, Berserk is ready. Look at that. Look at that. And suddenly, suddenly their armies are just magically both ready instantly. <laughs> All right. Oh my God. What the hell is this Demons of Chaos build? Jesus. Yeah, Kugath is very viable in multiplayer. Yeah, very viable. Dude, are you guys seeing this? Oh my god. Look at this build. This is like a meme build. This is like what I would bring in an FFA game. Oh my god. He's got Grand Vomitus, the Prince of Bubos, a Bloodthirster, the ROR Lord of Change, and like just a bunch of random... What is this build? I feel like this is this is like a random, a random thing, you know? Like I legit feel like this is random. What is this? <laughs> I don't know, man. And Tim's build is more standard, right? He's got Katep. Katep is going to be trying to, you know, spell spam and, and block the spells and abilities of the demons and heal his army. The rest of the Tomb Kings is going to be mostly skeletons with a couple skeleton archers to keep the big flyers honest. Ushapti Great Bows, basic Ushapti, and a ton of skeleton warriors. So, I don't know what this is. This this is not, Berserk is not going to meme. There's, there's a cash prize on the line. He's not going to meme here. Like it's it's not a ton of money, but it's it's a decent amount. Certainly, you know, certainly something. So he's got rancid visitations, uh, stream of corruption, and healing. And aside from that, he does have the cloud of flies. He did not bring the fancy armor. And yeah, he's just going to be going after the heroes. Probably he's going to be trying to goon your lord. And we do have a bloodthirster. So the bloodthirster is kind of cool because with Nurgle's healing, you can heal this thing, right? So suddenly it becomes way more durable. Seventy armor plus fat fleshy abundance from Nurgle is going to be cool. And on the far side, we do have the old, uh, the Golden Griffin of Theurgy. And this thing has uh, Gehennis' Golden Hounds and Searing Doom, and is a respectable fighter itself, with 56 and 56 in combat stats. This is basically a meme build, I feel. Um, but it's not. This is like some forbidden tech from the East that we have never seen in these Western lands. <laughs> Tim is Tim's probably going to be perplexed when you see this. Although, I know he knows Berserk. They played together, I'm pretty sure, before. Berserk plays against a lot of the uh, RTK guys, so there's got to be some familiarity there, but... Oh my god. The last time you saw a Bloodthirster was Dawn of War. <laughs> yeah. Kislev is, is banned for the entire tournament, because they're just bullshit. Yeah, so Kislev's banned out of the entire event. Correct. All right, guys, the battle is on. The Hordes of the Undead, uh, the Ravening Hordes, as they're called in the Old World, which is kind of silly. Tomb Kings aren't really bad guys. They're kind of neutral, if you ask me. But, um... 
Yeah, I mean, they're kind of evil-ish. If you get into, like, Arcane and, you know, some of the kings are very tyrannical, so... Eh, I don't know. It's all gray area, isn't it? Chosen of the Gods? Gonna start ripping shots, but uh, the Golden Griffin does have these shields to absorb them, and he's also gonna be juking, so... Dude, the dreaded Demon Rush. Tim is uh, definitely gonna be pressured hard. We get two carrying being called out. Look at this! Look at Kotev, the bravest Tomb King Lord in all of history. He's gonna be spamming, hiding in the bushes. He's not even gonna get to use his buffs because he's so afraid of those three demons. That's so funny. But the horsemen are getting a little bit of poke in there. And now the Golden Griffin just straight up gonna land and start pimp caning these Ushapti Great Bows. And he does hit one, does a little bit of damage. And now we get the Grand Vomitus as well as the Bloodthirster coming over here. Carrion Swarms being sent to try and tar pit the big monsters, allowing the Tomb King shooting to really saturate in and pepper them. We'll have to see. Horsemen also chasing them down. And now the Nurglings and the Sour Guts are going to be getting up on this point here and just parking. And is he going to get his home objective? Yeah, we're going to see Changebringers coming out. What? Why would you call in the Changebringers against Triple Carrion? Okay, man, we're seeing some truly forbidden tech. Yeah, Kotsep is very, very scared. Nonetheless, though, the big monsters aren't taking a ton of damage. We're doing some okay work. We're probably going to be seeing the Griffin using some of his big AoEs on the Skeleton Warriors. And Grand Vomitus is going to continue hunting down the Chosen of the Gods trying to kill the Ushapti, and probably is going to be succeeding in the task. Well, Thurster does get trapped, though, and he's got good mass. He might be able to push out. He's trampling over the skeletons and the horsemen. You know, he's a, he's a greater demon. He should be able to push through, like, anything that isn't monstrous, right? But even still, the Ushapti here are close to crumbling down. Side objective is under control. Changebringers have arrived and are now ripping big shots into the skeletons, but uh, I would imagine that Tim the Wilder should be able to send some carrying after those. Yeah, he does it. You can see these carrions do get pulled out of the fight here, and now are they going to be going after the Vomitus? Interesting. Stream of Corruption. Ooh, that might be a nice cast. We'll see if it goes far enough. It kind of gets there. Not quite all the way. Changebringers just kiting back and running away from the carrion. Carrion going to chase them down, and the colon is going to be some blue horror. So the blues are going to move up to the point. Demons do have this one, and um, this is like this is like a, like a land, battle's power, a land battle player's power fantasy. You can bring as many SEs as you want, and you can just chase shit, you know? It's it's the, it's the what's usually forbidden to them in the land battle format, um, but here it is not. So you can do whatever the hell you want. Vomit is taxed. Thank you for the 999. Really appreciate it. We got the big monster fight back here. They are occupying a lot of the Tomb King's army, and Vomitus is going to have some fat heals. But the uh, objectives haven't really been capitalized on yet. Uh, we do see Chaos Furies coming out. Screamers attacking Carrion. Carrion are infantry size, so they'll trade okay into Screamers. And now the Blues are going to be on their way up. Meanwhile, the Monster Goon Squad continues to terrorize. What's this going to be here? Is that going to be a Searing Doom? I think it is. Yeah, the Golden Griffin. He has two bound spells, so this guy can do some uh, fat goodness. I would imagine that what you want to do if you're Berserk is save your Winds of Magic and get an overcasted Fleshy to heal all three of your monsters. That would be really nasty, but... One who shot the Great Bow unit got beat up pretty badly. I think he actually managed to kill it. So the Chosen of the Gods uh, were actually destroyed. Yeah, they're not around anymore. I'm not seeing them. And now he's just going to be trying to focus fire the other one. So basically Berserk is just spam clicking on the Ushaptis. Yeah, this Ushapti here is going to crumble. They're at negative 15. Kotsep has emerged from the bushes. And we are going to be seeing Vomitus. Oh, look at the flamethrowers. Ooh, nails that whole Tomb King's blob really, really clean. And Vomitus does get fleshy abundance, but unfortunately he lights himself on fire with his, uh, or his Changebringers did. So Zeech betraying Nurgle during the actual battle. This is like some seriously dreaded off meta shit. Uh, this is just weird. This is so strange. So the, the Furies wrecking the Carrion with the Screamers, which is going to allow the Changebringers to feast potentially. They still got to watch out for all these archers here. The fleshy abundance did good, but the big Demon Lord is... Certainly taking a lot of damage. He has a lot of HP, though. His base is like eight or 9,000, so he's hanging. Kotsep is out in the open, but he's going to be hard to catch. He'll just run. Both Ushapti units are on death's bed. This one's going to crumble down. It's got 100 HP. And the other Ushapti is in critical binding as well. The demons are able to tear through the horsemen. I mean, that is three super, super powerful greater demons. These things are absolutely no joke. So we see the Bloodthirster here, 61 and 45. Um, in terms of stats, yeah, it's really, really nasty. Bloodthirsters and Tabletop are the Terminators. They are like one of the scariest combat units in the entire game, like hands down. Look at that. A little bit of fire coming back there on the Skeleton Horseman Archers and the old demons. Uh-oh, they got their sights set on Bone Daddy. They're going to be coming for him. You can see they're all clicking over there. Yep, you see the triple click on those arrows. Uh-oh, it's demon in time. So the Golden Griffin bounces out after the Ushapti Grapos because they do a ton of damage. And look at the Changebringers cooking these Skeleton Horsemen, just absolutely lighting them up. The Forbidden Demons of Chaos meta is upon us. What, what if they rise? 
Berserk, I guess Berserk is their champion after all. But the Ushafti here sitting at negative 15 leadership, not having a good time. Jaff's Curse Blade used on the Spears to try and give him a little bit of a damage boost against the big monsters. The skeleton Spearmen are still just Skeleton Spearmen, so they're not going to kill big monsters quickly. Uh, on the side point, looks like the uh, un not undead, but the demons have pretty good control over the objective, not really being threatened in too many ways. Changebringers are being very cautious. I would like to see them be moved up and maybe do some shooting, but he's obviously very focused. And you're not going to catch Kotev. Chasing him is probably a waste of time. Um, Ushapti Grapos are offline, though. Uh, and we get a Screaming Skull Catapult now. Okay, maybe that's going to be the next target. Uh, that thing is quite good against the, uh, the Demonic Infantry. So, yeah, we see them chasing Kotev. Probably just going to chase over here on top of the Screaming Skull Catapult. I'd like to see maybe Sepulchral Stalkers for the Tomb Kings also, if he has any. Magic damage and Halberds against, you know, big greater demon seems pretty good. And yeah, the Carrion continuing to chase. Uh, I would wager he's saving up for a Fleshy Abundance. That would have to be his play here because he's getting a little bit damaged. But Kotzap could be in danger of dying. And now, man, the Changebringers are being left to their own devices. And they are just going to just rip through these skeletons. It does, as a matter of fact, proc a uh, Realm of Souls. So Blues and Flesh Hounds of Corn have arrived. And they're pressing in hard. The double flesh hound flank. So it looks like he must have come through the trees here and flanked with some flesh hounds. And they're chewing down these skeleton warriors, no problem. Kotep has been caught by the bloodthirster. He does get hit, and he's on horse, which means he's a large entity. Grand Vomit is going to be pulling away. Meanwhile, the golden griffin is just kind of trolling into the Ushapti. He could maybe go back here and shut down that screaming skull catapult. Wouldn't be a bad idea. And Kotep, where did he go? Okay, Kotep managed to get away, and the flesh hounds also got pushed back. So Tim the Wilder. Was able to stop the Flesh Hounds from getting too crazy, but the Demons did manage to get the Triple Cap and seal the objective. So we'll see how this plays out. Now we get some Seekers of Slanesh move again, so here they come. Yeah, it feels like an FFA game, I know, with his build. It really does. But Grand Vomit just needs to get some fat heals. Oh my god, value freaking city. Golden Griffin, Bloodthirster, all of them are going to get healed for a, just a colossal amount of their HP. So what little value lead Tim the Wilder has is going to be extinguished here, probably. Uh, it's it's going to go in the can. Because that is just so much value. The Bloodthirster is almost full again. Like, Fleshy Abundance is one of the best healing spells in terms of, like, just healing big things. Its percentage is 1.6, and it lasts a long time, too. So that healing, absolutely brutal. Now, on the side objective, we see Nurglings holding back two units of skeletons, one of which is actually a Tomb Guard. And the Demons using their uh, Seekers to chase down the uh, Carrion where they can. Changebringers are back up. Big, big skeleton horde for Tim the Wilder. Uh, it is going to be probably a triple cap situation at some point, I would imagine, for the demons. We'll see what their single entities can do. But they do manage to tear through the Carrion and the Ushanti being shot a little bit. But really, Tim doesn't have great bows. Uh, he doesn't have anything that can really contest the demons anymore. So the only way Tim is going to win this game is by killing all the ground assets, probably, and capturing the objectives, which is certainly very, very possible. Changebringers roast in from downtown. Really, really nice stuff. And on the back side, we get the Plague Bears of Nurgle heading up. Plague Bears are pretty good against Tomb Kings if they're not being shot by bows. They can easily handle like Tomb Guard type units. Uh, we do see the big demon trying to escape a little bit, chopped up by the Ushapti here. Where is Grand, Vom Grand Vomitus going to go? Is he going to go after the catapult? Nope, doesn't look like it. Looks like he's going to kind of continue chasing Kothep and see if he can catch Tim to while they're slipping. But Tim is uh, quite elusive. Stream of Corruption going down. Surprised to use the Winds of Magic for that, not for another heal. But he's probably, he probably doesn't have enough Wom for another overcasted Fleshy in general. Ooh, and Shrieking Sky Rays melting that position. Flesh Doggies coming in, pinning back the army. Big, big damage. And you have to remember this, this damage meter up here. Remember, my, my lips are getting a little dry. I need some water. But this damage meter is not keeping track of crumbling damage on either side. So that's something that you need to uh, account for here. Another Nurgling unit going to move over, but it looks like the Demons of Chaos could be under uh, pressure and maybe lose that back objective. Little popcorn Bandits shooting their laser beams into the Skeleton Warriors here. Kotev does get hit once, but it looks like he mostly escapes from there. A lot of crumbling undead here. Plague Bearers and Blues are on their way to support, but those Catapults are doing uh, what appears to be some decent work, although they're shooting at the Heroes, which is strange. They're actually targeting the Golden Griffin. Oh, okay, now they're switching on to the Flesh Hounds, it would appear. Yeah, a lot of crumbling undead. I think that the Demons of Chaos, despite the value, what it says here, I, I think they're actually ahead in this game. It kind of feels that way. Tim looks like his army's petering out a little bit. Like, he's got a couple of these, but a lot of crumbling infantry. He's got some Ushapti. Um, but the Bloodthirster should be able to put some big hurt on those Ushapti if he attacks them properly. We'll have to see. He does have that ward save ability, but I believe it's... Oh, no, that's the ROR one. <clears throat> Not him. So, Demon's arriving. Side objective is being held by the uh, Tomb Kings now. So, Tim the Wilder has gotten back on the board in terms of points. Nurglings will get absolutely karate chopped by Tomb Guard. Tomb Guard are relatively kind of mid-tier unit. I wouldn't call them elite, but they can definitely take a Nurgling. That is not that big of a feat. So the Sour Guts and maybe these little popcorn bandits, the Frolicking uh, Bubonics. Is that what they're called? Bubonic? Yes, going to be heading to Objective 3. 
Meanwhile, the Bloodthirster and the Monster Tag Team is going to be the Monstars. Oh, this is like the Space Jam build, dude. Yeah, he's got the Monstars build. Yeah, he's going to be taking these Ushapti to the club. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Great Bow call in. I think the big Tomb King's monster, or the big Tomb King shooting could be good at maybe finishing off some of the very tattered demons. We do see Grand Vomitus being close to his healing cap. So Tim is resurgent a little bit. We're seeing some Tomb King sustainability. More Plague Bearers are up, and now the Changebringers are back out, as well as Flush Hounds. Flush Hounds will come in, and with proper micro, should be able to rear charge and uh, take down that position. And the Changebringers is the big question mark here. How good are they going to do? The demons seem to be struggling with the Ushapti. Uh, and we do see the Bloodthirster getting beat up, but that's a lot of firepower. A ton of undead going to be melting there. But the Ushapti Great Bows, have they been called back in? I thought I saw some big shooting coming from across map. Nope. Tim is just spending it as he gets it. Uh, it is going to be carrying. Yeah, demons are probably winning this blob fight. None of them have any capture weight, though. That's the only problem for the demons there. Changebringers maneuver to the other side, getting a beautiful shot right into the Tomb Guard there, who do get the Japsker's Blades which will help them with a little bit of DPS, but Tomb Guard do not do magic damage, which is strange since they're like an undead thing, but I guess it makes sense. They're just using normal weapons, but yeah, Flesh Doggies will trade okay. We see these guys crumbling down, and um, Screamers gonna need to distract the Carrion for now, but yeah, one more shot there should give the fight to the old demons on the ground. Meanwhile, the Demon Goon Squad, the Monstars, yeah, they're doing uh, doing some work. Plague Bears have also arrived at the back objective, and the Tomb Kings are in massive danger of losing this. Now that the big demons have some... Oh, we had another fleshy, and he uses it on the Bloodthirster, which is now healing capped. Man, that is so many healing capped expensive monsters. That has got to feel pretty wild for old Tim the Wilder. Now, this is a really good chase, though, for Tim. He's got the Carrion. He's hunting down the Changebringers. Uh, he's going to call in probably some Furies back here, and then turn and fight him 2v1. But the demons do manage to wrestle the side objective, the little Nurglings and the Tomb Guard duking it out. We'll see. I think the Nurglings will be able to get it. Uh, in the meantime, the demons are now threatening this point. Ushapti are crumbling down. And the Monstar Goon Squad, dude. Oh, my goodness. I I thought that was like an auto-gen build when I saw it. But it worked pretty damn well. It worked pretty damn well indeed. Now, looking on the backside, we do have the Screaming Meme Catapults. Not really going to do a whole lot at this point. I mean, it's almost out of ammo. But it's probably paid for itself. It's shooting at decent units. Yeah, it's got about a thousand value, which is good. But yeah, the Monstars are going to get this point, though, I think. Uh, it is still owned by Tomb Kings, I suppose. But when the Ushapti and the Skeleton Horseman get pushed off... Oh, yeah, no, there's no capture weight here. That's why it's going like that. Changebringers did pull back. And we do see Furies battling Carrion. I actually don't know who wins that fight. Um, looks like maybe the Carrion don't have enough damage output to deal with the Furies. We do get the Changebringers back online. Roasting into the Skeleton Horseman, taking down about 20% of their HP instantly. The Changebringer play from Berserk today has been absolutely nuts. It's been absolutely crazy. Yeah, the, all the colors of the rainbow. That, that is indeed the build here. And we, we're going to have a lot of good games today. This is a best of five series, so... And now that we have the new timers, uh, it should be a lot quicker. A lot quicker. Yeah, man, Tomb Kings didn't have any Sepulchral Stalkers. They're probably really regretting that. They would be good against the Changebringers, potentially with laser beams and also all these monsters, but... I, I think Tim simply does not have any Sepulchral Stalkers uh, in his army. Side objective, Demon's got that one. Nurglings can probably defeat the Tomb Guard at this point, especially with the Sky Race. And Nurglings coming in to reinforce. Tim is, I think, dead in the water, guys. Uh, even though he's ahead in value, it's not true because the Demons have had a ton of healing. Uh, probably like three or 4,000 worth of healing, honestly, if not more. Pretty nuts. And that is it. The Hagger, Demons of Chaos, what appeared to be a meme build, steel chairing a very competitive Tomb Kings. Wow, that was crazy. That was crazy indeed. No laser snakes, yeah, no sepulchral stalkers. That that was probably what cost him. He didn't have a lot of anti-large, like no anti-large. The only thing he had was the Ushapti Grapos. And you can see how good Berserk was at dealing with that threat, right? He saw the one thing that could kill his army and he went all in to get it. And then he just claims victory. Super clean. Berserk, an absolute terror. Value on Vomitus, 13. 2,500 on the Bloodthirster. And then 1800. This is like what you want to see when you watch Warhammer games, right? This is this is what it's all about. Yeah, it's what it's all about. 790 and Changebringers with 2000. Yeah, bows were good, obviously. Despite being pressured, they still got some value. But yeah, that was, that was a pretty insane game. All right. So let me tell the players. GG well played. Okay. So let's get the timer set up. Did you, uh, GG, let me know when you send code for next pick. I will start timers. Okay. Let's checking this, let's do that and that. 
All right, team. A beautiful game. Beautiful game indeed. Best surprise game of the year. Oh, yeah, that was, that was awesome. Change breakers are nasty. They require a ton of micro, though. Like, I think a lot of lesser players would have found a way to lose those, but... Okay. Sent. And uh, he's got it. And let's see. Let's see what it's going to be. We've had some really good games today. We really have. All right. Can you swap map? So the map for the next one is going to be... We'll let them get settled, and it is going to be the Haunted Veil. All right. The Haunted Veil, so it begins. Let the Nurglings feast. Yeah, that was pretty big brain. It was. Five minutes starting now for pick and ban phase. Okay. Perfect, and I'm gonna start the timer. And I'm gonna go refill my water. I'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, we're back. The timer's running. Um, we ended up giving him 10 minutes for this part and then five minutes for army picking. So I think that makes a little more sense. I got them kind of confused when I was thinking before. But yeah, we'll see what they got, man. Uh, the picks for the players, we have Berserk picking Dwarves, Norska, and Lizardmen, and Tim picking Greenskins, Grand Cathay, and Empire. Ah, could be fun. See a little bit of Sigmar today. Could always be nice. Could be nice. Tim is probably so confused on what to... I think they know Berserk, though. Yeah, they probably know he does that. Because I know Houseplant has played a lot of series against Berserk, and I would wager Tim has too, so it's probably not unusual to them, although that build was pretty extreme. That was a very extreme build. Yeah, we have uh, our Discord, whatever game you're into that we cover. Uh, we have a very active Total War community, obviously, where we host all our tournaments. If you guys are a little bit newer, let me show you the ropes on old uh, Total Tavern. Okay. So this is our uh, our Total War kind of competitive esports website of sorts. I don't know. Esports is such a weird thing. But here we are. It's going to load in a second. We're just waiting. 
So we have an intermediate tur tournament tomorrow uh, going down. So you can see upcoming events. There's a couple articles which are a bit outdated. I need to work on that. You see our leaderboard. Um, you can see the Hall of Fames and how the pick system works and everything. Um, and yeah, you can also join the Discord by clicking the little icon up here. Uh, is it that? Yeah, I think that should do it. I should take you to the Discord. So hopefully the link's up to date. Should be. But um, yeah, and Fr Frost has got you covered in chat. Hell yeah, Frost. Let's go. And uh, yeah, that's that. So they got six minutes left. Yeah, look, they're they're so much faster now. Now that there's a little bit of a clock on them, they're uh, they're they're doing great. I gave them ten minutes for this part, just because you know that's fifteen minutes in between games is tolerable. You know that's tolerable. But we have a really active Total War community. Age of Empires is very active, and also Dune Spice Wars are probably the three biggest games that are played in our communities right now. Um, Spice Wars has been popping off. People love playing that. There's like games like all day. Uh, Berserk and Tim the Wilder played each other in a best of five final for Sun Tzu. Oh, got it. Okay. So they, they played recently. I'm not used to multi. Is it? Yeah, it's, it's new friendly. We have beginner tournaments every now and then. And um, you can just, even if you don't want to play tourneys, you can, you can get a role. There's a role where you can ping people uh, to who are looking for games as well. And just let them know you're new and you should be fine. Hmm. Yeah, the infantry, man, those infantry. I'm I'm inspired for some demons of chaos. I actually uh I didn't do it as well as Berserk did, but I there was a time where I was mainly like playing Demons of Chaos and I actually managed to win two tournaments with them. And it was with single entity cheese, but it was back with I think it was was it Bellicor? Yeah, I was using Bellicor and like double soul grinder. So it was some weird thing like that. Yeah, they can do some weird stuff. It was like Bellicor, double soul grinder, and double uh Herald of Corn, like the corn melee fighter guys. Yeah, it works okay. All right, five minute warning. All right, I'm giving the warning to them both. I even gave them like a little extra cushion, so. To finish three by three. Okay, they've gotten their five minute warning. They have four minutes and 30 seconds left. Yeah, and we have like, uh, in our Discord, we have a lot of sections about like builds and there's like threads and everything. I'll show you guys real quick. Let's do this. Um, all right, so if you come on over to the old Discord. All right, let's find this. I'm going to Total War. Yeah, so, all right, here it is. So yeah, when you're in the Discord, you know, there's a lot going on. You can uh, go to the top and, and you can do, um, you know, you can you can see all the, you know, admin stuff up there. But if you come further down, we have a general community section, which is just to talk about anything. Uh, we have our Total War, which is, like I said, very active. We have a forum within it, right? So we have an entire forum. Slanesh Theory Crafting, Empire Player Support Group, How Do You Play Beastmen, Wood Elf Theory Crafting. There's like forums for like every faction, more or less. It's... Some are more active than others, like some are from like 20 days ago or whatever, but like there's plenty of active ones going on. We have um, the tournament stuff, map making section if you're into making maps. Um, we have Age of Empires and then Dune down here. And then Age of Wonders and Blood Bowl have like small sections, but they're not super active, but uh, we do have all that. So yeah, whatever you're into, man, whatever you're into. So they got three minutes left to finish their three by three. Uh, you know, cause when you're, when you're, the grid can take some time, it, it's, and with a high stakes event, I don't want to rush them too much, but they're getting a little bit of a poke for sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. It is time. Let the Nurglings feast. More off meta builds. We could. I mean, I think I don't think Berserk brought that build because he was rushed. I think he brought it because he thought it would work and it did. Sepulchral, yeah, laser beam snakes would have been very helpful because they can fight the demons in melee and they also have the laser beam eyes. Unfortunately, laser beam snakes are pretty uh, are pretty haggard in tabletop. It's a shame. Sepulchral stalkers are just awful in tabletop in my experience. And they're so freaking cool too. I wish they had like, they should have given sepulchral stalkers like a really good anti-large profile or something like monster slayer type thing, but yeah. I don't know, maybe something something fun. Okay. So five minute warning, two minute warning, and two minute warning. Uh, they, they, they're sweating bullets now. Okay, great. So we got our matchup. And 
And yep, so we got Grand Cathay versus Norska. So now I'm gonna do five minutes to build armies starting now. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do this, do that, and then we can do like trying to figure out how how to how to do this. Okay. Okay, the players have been given the five minute warning to build their armies. <laughs> Whoever doesn't ready up before then, you know, is going to get a warning, and then they could potentially lose the game if they do it again. So. Uh, Iron Titans don't exist in the same way in tabletop. Let me show you. Um, while we're waiting for the players to get this going here, uh, the old world army builder. Okay. So Tomb Kings have. Um, yeah. So if you're making a Tomb Kings army, let's go to Tomb Kings of Hemery here. Two thousand points. Sure. They have the. Uh, it's called a Necrolith Colossus. Yeah, it's different. They're they're not bad. They have what? Yeah, large target, regeneration, stop attacks, terror, unstoppable assault. This is kind of a funny rule where if they kill a model, you get to roll, roll a four up, I believe, and then they can attack again. During combat, every attack it makes that causes an unsafe wound allows it to immediately make one additional attack. It's pretty damn cool. It's pretty damn cool. So yeah, let's see what his stat. So he's 160 points, which is kind of cheap, actually. Like giants are like over 200 points. Uh, he's got five wounds. That actually seems like a bit of a steal. How many attacks? The only four attacks. He's got four attacks. Okay, it's not like a ton. Does he have Swift Stride? He doesn't have Swift Stride, so he's a little bit slow. I don't know. You know, to be honest, guys, for 160 points, that kind of sounds like a good deal. Yeah, and he's undead. But if he loses combat, I mean, only four attacks. I mean, that's eh, four is a bit. And he, what are his weapons? He's got the Paired Great Kopeshes, which are Strength User, so Strength 6. Killing Blow also, okay. Okay, and he's got the stomp attacks too, D3, so potential of up to seven attacks. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, no, there's no bow, there's no, uh, there's no bow monster, yeah, there's no bow giant, yeah, bone giant. That is the bone giant tabletop, he can't bring a bow, yeah. Yes. It's his time. That weapon skill is off, is it? Pretty sure his weapon skill is pretty low. Let me look here. Uh, so game view, his weapon skill is three. That doesn't seem wrong to me. That's pretty, like a lot of monsters have pretty low weapon skill. It's like three or four. Yeah. It says that is low though. I mean, he, he might struggle to hit things. Maybe that's why he's haggard and has the unstoppable assault thing. Who knows? But yeah, honestly, not a terrible monster. I think the best monster the they have is the, uh, Great. Look at that. The players did their build in three minutes. Oh my god. Okay, so we've loaded in. And just like this, the players are, are getting there. It's just time. We got Grand Cathay versus Norska. Uh, Norska is... I don't know who's favored here, honestly. Grand Cathay does have some good tools against them. Their infantry are extremely resilient. We have a cannon. We have Xiao Ming, the Iron Dragon. It's the works, man. It's the works. Is there a separate Bone Giant in Old World? Uh, no, no, there's not. The Colossus is the only one, and then you have the um, and then you have the Ushapti Grapos and all that stuff as well. They need to share more. I know. I don't know. Well, GW probably just doesn't want to make a new model for the Bone Giant with the bow. Would be my guess, unless there was one before. Lich would know the answer to that. All right, guys, let's get it. It's going to be Berserk on the forces of Norska and Tim the Wilder bringing Grand Cathay. So Xiao Ming the Iron Dragon is obviously an auto take here, right? He uh, is just so good at clearing out lightly armored infantry. So basically, you just spam Dragon's Breath and then turn him into a dragon. And honestly, trying to kill Xiao Ming is pretty much always a mistake. So I suspect that's not going to happen. We have one cannon hidden in the trees. It's going to be kind of parked back here. This cannon crew is literally going to shoot into this tree if they don't move, but... I'll probably scoot up here and then rip some shots into the Gold Voider. For the rest of the army, it is going to be a classic Cathay battle line. Uh, a combination of Jade Warriors backed up by some archers and guns. All right. Very neat, man. Very neat. Iron Hill Gunners, Peasant Archers. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Iron Hill Gunners will be very good against monsters and trolls and Femir and things like that. Look at Berserk. 
Yeah, he's using some forbidden tech today. Uh, you don't really see Fimir very often, but yeah, they're cool. Extra, extra good missile resist at 20%. And you can see 20, I think they have 25% base. And then this is active when their leadership is good. So they, they're going to be sitting at 45% missile resist, which against Cathay is a pretty considerable buff there. Not bad at all. It is going to be Marauders with great weapons, basic Marauders, Cold Voider. Uh, Berserk it certainly has a romance of the Cold Voider. It's, it's, oh my God. Oh my God, stop. How do I make it stop? It's the timer from the players. Okay, I figured out how to make it stop. <laughs> Sorry for the jump scare, guys. Classic uh, high production value here in this tournament. We don't mess around. But yeah, I like the Famir. It's kind of a fun tech, right? They have armor sundering, so they can bolster the Marauders down here and uh, potentially karate chop them with the generic ringtone sounds. You gotta love it. Now, for Grand Cathay, for Tim the Wilder, uh, your plan is to move up here and just kind of hold on these two objectives here, right? You just you just get up on objective one and objective two. You just let Norska Unga Bunga all over the other objective. The nation calls. I know, I'm sorry. I couldn't make it stop. It was such a struggle. I think we got a little vanguard of Norsk and Warhounds too. What are these guys gonna do? Getting extra, extra sneaky. So they're gonna try and sneak around or are they gonna actually attack some spear units? Yeah, it seems like Berserk, he's like always looking for areas to squeeze out value. He's the value man. We do see the Hounds moving up the side of the map. Tim the Wilder immediately trains the cannon on them, knowing that he might be able to break and route them off the field because they have low leadership. <laughs> Shut up, demon. I know. <laughs> they wake up game two is here. Yeah, the Hounds. Oh my god, he's even trying to juke cannon shots. This man is just made of sweat. Yeah, it's no joke. All right, a couple archers shoot at the doggos. They're going to be retreating back. He's going to try and make sure the Hounds don't break off the battlefield. And uh, Zhao Ming is now going to be going Super Saiyan. Oh, that's like one of the coolest animations when he turns into his dragon form. Yeah, he, he probably has the best one of all the dragons. So cannons are now shooting down into the uh, Norskin Ice Doggos, but Berserk is individually microing each of his hound units to try and avoid cannon shots. Extremely sweaty. I love to see it. This is what you want out of a Grand Finals, right? Cannons bouncing, missing the Famir Warriors, but they sit back at the ready general. And we do have the great cannon down here. What is it going to be targeting again? Famir would obviously be an ideal target. They have kind of weird hitboxes, I've noticed, but... Beautiful breath attack there. Really, really nice one by Tim the Wilder. That was great. That nailed two units, and that is Value City. So Grand Cafe is doing some heavy value trading. They're just going to sit back in their defensive formation. This this brings me back to my land battle days. They're like, come at me, bro. This is like Warhammer 1 land battle when, like, <laughs> people just use the white line to cut you off. But the problem of doing that in domination mode is that you lose all the objectives, right? Which is very dodgy, so... We'll see how it works out for him. Wolfric is going to try and get a C-Fang down. He's riding around the front. And what would be the best angle for a C-Fang? Probably like right here. Oh, he's going to go like this. Okay, that's not bad. He's just Are these Jade? They're just peasants. Oh, okay. So he gets a good one. Yeah, he hits the peasant archers and goes up through the Iron Hills and Cold Voider. Oh my God, Berserk with a devastating attack here. Here, here, and here. Like almost insta-killing three range units with a combination of Wolfric's boat as well as the Cold Voider's breath attack. Oh my goodness, that was uh, that was really, really good. Now we got the Empress's Crowmen being called in for Tim. Very resilient fighters. Their bombardment is also quite strong. But Norska is probably happy to just kind of do really, really you know, basic trades like this and maintain a triple cap. I can't help but think that maybe the forces of Grand Cathay need to move up a little bit. This one feels very dodgy, but that was a brutal combo right there. Like, look at these archer units. They're on death's bed. They're all wavering and stuff. That's uh, very, very dodgy. So Zhao Ming getting hunted by the Frost Doggies, but obviously we're going to see Tim the Wilder pull that guy back. Cannon shots, the classic uh, lag here. It wasn't so bad in game one, but it's gotten a little bit worse here. What? Where's that cannon going? Oh, we get to watch it slow-mo. Oh, it's going after the Femir. There you go. He's killed a couple of those. Yeah, killing the Femir Warriors will buy his Jade Warriors a lot of time. Hunter of Champions is active, and we do see Zhao Ming being slowed down. Okay, so he's getting... Uh, Hunted by the old Norse Ice Doggies. And yeah, that's a lot of damage. I don't know if trying to kill Zhao Ming is the right idea. Like, he's going to be able to just heal and get that free healing action going. And Grand Cathay now moving up Iron Hill Gunners. Should have done this a moment ago. And yeah, Zhao is just such a raid boss. He's got like ward save. And Hunter of Champions, though, certainly helps to uh, take him down. Is Grand Cathay going to move up or are they going to continue to value trade like this? And the problem is they're value trading evenly. It's not like they're yielding some sort of a big advantage. The Iron Dragon does escape that. A couple of units of Jade Lancers did move in to salvage him. And now the Femirs and the Cold Voider, Wolfric will be able to easily chase back the Jade Lancers. Iron Hill Gunner shots into the Dragon. Not bad. Does do some HP damage. Now Tim is going to start split pushing, it looks like. Yeah, he's going to use the Empress's Crowmen and a Jade Lancer unit to harry the flanks. 
We'll see how it works out for him. Yeah, he does wreck those Marauders there. Really, really good stuff. They have a pretty dynamic faction. It's not like they have the best cavalry in the game, but Jade Lancers are, you know, pretty respectable. They're decent. And their Harmony's active, too. You can see the Harmony's actually active right now because of the uh, the Chroman. Really, really like that combo. Like, using Chroman with those guys. Cinematic slow-mo. Yeah, it, go it comes and goes. It's actually not that bad right now. So, Cathay is not advanced up yet. More horsemen coming out of the tree line. We got the uh, bows as well as the Iron Hill Gunner shooting into the Femir. And uh, they are taking it like champs. It's going to be another Wolfric boat, and that's going to be a beauty. Oh, oh, that's a burning head. Oh, my God, he's got burning head. That's going to go into the cannon crew as well. Tim's backfield definitely getting pushed pretty hard. We're going to see if he can escape from his box. This is a very greedy Cathay playstyle. Uh, he is pulling a slight value lead right now, but the points are going up, man. They're going up pretty hard. Uh, Norska is obviously a little bit nervous about Ungabunging all in. But maybe Tim will pull this off. Yeah, maybe he will. I mean, he is getting... Uh, he's only up by about four or 500, I suppose. But a lot of the value that we do see on the Norskin side is tied up in Zhao Ming, which is basically dead value because of his fact that... Because of the fact that he has... He's such top tier um, healing, right? He's got that fat uh, burning band braces. Where is that? Yeah, we'll, we'll look later. But regardless, when he gets low, it heals him. So it's kind of dead value for now. He's he's the character you typically ignore. Yeah, we see the Femir Warriors here just kind of running back and forth, absorbing a lot of the missile fire. On the other side, the Empress's Crowman appear to have been uh, fended off by the Cold Voider, so the big dragon was able to keep those crows honest. Unsummons coming down from Norska, so the Unga Bunga is going to be sending back some of the Marauders to let them heal. And uh, more and more great opens on the win. Nothing on the side. Cathay, typically it's a mistake to split push. You always want to have a consolidated army and kind of move up, right? Yeah, the sniping attempt was a decent try, but it didn't work out as planned. So Femir here, this is very dangerous for the forces of Berserk. The Femir could easily get routed off the battlefield by the dragon, and I don't think they're ITP yet. So they could get routed by the terror route and just run straight off and get chased. Norska coming in with some support. So we got Norska and Ice Doggies, as well as great weapons and some basic Marauders on the way. The Cold Voider in the meantime eating cannonball so we did get cannonballed and norska has pushed in here so marauders with great opens and Femir on the flank are cutting through the jade warriors so the uh, forces of grand Cathay could be buckled here here, here the classic overwhelmed as they get pushed back by the Femir, and now the cannons and the missiles are open this is really big for the norskin barbarians as they have gotten in peasant archer is going to be shut down iron hill shut down cannon and iron hill gunners could also be compromised soon tim rotating his formation pulling the Jade Warriors to try and intercept Iron Hill Gunners, doing what they can to stop the advancing Barbarians, but it is going to be tough. That cannon could be caught. Nope, looks like it's going to stabilize. Over here, this fight going well for Tim the Wilder. I would say the Jade Warriors and the Peasant Spears probably will defeat the Femir and the Doggos here. And we're going to see how long Norsk is going to be able to hold on to the objectives, because uh, as it currently stands, we do see Cathay being pushed back, but Norska's army doesn't look to be too uh, prevalent on the battlefield. I'm not seeing a whole lot, whereas I see a lot of Cathay units. We have the Great Weapons in here battling it out against the Jades. The Femir and the Great Weapons, though. Yeah, these ones are pushing in deep. And that cannon, those cows are going to be pulling that. And uh, I don't know how it's going to go. Grand Cannon could fall here. What do we got in the backside? A couple units for Tim that probably need to be unsummoned and or brought back in. Collins are going to be just basically infantry to reinforce the points. Because Norska probably anticipates that they're going to be losing this fight. Uh, like pushing Cathay. But they're anticipating that they can then win on the objectives. Which is a very valuable playstyle. Trying to... You know, not valuable, but valid is what I meant to say. Uh, stuffing your opponent back in their deployment zone and then winning on objectives. This has been something that's been prevalent since the beginning of Domination Mode. So Burning Head going down. Going to cook some Peasant Spearmen. Tickle the Jade Lancers, but Grand Cathay does win this. And now it's time for Grand Cathay to feast. They need to move up, get on the points. But Norska is not going to make it easy. Oh, we got Marauder Champs coming out. Oh, these are champions. Oh my god, yeah, the, the apes are strong together. That's right. But the Marauder Champs are going to take 10 years to kill. That's going to be so incredibly hard. Jalming going after Old Wolfric here. And here we do see the Marauders with great weapons. Marauder Champions, mind you. I don't think Tim realizes that Champs have been called out. Because these guys are armored. They're armored to the teeth. They're hard to take down. And they have excellent killing power. So yeah, Tim is going to push, but he's going to meet Stalwart Resistance. These are no longer Marauders. Another uh, Burning Head attempt going down here. It does uh, kind of hit the Archer unit. And the Femir... And those uh, Marauders actually made it pretty far. As a matter of fact, almost got the cannon offline, but it looks like Tim was able to micro his cannon away, relocate it, and now that thing is shooting again into the center mass. So Norska is almost at 1,000 points. This is going to be one of those games where Grand Cathay has to push up and re-secure the objectives. Um, and again, I do think Tim the Wilder is overall ahead in the state of the battle, simply because the value that has been done to Zhao Ming is really insignificant with his healing. Unless you could just like straight up Alpha Strike him. It's not going to be uh, you know awesome. So Marauder Champs do arrive, and these Marauder Champions are bullying the Grand Cathay Cavalry. Jade Lancer's getting crushed. 
Uh, Jade Warriors getting crushed as well. Those champs are just such a problem. Nothing on the side point. It would be kind of interesting to see. Yeah, I was about to say a horseman to spawn in and steal that objective. But the problem is uh, Norska can just call in the Beast of Tashnar to stop them or any sort of a hound unit like the Frost Doggos. They'd probably be able to do some good work. Uh, Xiaoming getting a little bit low, but again, he's just going to be proccing his heal. Middle objective is owned by the Norskan Ungabunga, and it is going to be approaching 1,000 points here in a second. So this is like a rock-hard uh, triple cap situation. And these Marauder Champions are just carrying right now. They're just cutting through waves and waves of these dudes and holding back the tide of the uh, forces of uh, Cathay. Yeah, a little bit of a split cap threatening. I do like that. I think uh, Berserk's going to have to reroute some of these guys. Hopefully for Berserk's sake, he doesn't get too focused. And hopefully for Tim's sake, uh, Berserk doesn't notice this and he loses a side objective. That would massively increase the chances of Tim the Wilder uh, winning this game. Doggos do line up. Iron Hill Gunners, though. Nice shots. He routes off the Doggos with the Iron Hill Gunners. They were able to form ranks. And the champions, how much longer are they going to hold for? They do have the Rage going, so they're at Tier 2 Rage right now. So, yeah, they're looking pretty damn good. Physical resist, leadership, and MD. Their leadership does not care about the big dragon nearby. And the Norsekin Ice Wolves route over, and they do intercept the Jade Lancers, but the Crowmen coming to help. Crowmen might be able to rear charge the Doggos. But Wolfric should be able to stabilize that fight. And also, yeah, both Hound units return. Cold Voider's coming, and Norska is going to be sending some uh, Skin Wolves over to defend the back point against the Cavalry, which is very smart. Champs are going to lose ground soon, though. But Grand Cathay is really, really slow at getting objectives. But Tim is doing a good job kind of threatening all three objectives. Cannonball going into the Cold Voider. Oh, my God. Berserk paying attention. Dodges it at the last second. Man, what a good series we're having between these two players. This is incredibly scrappy. Uh-oh. Beast of Tashnar. The ambush. Norskin Warhounds, not beasts. And they do get the cannon. So the cannon crew is going to fall here. And that Grand Cannon is going to be offline. And uh, he finally gets rid of the threat to his big dragon. And that cannon probably has over 1,000 value. It's done really good. So Conan Wolves called in. It's going to be Condom Wolves or Peasant Horseman. Tim is going pedal to the metal to try and ninja these objectives. The Skin Wolves might be able to stabilize this one. Looks like they will. I think at this point for Norska, you got to Unga Bunga on one objective. Yep, he's doing it. So Norska is going all in on the back objective. They're just going to start sending Marauders nonstop to that point and hope that Wolfric and the Cold Voider are able to stop Zhao Ming's advances. Because this point is so close to flipping. Oh my god, but Norska has nothing on it. Is Grand Cathay going to get it? I think they will. But Norska is holding on up until 1,300 points. This one, it's going to be flipping, so the champions did eventually lose. But the Norskin Warhounds that got the cannon, guys, they came through here. They slipped in, and then they did get on top of the Iron Hill Gunners as well. So Berserk desperately trying to hold on to these points. Conable is doing okay work, but being attacked by the uh, by the Crowmen is not good for them at all. We got multiple units of, uh, I believe, Hounds coming in. Or no, yeah, Warhounds here, Berserkers, Marauders. Well, not Berserkers, but Marauders. All the Norskins are kind of Berserkers, but, you know, you get what I'm saying. So Hunter of Champions activated on Xiao Ming, but that's just going to be proccing his heal, so it's no, no sweat off Xiao Ming's back. Uh, Tim the Wilder definitely ahead in the overall state of the army, but it looks like he's going to try and break Xiao. He's going to try and break him, but Xiao's leadership is still 77. I mean, he, he knows no fear. This is one of the very rare mistakes, I think, from Berserk. I think Berserk maintaining his dragon back here to terror out the forces of Cathay off the objective was the better play. But he decides to go for the kill on Zhao, which Zhao is just going to heal, and uh, it ain't going to matter. It ain't going to matter at all. So Hunter of Champions, negative 30 and negative 40. The speed penalty is uh, certainly active there. Objective 1 is being pressed by Grand Cuthay. We do see some Rotters with Grey Opens. Trying to fight there. Maybe a cheeky Burning Head could get this one back. Is he going to send anything here? I don't think so. It's really the epicenter of action is here. It's going to be right up on this point. I think Grand Cathay might have the opportunity to get this one, though. They have a couple Jade Lancers here and also more coming in. Zhao Ming's going to get a Breath Attack and roast these Marauders. Uh, more and more Great Opens coming up. Desperation for Norska. Will they plunder the forces of Grand Cathay? Will they take the resources from these objectives? Or will Grand Cathay stop them in the fourth quarter and get it back? So we get the Marauders arriving. A lot of capture weight arriving for Grand Cathay. The Norskan infantry really need to hold here, but the Terror Route could easily swing this objective. Breath attack from Zhao Ming. Really, really clean play by Tim the Wilder. They do arrive on the point, but Grand Cathay is probably going to flip it. Oh, man. I think Cathay's got it. I think Cathay's got it. Tim the Wilder is going to be back on the board, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, there is a lot of time for Berserk to work. You know, he can try and ninja some of the side points with some hounds or something, but it is, uh, it is not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. Those Marauders get routed off. These ones are still fighting up at the point. We got Doggos coming in. He's very close. The dogs are trying to get around the side, so he's looping around, and he's going to try and get up on the objective. Yep, he's running. He's trying to get that capture weight on the point, and the hounds do get on the point. Is it enough capture weight? It is not. Marauder champions. Oh, okay. Norska maintains the objective. Tim, 
Tim might have blundered. Tim needs to get back on the objective with everything right now. He can't afford to play like that. He's got to get back on it because every second is just getting so much closer. Every second is getting so much closer. Marauders are force pathing through, by the way. That's going to be a lot of Norskin capture weight arriving. He's spam clicking on the point. They're almost on it. Are they going to arrive? They do. And the Hounds arrive at the same time. Is that enough cap weight? No, I think Grand Cathay still has the cap weight. Oh, it's in flux. But the Hounds get routed instantly. That is going to give the objective to Grand Cathay. Is Norska going to try something on the backside? Are they going to try and consolidate their forces? I don't know. No. Grand Cafe gets it with the steel chair. Tim the Wilder clutching victory. Man, that was intense from the claws of defeat. Certainly an apt analogy, but Zhao, yeah, great play. The Iron Dragon, he was able to get in. What a match. That was so sweaty. And now we got a 1-1 series on our hand here in the finals. I'm happy to see that. A lot of times our series do end with sweeps but this was not one of them. So Cold Voider did okay. Probably, yeah, 1,300, not bad. Famir kind of got pounded a little bit. Overall, the champs were really cool. They came in and were a big problem in the late game. Dual caster here, what did he have? He had like two burning head casters. That's really, really neat. GG, well played. Yeah, that was an intense victory. This is why you don't call games early. Yeah, I know. Yeah, crazy. It's a tight final series. Evenly matched are these mighty champions. And now they will begin with their next game. Hmm. Come back. Well, now they're even. Yeah, they're pretty even. It's best of five. So they have a little bit of cushion. Thank you. Thank you. And um, they are going to start. So let me get my dreaded timer up again. We're going to set it at 10 minutes. And all right, let's do that. Stop it, phone. Bad. All right. And let's play. Oops, wrong one. Hold on, what is this? Why do I have two timers going? God, I'm such an idiot. I hate technology sometimes, dude. Okay, I think we got it. There we go. So 10 minutes starting now. And let's do Berserk. Fun. And here they go. Man, that was wild. That was really, really close. Yeah, Zhao is, Zhao is a carry in that matchup. He's very good. Um, the, like he's designed to kill lots of light infantry and just survive, which is, you know, he's probably the best Cathay Lord, really. Although, I mean, the other ones are honestly not terrible. Like, Miao Ying is okay. She brings healing and, you know, <sighs> I forgot the name of the other one. The guy who, the guy who executes. So you got Zhao Ming, you have Miao Ying, and then you have, um, what is, what is the executioner guy's name? God, my brain is just out of it today. What is that? Okay, there we go. You just never see him, you know, you never see him. The Emperor's Executioner, yes. That is correct. So they have nine minutes left to do their uh, pick three. And then we will go into uh, the army building phase. So certainly, Yuan Bo, thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. Yeah, you definitely got to ignore Zhao. He's not, I mean, but like, the thing is, if, he, if, if Berserk gets a lucky engagement against Zhao, and like, gets him with the armor break and then routes him while he's broken like that's like a high chance of winning like you probably auto win at that point so i understand why he does it you know i understand why he did it yuan bow yeah yeah that's it i took two i had i was having really bad allergies last night so i took two i took two allergy uh pills and it just like made me a zombie today oh man okay so we got empire lizardmen and green skins for tim Dark Elves, Ancient Beastmen for Berserk. All right, so they're going to start on that. Very good. I've got eight minutes left. Let's do it. Uh, is there any issue if you don't have any? No, 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 no. There's no issues. You just, I mean, obviously, you know, you just want to make sure to have the factions that you play. And yeah, you're you're totally fine, Crimson. Get in there, man. Hey, everybody, get in here. I think that a Berserk kept the dragon for the last fight. He would have won. Yeah, that was a mistake too. The dragon could have terror routed some stuff off and maybe helped, but you know it wasn't it wasn't the end of it. Uh, Berserk is in VM clan, yeah. I believe they're mostly uh, Eastern Europe. I'm not sure where they're all from, but they're very good. Yeah, I mean you don't need to be in a clan to compete. It certainly helps though. I mean because you you get people to practice with, like good training partners, and uh, you you have like an echo chamber where you can, you know, bounce ideas around. That's like the big strength of it. Yeah. I would love to see a Beastman game. I would like to see the Bray Herd. Oh, I need to switch the map for these gentlemen too. Uh, so the map is going to be, all right. 
So map for the next game, we find this. And so we're on Glade of the Everqueen. All right, that's a fun map. Very fun Beastman map too. There's a lot of a lot of like ambushing points on this one. All right, Glade of the Everqueen is going to be the map. We got 1-1 one, one here in the Grand Finals. See, so yeah, I should make all factions available for PvP. That's what I've been saying too, but... I think I, I, I suggested that, that to them a couple times. I believe they responded with that, though the idea is, is sound. It's uh, the way that the DLCs are unlocked. It's like it would be they'd have to do a lot of recoding to make it so it unlocks it for multiplayer, and not for campaign or something. I can't remember. It was some nonsense like that. How are the maps decided for tournaments? Uh, it's picked by the host. So I'm the host of this tournament, so I pick the maps. Uh, pretty much every tournament host is a competitive multiplayer person, so they typically have a good gauge of the maps. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, we have a lot of great maps to choose from, right? Like our map makers have like made this community flourish. Like all these ones that have the TT next to them, these are all um, total tavern uh, maps. So made by our community, various different creators. And so like this is what CA gave us. There's literally like two good maps here. And then we have like a lot of good ones from our, our community. So thankfully it keeps us keeps us alive, you know. Uh no, Dark Elves actually got picked in this pick three, I think. Let me check. Um yeah, no, Dark Elves got picked by Berserk as one of his three. So you could see Dark Elves here. Yeah, you could see Dark Elves. Yeah. Yeah, no, F Pod, I agree for sure. Yeah. I need to go eat dinner. I'll catch the end of the stream on the VOD. Have fun, man. Yeah, that's great. And you'll be able to skip to the battles, too. Uh, when you say you have suggested them, do you mean you have direct? I mean, no more direct than anybody else who does what I do, you know? They, you know, Creative Assembly has a program um, where basically if you put up enough Total War videos, you, you can, they'll give you early access to the, um, to the, uh, to the updates and stuff. So there's like, there's like a Discord chat you have there where you can, you can, you know, give feedback like in, in bugs, like a lot of bugs are reported there. You know, that's basically what it's for. Badger Knight, thank you for the 20. Appreciate it, man. We're going hard today, baby. Getting hungry as hell. I only, I only had a bowl of granola. It's, it's getting to that, that deep, the deep end. No, I'm good, darling. Thank you. Anna, help, help me out as always. Okay, so Empire, we could see, yeah, Greenskins, Lizardmen for Tim. Lizardmen are good against like all the factions that Berserk picks. Probably would skip Zinch. He's probably going to try and get Lizards versus Dark Elves or Lizards versus Beastmen, I would wager. They're both winnable for Beastmen though, but certainly I think more easier for Lizards. Yeah, would be my guess. So they got four minutes left to decide on the factions that they're going to be picking. They're still sitting on their factions from last time, so we haven't gotten the next one yet. Soon. You guys want to have a choke point battle tournament? We should do that. The sweatiest of sweaty. They have to fight in a or ambush battle. Ambush battles, it would be pretty hilarious. Am I excited for Thrones of Decay? Oh, for sure. I mean, Empire is my favorite faction in Warhammer Fantasy. Nurgle's my other favorite faction. And I really enjoy dwarves too. So for me, that's like that's like the holy trinity of factions I would like to see. This is the part where we answer questions. That's right. That is. In between games. Yes. All right, I'll give him a three-minute warning here in a second. Let's let him know. It's almost three-minute warning. Uh, to finish army pick, to fic, uh, finish pick. Okay, so we got three-minute warning. Faction war. Yeah, I'll do a I'll do a faction war. I think we'll do one soon. Maybe after um, when Thrones comes out, we'll do a faction war. That'd be really fun. Do you think I would have fun trying this game as multiplayer as a total noob? Yeah, I mean, it's if you already own it, I would say just give it a try, you know? Find somebody who's a little bit newer like yourself and get some good reps in, and our Discord's a pretty good place for that. All right. Gave him a three-minute warning. Let's do it. Eating nothing but guacamole like a true nurgling Californian. Oh, guacamole is so good. It's so good. One of my buddies uh, in college, so this would have been, oh man, what year, 2007 or 8? He, uh, his family, his family's house is on an avocado orchard. So we would have parties. We would have parties at his um, house, you know, we would, we would, we would throw some back and have some fun. And um, when, you know, when things got a little bit crazy, we would go out to the avocado orchard, pick avocados, come back just completely, you know, out there. 
and uh and and like try and make guacamole it was the funniest thing it was so fun oh dude it's such it's so good like california guacamole or avocado is so delicious yeah so have they picked yet i gave them the three minute warning they're cutting it a little bit close lizardman versus beastman all right sounds good so they got that so let me stop this alarm now i stopped it so we're not going to get jump scared okay Five minutes to pick, starting now. To pick army. Okay, and okay. Five minute timer's on, let's go. Guacamole, no, guacamole doesn't go with granola very well. Granola is all about like honey and almonds. Yeah, honey, almonds, almond butter, like that. that's how you do granola. Yeah. Will there be some sort of an ever chosen tournament with the uh, with the new uh, update, I'm I'm working on it. I'm I'm trying to trying to pitch it and stuff. Yeah, green goo. Oh, you like wasabi, huh? Wasabi's intense. Yeah, lizardmen are, in my opinion, a little bit boring. Um, but beastmen are really fun. So we get to see beastmen. It'll it'll balance each other out. You know, mammals versus reptiles. The duel. Yes, who will win? I need Tim the Wilder with the shredder. Inject it. Oh. He's not going to do that, I don't think. Although, if there were a matchup a Shredder was good in, Beastman is certainly one of them. Because Beastman, like the Haggard Ungo Raiders, will take 10 years to kill it. If there's like a Life Slan healing it, oh my god. Hey, thank you, Christian. Appreciate it, man. This is one of the best Dread matchups, but I think Tim might be allergic to them. I think so. I agree with you, F-Pod. I think, I think the Dreader is... Um, I think the Dreader is pretty good here. Yeah. Dom Faction would be cool to do at some point, maybe spread over a couple days. Yeah, it'd have to be like a two-day event. It'd have to be a Saturday and a Sunday. Or we, what we could do for the Domination Faction War is we could start it at like, you know, 10 a.m., okay, Catholic? And then we uh, we play until we get to top eight. And then we do the top eight on stream. So kind of like what we do for this. But then like if the problem is if your faction loses, you don't get to see them at all. So that's the thing. Yeah, I, I do want to do a domination faction war though. It just would take so long. Oh my God, it would take so long. Uh, that would be like an eight hour stream if you did it all the way through. Now I could stream for eight hours, but the problem is casting and like, you know, if you're just talking and chilling, it's easy. But if you're like casting in high energy and projecting your voice for eight hours, that, that would be rough. I've done it before, but it's brutal. Don't the ogres have the most haggard legendary lords? They do. They're so terrible. Graces is just a, just an absolute terrible just piece of turd, and and Scrag is awful too. Yeah, the regular the regular dread is I think the best one because the feral one doesn't have a howda on its back, so it doesn't have the poison thing. All right, Tim is ready. Look at that. Oh no, he 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 closed. You better ready up again when the time comes. Let the nerglings feast. Uh, turn for faction war, human boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've run a million faction wars before. If if we would do it, um, I would just go down the leaderboard of total tavern, and the first ranked player would get the first pick of their faction, and I would just go all the way down, basically. Yeah, that would be. Or or if there's some way to see like who's played the most tournament games with what faction, we would do it. I'd have to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, come play, Christian. Yeah. But the Euro time zone, well, what zone are you in? Because we a lot of our tournaments are pretty Euro friendly. This one is going long, obviously. Gorgon or Jabber Slife? Okay, my conspiracy theory is that we maybe see a Jabber Slife here, but Lizards, uh, it would have, uh, Gorgon is better here because of Croxies. Uh, there's been a couple weird appearances from Jabber Slifes. Okay, uh, none of them actually. No, he just goes for Korox Man Rippers and Bushes of Calcum Guard. And he's got a wildcaster with trader can spam. You know, a lot of a lot of normal stuff here. Mm. Legendary Lord Tourney was great, it was, yeah. We certainly had more tournaments back then because I was covering mostly just Total War, but now I'm running tournaments for, you know, three different games. So we're a little spread out, but that's all good. Total War is still our focus. And uh yeah. Most of the guides I have are relatively outdated. Yeah. It, it's always evolving, right? Like I always am like, oh, I'll make one in the next update, and then the game gets changed so much. It's tricky. You can. You can see that in Rexa, yeah, it's true. Go down the leaderboard and give them the faction as they have their... Uh, I would probably just give players first pick, you know, on what they want to choose, and then go down. Yeah, we would take the top 23 players, 
and uh, do it that way. All right, so good on the players. They're picking their armies quickly. It's not too much of a wait. It's so much better than before, though, Jesus. All right, guys, taking a look here at the hordes of Tim the Wilder. Now, Tim is an OG Lizardman player. He was playing them even when they weren't OP, but um, now they're a little bit strong. So he is just straight up all Saurus spears to deal with mass. And on top of that, we got some Temple Guard. Temple Guard got reworked recently a little bit. They're pretty cool. If they are near a slan or near your lord, I believe, yeah. So they get 15% ward save and they have the sacred duty. So if they're near a lord or hero, they get uh, they cause fear and they become ITP, which is awesome. And they have primal instincts and yeah, just a super cool unit. I believe only the ROR one gets unbreakable. These ones will get uh, immune to psychology and cause fear, which is very, very helpful, right? Very helpful indeed. We do have a solar engine. Solar engine's nice for shooting at the uh, little Ungor Raiders or Minotaurs or other threats like that. So. Yeah, and also, yeah, against Minotaurs, excellent, excellent choice. Looking at the old hordes of the beast men, it's going to be Ungor Spearman Herds into the sunset, Unodos Trace Quattro, so there's going to be four of those. And in the back, we do have a couple Minotaurs with shields, which makes sense. Shielded Minotaur is probably the ideal, well rounded choice in this matchup because of the prevalence of all the javelins and blow darts and things that can wear down, like a dual weapon one and other things like that. So, uh, yeah, very cool. I love the Bestigor herd, by the way. That's that's the power fantasy. Like, a Bestigor will crush a unit of Sara Spears. Not, eh, crush might be an exaggeration, but they'll beat them pretty soundly. And they'll also be able to trade well in the Temple Guard. So, yeah, I like the Bestie. We'll see if they get focused. Should be great. So, I believe I saw double casters at some point, or is it just Traderkin? I think it's just Traderkin here. Yep, just going to be a Traderkin spammer. And uh, old Tim the Wilder going to be hunkering down on objective number two here with his solar engine. So it's moving up forward. There it goes. The beast waddles. Yeah. I wish, like, man, Games Workshop really dropped the ball so much with Old World in some ways. Like, yeah, they did a good job in many ways. Like, I love the rules and the factions that are in the game. But, like, not having, like, like Lizardmen and Skaven and Vampire Counts in the core is just so haggard. I, I don't know. They're so iconic, you know, of the game. But I understand maybe they don't want, like, overlap from... Uh, from uh, Age of Sigmar, which, you know, I, I don't know. I think it would just be it would just be good to have them all. I bet you someday, my, my conspiracy is that someday Games Workshop will add, um, they will add those some of those factions back into core. Like, I think they will. Especially like Vampire Counts, like they're in the Empire and Skaven. Like, I feel like those are just Warhammer Fantasy and it's like super iconic, you know? Yeah. All right, so the Solar Engine's blasting. It does manage to pick off. Oh, look at this. So Berserk actually uses Centigors of Zinch which I wouldn't have expected. This is very interesting. It does, they do have the regenerating shields, which allows them to mitigate some of the poke. That's kind of a cool idea. And the Beastmen, okay. So it looks like Berserk is truly, truly uh, likes to play to his name. He gets aggressive, he pushes in, and he takes all three objectives and is gonna force Tim to do the same thing he did last game, which was to, uh, you know, get him back like that. But I mean, I, I think that's a bit of a mistake. I think just sitting on the two objectives and forcing Tim to come to you is probably a little bit safer because extending into Tim's kill box here with all these like javelins and skanks and spears is going to be a rough situation, right? These Minotaurs are going to get solar engines. So here comes laser beam. Oh, right in the back. Did it get a Minotaur? Uh, looks like they will be able to get away. Yes, yes. So objective dose currently in the hands of the beast men. Morker, the pimp gave, is going to be on his way up. And uh, yeah, he's very disruptive. Morker, probably just going to waddle after one target, maybe the Bastilladon. And uh, the Bracium and the Berserk getting caught. I know for Berserk, it's very late at night now. So we'll see if uh, the fatigue gets to him. Where he lives, I believe it's like like 2 or 3 a.m. And I know for Tim, he's in the same time zone as me. So he's, he's like 5 o'clock right now. So it could happen. And uh, Triple Cap is going to be the tail of the tape. He's got Butchers of Kalkengard and Zangor's coming in. Uh, I think that maybe Berserk should just kind of like, yeah, be careful with these engagements. It's very like he's engaging a spear unit with Minotaurs, which is just getting butchered. It's going to be taking a lot of shots. But yeah, you know, I mean, he likes to play that way and it's worked for him. He's aggressive and true to his name. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't know the words wait and breaks. Yeah, and it's worked for him. I mean, he defeated, you know, Houseplan earlier and... Uh, which is a super big accomplishment. Um, that's very, very hard to do. Temple Guard are now going to be waddling up. Blizzard's going to be slow pushing, just trying to get value where they can, mitigating the effectiveness of the Beastman ambushes. Spears here, battling versus the Ungors and the Butchers of Kalkengard. The Sar Spears might take a little bit of work. Oh, and look at that! The Beastman ambush in the woods! Centigor is coming through the trees. So they looped up and through the tree line here. And they come around the back and do ambush the Sar Spear units, which are now taking pretty considerable casualties to the point where they might actually break. 
And Berserk then does retreat, but one of his Centaur units could get caught here. Oh, yeah, he's right in the spawn zone of the Dinos. Very dangerous, but he does get away from the Spears, and I actually don't hate this play. So now Berserk is going to get a free kill on the Feral Cold Ones and potentially have an opportunity to push into the secondary here. Tim the Wilder has gotten the objective here, so Objective 2 is now in the clutches of the Dinos as the uh, stalwart formations of the Temple Guard and the Saurus Warriors continue moving up. Here they go. Javelins, Beastman trying to contest it a little bit, but just kind of eating a lot of missile play. Tim the Wilder pretty well ahead in value, but this backfield trade not terrible. He might be able to get a route on the cohort as well. And where is he going to go with these Minotaurs? Bestigors have arrived. If they don't get focus fired, they'll trade turbo cost effectively into the Spears here. Bray Shaman a little bit caught up in the trees. A bit of a blunder here, letting the Bray Shaman get, you know, poked by all these Saurus. And Saurus have really good mass, actually. For an infantry unit, they have 190 apiece. Whereas the uh, chariot guy here, he's probably uh, probably like over 1,000. Yeah, 1,200. So yeah, a couple Saurus can definitely block you up. Now, Collins are going to be Centigors of Zinch. He seems to be a big Centigor of Zinch enjoyer. We've seen him on uh, several points doing that. He does have the points advantage. Value is being, uh, you know, brought brought a little bit more even as the Beastmen actually cleave through this position. So we see a mass Lizardman break over here. We do see the Saurus breaking, and here the Skin Cohorts got broken. Traderkin and all the Centigors able to fend off the Dinos. And now they call in another Skin Cohort, which I think Berserk is just going to farm. Right, just going to hunt that down. He's taking him to the cow farm. The Bulls are on parade indeed. Harpy's diving into the secondary, going to be trying to contest the Pterodon Riders. Tim, though, does have a nice secondary position of uh, cohorts. Berserk does get lured to his doom, the classic Lizardman. It's like that. It's like the trailer. Remember the, the Hylf versus uh, Lizardman trailer where the Pterodons are like ambushing? Yeah, very cool. But Harpy's, you know, taking the fight, getting a little bit of DPS in there, but they're 100% going to be dying. Some Lizard units are now starting to move into the secondary. Morker, the Pimp Gabe, is trying to work on them. Centigors do get a rear charge into them, and they're not near their lord, so the Temple Guard are not going to be getting any crazy buffs. What the hell is this? A wild Tuscor chariot? Yeah, Berserk really is off meta. He brings a lot of weird stuff. But yeah, Tuscor chariots, in theory, like are good against armored infantry, but you don't want to be sitting in sustained combat with Temple Guard as a chariot. Um, it's going to start buttering your bread if you do for too long. But I think this surround might be deadly enough here with these Centigors that maybe the chariots can get away with it. We'll have to see. Yeah, Tim is just value trading. He's just trying to get a little uh, bit of a value lead so then he can just kind of push and triple cap his opponent. Seems to be the way he likes to play. In the backfield, we do have the Butchers of Kalkengard and the Centigors just rampaging through. Most of the Lizard positions are being kind of staggered a little bit. The Bestigor herds engaging against the Temple Guard, which are buffed by the Shield of the Old Ones. But you can see this has been quite a massacre. A lot of Lizards laying in the woods. It's been a rough one for them back there. But overall, I would say Tim is in a slightly more commanding position. The Beastmen are going to start getting forced back. But then that's where the Beastmen can use their mobility to start to pick off, you know, overextending units. But... Man, Tim's entire army is like Sara Spears, and they're just so resilient against the Beastman mobility, right? Very, very tough. So how are we looking? Bestigor herds, 36 models. Uh, probably about six, 700 value I'd wager on these besties. Let's go ahead and look. Yeah, only 300. Wow, a little bit disappointing. Yeah, you, Temple Guard are just, you know, they're very, very solid work. Very good units. Zangor is also pinning him in. We do have the Minotaurs crashing out. He's literally farming... The units as they come out, which is hilarious. And now he's going to probably be able to take down these Temple Guard. Yeah, they're going to have some problems with Butchers there. And Centricors are throwing axes also. But Tim is resurgent. He's pushing out. He's angry. He's pissed. And the Koroks Man Rippers are going to be the only thing holding back the Tide of Dinos. And that is going to be a fat banishment from the Battletoad. Battletoad getting it done. Huge damage on the Besties. That's beautiful. Because that's an expensive unit. Oh my god, that one was so incredibly good. Yeah, Tim's going to be pushing for a couple objectives. He's got the Sara Spears heading over here. He's got his blob heading there. The Centigors with throwing axes coming in to provide a little bit of support. And Beastmen, are they going to be able to do something on the back? Maybe threaten the home objective of Tim? I don't know. Probably not. But yeah, he's still value trading reasonably well here. Butchers of Kalkengard and Centigors fighting how they can. But I think the Beastmen are going to need to leave this position and maybe rear charge and sandwich the army here. Korok's Manipur is getting wrecked. Uh, they probably got hit with the Blood Statue of Spite, looks like it. And uh, on top of that, the Banishment was very, very devastating. Tim the Wilder up about, yeah, about 2k value, but he does have a life slant, so the, the value difference is even more stark. And I think the Space Toad is probably going to pull out the W here. I think Berserk is slowly running out of steam. I think he was too aggressive. I think against Tim, you just let Tim sit on a 2-1 to one cap for as long as you want, and then when he advances, you can get better engagements. Like, he was engaging here, which is where the Lizardmen were, like, super entrenched, you know? And also, like, engaging right in the front and trying to fight them on the objective. Yeah, I think that's overall just extremely tough. So 
Do we see a Trader King go down? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think we do. A lot of Centigors moving into the Spears. No Croxigors being used. I guess you don't really need Croxies in this matchup, although they're very good against Angors. And the Beastmen are going to be trying to Helm's Deep once again on their back point. Maybe with the Beastmen mobility and like high micro, they can work something out, but man, that's going to be tough. Butchers of Kalkengard battling it out against Sacred Croxigors. Sacred Croxigors can fight them a little bit better than basic Croxigors because they're more of a generalist unit. Yeah, they're big power fists, and uh, yeah, they're just going to be punching them in the face with those giant granite fists. Quite scary. Butchers of Kalkengard getting routed. The Lizardmen are just, look at this. If we go to like a big macro view, the Lizardmen are just all over the place. They're just like swarming the field. And we see the Beastmen with little pockets of resistance, but overall, I think they're going to be having a relatively hard time. Zangors move it up. Uh, it is a triple cap situation, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be kind of close. Yeah, it would be a triple cap, so the Beastman theoretically could Helm Steep, but there's no way. Tim is going to eventually just overwhelm him. With this value lead and healing taken into account, the Beastman don't have any healing here, right? So, Except Butchers. I mean, Butchers of Calcum Guard maybe healed a little bit, but they all just straight up got broken and chased off here. Yeah, we see them all running here. Butchers running into the tree line. That's going to be a cap here. And Tim the Wilder showing his Lizardman chops. That was like super disciplined play. That reminded me of the first battle scene in Gladiator when like the Romans are you know standing in the, in the forest. It's like just order to ranks, javelin, you know, Pelum's coming out, javelins, <laughs> ballista, in the case here, of course, of the Bastilodon. And uh, yeah, that is just not going to cut it. Butchers of Kalkengard trying to giga chat it, you know, holding in there with 46 models and arguably are good against a lot of these units. But yeah, they're going to get routed here in a moment and uh, probably run off. Yep, they get terror routed. Uh, a couple Zangors trying to hold the point. We do see him uh, approaching a thousand. I mean, could Beastman pull out any weird mobile shenanigans, any noble play like that? Yeah, I don't know. Don't think so. I think they just, the way they engaged was a little bit too aggressive. I know he's the berserker and everything, but that was just a little bit too crazy. A little bit too crazy indeed. Yeah, the skinks are using the water. The dreaded aquatics play. It's over. He should have known it was over when the skinks were standing in the water. Aquatics is relevant. Oh my God. You're seeing the aquatics meadows upon us. Yes. Melody knows for sure. Back objective is under threat. A lot of Sara Spears, Beastmen. I mean, gore herds can fight Sara Spears very cost effectively. But we're not seeing any gore herds at this RB comp, really. Zangors are the same thing, essentially. Gore herds and Zangors would trade well into them. But um, yeah, just too many rough trades. That's going to be a triple cap. Berserk will tap out. And that is going to be Tim the Wilder going up to a 2 1 lead here in this extremely sweaty series. This has been just a sweat fest. We're going to see if Berserk can pull it back. Now, Berserk over this tournament, he has picked corn. He has picked corn indeed. So that was pretty cool. The aquatic meta, yes, it is. Fear the aquatic meta. Aquatic OP, please nerf. I know, CA needs to needs to pay attention to their game and, and deal with this trait. It's obviously why the Beastmen lost. Yeah, I don't know what Berserk sees in this anymore. He sees the values close, but maybe not registering the fact that there's a life slant, so the value's even worse than you think. Morker, the Pimp Claw, is trying. Yeah, he's trying to ninja the side objective, but Tim is going to easily shut that down. He's just going to get some Feral Cold ones over there. Skink cohorts, pterodons, whatever. Any sort of rapid response unit. And um, yeah, the aquatic trait. This unit is aquatic. It's just all it says. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious. How that works, though, is, is infantry are um, you know penalized for fighting in the water, right? But these guys don't take any sort of a penalty to their stats. It's kind of one of those... Soda War has a lot of like weird things, like hidden stats and whatnot. But yeah, Tim closing that game out. GG, well played. That's going to be 2-1 for old Tim. And now we're going on to the next match, ladies and gentlemen. And um, let's do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Tim said that. He says, a fun fact on this map, the entire cliffside is aquatic. Yes. Yes. Let the evil schemes flow. All right. So next map here is going to be what? It is going to be picks and bands. And we got Uno Dos Trace and Road to Talapheim. All right. So we're back to a relatively open one here. So Road to Talapheim is going to be the map. There it is. And now it is time for the pick and ban phase once again. So we'll set that 10 minute timer and get ready to party. Thank you guys all for joining today. I know it's getting late for some of you guys, but appreciate you hanging around. It's been fun kicking it with you and talking about Nickelback and our favorite music and you know also Total War a little bit. All right. Okay, let me know when sent. All right, so about to set the 10 minute timer for the players, and then we will wait it out, see what the dreaded Tim the Wilder is gonna scheme up as well as Berserk. Berserk 
His beloved Demons of Chaos. You know who's actually really good at corn is Berserk. Oh my god. If he gave us a corn game, that would just be the ultimate power play, you know? That'd be the ultimate power play. Yes. Tim just flipped the series in his favor. Yeah, certainly did. Please play Chorfs. I don't think so. I don't think we're going to be getting any Chowee. Um, there's a couple Chowee players out there, but there's not many of them. They're very rare. What would we do without Nickelback takes? Yeah, Nickelback's awesome, dude. You take that back. Yeah, that was fun. I embrace them in my later years. All right. So I'm going to give him a second to accept the invite, and then I will set the 10-minute timer. Vampire Coast will become a dominant once more with the OP Aquatic. I know. There should just be a map that's 100% water, and then the, the Vampire Coast could be... They could actually probably have, like, a chance of winning. They probably still lose, but... I mean, Coast can win some. Another season in the bag? Not yet, but thank you. Appreciate it, Melody. We're almost in the bag. We, we, got, a, we got a couple more games to go. And then we carry on our wayward son. Yes. Okay, so we're going to do that. 10 minutes for 3 by 3 Good luck, have fun. So giving them the 10-minute warning timer. And we're starting it. All right, baby. Got it going. Entering the Age of Boomer. What armies have you played in Old World so far? Okay, so I have played... I did, I did see some Chaos Wars being played, but I, I didn't get to play against it myself. Um, but High Elves, Dark Elves, Beastmen, uh, Tomb Kings, Empire, and Warriors of Chaos have been the, the one that I've, I've played amongst. I have not managed to play Dwarves, Wood Elves. Um, I have not managed to play against, let's see, Greenskins yet. And uh, most of the other factions, yeah, I haven't had the chance yet. Give us the last quarter sword of corn to win the game. I know that's like the that's like the epic moment. That's so good. It's so good. All right. Let's see what the players are talking about here. They're chatting. <laughs> and it just made me laugh with a funny message there. And yep, we're just waiting. Eight minutes, fifty-seven seconds left on their timer. We're on the road to Talapan. This is a really good shooting map. Empire's good here. Maybe Berserk will go out on his, his Cornate shield. That would be pretty epic. Corn, cor this is probably not a great map for Corn though. It's very open. Um, so you could get shot and kind of pulled apart a little bit. We'll have to see. Yeah, Depth Guard, Depth Guard could use, uh, there's a lot on the Vampire Coast that could use some milk. They're just very slow too. It's like, oh man, it's, it's, they're so ponderous when they move. Have you seen the new, uh, AOS trailer. Yeah, this I like this Gaven in that. That was actually kind of cool. The Age of Sigmar trailer. But like, I go and look at the Age of Sigmar trailer and I'm like, that cannot hold a candle to the work that CA's done. Like the trailers that CA has made, like the Immortal Empires trailer where Carl Franz is like giving the speech and it has like flashes to Archeon and Wolfric and stuff. Like that is so much better than like, and you'd think a company that big would be able to have something that quality, but it just shows that, you know, the talent that CA has in their um, cinematics department. It's crazy. The corn pick, yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. I'm going to find out the pick soon. They're just doing their picks at the moment. They have seven minutes and 48 seconds. The timer flying down. Tim going to be trying to close out the series. Berserk going to be trying to come back. Yes. What armies have you piloted? I've piloted Chaos, uh, Warriors of Chaos, Empire, and Tomb Kings in Fantasy, in Old World, yeah. I, I also know the High Elf rules a little bit, because my buddy plays them, so I, I kind of taught him the game, so I learned High Elves as we did that too. That trailer is so good. I mean, like, most of them are really good, right? Like, CA's trailers are really, I mean, for all the haggardness we get with our game, their trailers are amazing. They're like gods here. Yeah, they're really good. Super fun. That might that might just have to be my favorite trailer of all of them. You know, like the uh, the 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 that's so epic. Like you get the shot of like Tyrion fighting with um with Grom Brindle. You get the shot of like uh, of Orion and Oxyadol in the woods fighting. You get Carl Franz and uh, Katarine like battling the huge chaos horde. This like epic speech. Yeah, it's so good. It's so amazing. Dawi and the old world are fun. Lords can get toughness. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Yeah. Dawi dealt this. I feel like they would be weak in old world. Like war machines in general are not very good anymore. Um, from what I've seen compared to Warhammer Fantasy. So like 
Yeah, and shooting is just haggard, in my opinion. I mean, unless you're wood elves or elves, but yeah, I don't know. I would like to see Dowie do well in Old World. I, I hope I'm wrong. All their money goes into trailer and not bug fixes. Yeah, you could be right. <laughs> I just got back from a game of Skaven versus uh, Goblins. Yeah. Yeah, shooting in Age of Sigmar is definitely way better than it is in uh, Old World. Shooting in Old World, it's hard. It's hard to kill things with shooting. Tomb Kings are actually very good at it, though. The Shafti Great Bows are amazing. And uh, their Skeleton Archers, honestly, aren't terrible either. All right, five-minute warning coming up on the he players here in a second. Well, they have, no, 43 seconds. I was wrong. It begins. Let the Nurglings feast. We did get to see Nurgle today, man. We've had pretty good um, faction representation, to be fair. Like, pretty good. Right? We had, uh... Have we had any elves today? No elves. Yeah, so our two elf players, we had two top tier elf players today, but I believe they lost in the earlier rounds. So no elves represented on stream. Likely won't. I don't believe Tim plays any elves. Serka is our resident wood elf player and Catholic uh, is our resident dark elf player and also probably high elves too. I don't know how they mix that one up. But yeah, those, those guys are really good at elves. Yeah, it makes sense, Amaron. It does. Yeah, we got Grand Vomitus, dude. He won a game. So have we gotten all the all the Chaos factions? We got Beastmen, Warriors of Chaos, uh, no Corn and no Slanash. We got Bretonia. We haven't gotten Empire. We haven't gotten Dwarves. We got Grand Cathay. So some of the Order Tide is represented. Yeah, we've gotten some. These players have dignity, no Elves. <laughs> yeah. Dwarves were picked, though. They, they were picked, and also Dark Elves were also picked in People's 3x3. Um, let me give him a four minute warning. All right. Four minute warning. And Tim the Wilder's going to get a four minute warning. I think my Chihuahua is battling. Let's see. Is it? Oh, it's okay. Uh, I don't see it actually. Oh, no, there she is. <laughs> We have a we have a, like a Chihuahua Terrier mix. It's literally like the two most troll dog breeds mixed together. And um, we got some new neighbors who moved in with equally vicious small dogs. So they just like get at the the fence and just like have Mortal Kombat. It's like the most suburban or the most urban suburban thing I guess you could uh, you could imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. The Tomb King sculpts the skeletons are pretty haggard, but the 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 Shoptis and like you know the other ones hold together pretty well. And here's the thing about it. If there's models you like, you can use them. And you can also use proxies of models you do like. It doesn't have to be those ones. Um, most tournaments don't even care. And most players don't care also. So, mm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what do I think the Hiles weak points are? It's kind of hard to pinpoint them. But they are rather expensive and elite, um, which can be a downside, right? So they, they can sometimes struggle to maintain on all the objectives. But, you know, the maps can change everything. Yeah, Kislev is banned from the tournament overall. They're just OP and stupid, so nobody wants that. Okay. It's okay. We got two minutes and 55 seconds left. All right. <laughs> you guys hear that? You can hear the Chihuahua duking it out. Uh, not, the, Wood Elf, the Wood Elf champion didn't make it to the finals. He didn't make it to the top four. He did. I'm sure he did very well, but he didn't quite make it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll have to start this tournament earlier in the future so it doesn't get so late for players. How goes the old neighborhood? Oh, all's good. Yes, yes. Not a homeless transient is what they said. Yeah. High elf units just cost. Yeah, they're pretty pricey. I don't even know how they do in land battle. Are white lions good in old world? They're okay. Yeah, I had my buddy use them against me. They're not bad. Um... High elves in general, they have like high weapon skill on a lot of their units. And white lions are actually strength four. So they're like, have the same strength as like a chaos warrior unit, which is kind of rad. I can see them being used. I think the phoenix guard are really good. Like the high elf phoenix guard seem really strong. Yeah. I have two chihuahuas. I feel like they individually hate dogs, but when they're together, they just buff each other's hate through the roof. Yeah, chihuahuas are definitely like little pack animals. Like when you get them in a little swarm, they become more vicious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so let's give him the two minute warning.
I gave them both their warning here. And, uh, all right. It looks like it's Dark Elves, Empire, Bretonia, Greenskins, Nurgle, and Zinch for, uh, for our boy Berserk. So we'll see what he picks here. Still waiting on the one shot Luminar Guild video. Yeah, it's it's not it's not something that has it's been done before. I had a super close game and completely brain dead at the second. Oh, it happens. It happens, Sarah. Don't don't worry about it, dude. They're cutting it close to this one. They're cutting it close. Could be a dread warning here. They're one minute away. Are they gonna decide? Oh, we got Nurgle Dark Elves. Let's go. All right, we got our matchup, it looks like, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this. They are on the Nurgle Dark Elves, and uh, yeah, it's go time. Frostlight, my parents want to get a second mini schnauzer. They bark a lot. Can you play the Palpatine Cackle? Sure, man, I got you. Let me find that on the, the pad here. Uh, there you go. I got you, homie. Thank you, Frostlight. <laughs> He's always there on the soundboard, waiting, watching. All right, so let me get the five-minute timer now. Minutes for armies. Good luck. Have fun. Okay. Uh, five minutes for armies. Good luck. Have fun. All right. It's time to let the Nurglings feast. You guys wanted elves. They have been summoned. Berserk going to be trying to bring out Nurgle once again. His off meta tendency is certainly quite fun. But I also enjoy Dark Elves a lot. Tim's going to go with the Supreme Sorceress of Dark Magic. I would uh, put some money on that for sure. And probably just everything else will be fairly standard from there. So, Yeah, let's see how this goes. Is Kislev's stupidity something that could easily be fixed? There's a couple things that need to be fixed. And I have forwarded all that information to CA. We'll see if they do anything about it. I'd be really disappointed if they don't. Because it's then, then it's like an entire patch of a faction just being unfair and not even playable. So... Like, what do you even pay for if it, it's just so unfair to play in multiplayer, you know? Yeah, so historically, this has been perceived as a hard matchup for Nurgle, but there's a couple weird Nurgleist specialists out there, like Scrambled Egg and Berserk, who, um, yeah, like, they can make it work. And they, usually it relies on a Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle on horseback, and he's, like, using Buna on Dark Riders to kill the mobility, and then Nurgle can win the melee fights. So somebody in chat says, I'm thinking of getting a Warriors of Chaos Army for Old World and painting them Nurgle themed. I, that's what I did. My entire army is Nurgle themed. Yeah, it's, and Nurgle's rules are very good for Old World too. So it's like, you're fine if you do that. Uh, but eventually I'm going to have an army for each god. I'll have like a, a Corn army, a Nurgle army, and we'll do the whole the whole you know party there. What characters are going to be in Old World compared to Fantasy? There, there's a lot of overlap. So you have the Dwarves, they just announced Unger of Iron Fist. Um, is coming back for Old World. And you have Cetra for Tomb Kings, you know. But for the factions that don't live very long, like humans, um, you know, you're going to have different characters. But a lot of the elves and whatever, it'll be probably, you know, I bet you we could get Teclas back or something. Unger, Iron Fist, Old World. Let me show you guys what he looks like. Yeah. Old World uh, mini. Old World miniature. He looks really cool. Okay, I don't know whose website this is, but it looks fine. The dreaded ads. Oh, God. Uh, where's the Games Workshop link? Uh, Warhammer Community. All right. So I'm looking here. Yes, the Dwarven Mountain holds. So this is the announcement for the old world for the uh, dwarves. This is the box. It comes with a what appears to be a dwarf a longbeard unit or dwarf warriors and... Two Corlers, a Gyro Bomber, and a Gyrocopter. Not a bad start if you want to do like the Royal Dowie Force. You have the new, um, the Dwarven King or Thane being carried on the, uh, I love that. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really fun. And then you got the Dwarven uh, Thane here. You can see some variants on the weapons. So you can give him like a, a Blunderbuss too, which is super cool. Like they look rad. And then you have a young Ungram Iron Fist. This model is, this model is so rad. Look at that. So that's Ungram on a tabletop. Yeah, it's so freaking cool, dude. Oh, it's so cool. All right, so let's get it here. Switch back. All right. Hey, congratulations, Trustnot. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Congratulations, buddy. 
and they will rise. Rise, yes. Yeah, it's a very good model though. It's good. Yeah, dwarves, I would like to start a dwarf army at some point, so that would be very fun. All right, let's go time. Thank you, Tim. Here we are, Nurgle versus the forces of the Dark Elves. It is the forbidden double soul grinder, which is designed to counter archer spam. So we're gonna see if it works against the shards of darkness. There's also a Reaper Bolt Thrower, which is good against soul grinders. So yeah, this is the rock, paper, scissors of it. Like do your soul grinders defeat the missiles? If so, then you can move on to the next part of the challenge where you try and win the infantry fight. Very, very fun indeed. What do I think the worst unit in the game is? Oh boy, that's a tough question. Mm. I'd have to think, uh, I'd have to think about it. I'd have to think about it. Yeah. You think the old world will eventually just get, get to refreshing the scape and our lizards? I think eventually if the old world does well enough, I think that they will add, add like, they will add the other core factions in. I, I think we'd see vampire counts, Skaven, lizardmen, like eventually, if it does well. Well, I think they're just hedging their bets. I could be, I could be wrong though. All right, guys. Oh God, the timer almost went off again. I caught it with three seconds left. Jesus. So the core army is going to be Marauders and Nurglings, which makes sense. You're going to have a very cheap core of units, right? When, when you have these big expensive boys in the back. So soul grinders are mortars that can bombard the archers and take away the ranged advantages your opponent has. They're best at medium to close range, but they can shoot from very far if desperate. And we do have a sorcerer of death, I would guess. No, Nurgle actually. Okay, okay. He's just going to use rancid visitations. That, that's fine. So he's going to rancid, snipe targets, stream of corruption, and also brings a healing spell. So, you know, he's paying a little bit of extra gold to have more spell diversity rather than really min-maxing and only taking, you know, the most efficient spell, which isn't bad at all. Yeah, the new frost arm is actually god awful. That might be one of the worst units in the game. Yeah, the Z Tor Shrine is also just a terrible unit too. Yeah, good, good calls, good calls. Looking at old uh, Tim the Wilder, my fellow millennial. He's got the dark shards in the secondary. This is cool. It's like a like an old school campaign army, right? And dark shards are great. I mean, if they can shoot, they pack a punch. If they can tear through armor, uh, you know, the, the opponent will regret it. The Supreme Sorceress is going to be of Dark Magic, and she's going to be on a Black Dragon. And her goal is to chase the Soul Grinders and keep them from wrecking the army, while the Dark Shards and the Reaper Bolt Thrower just kind of lay into it. Uh, so we'll see what she's able to do. And she's insanely good. Nurgle has always struggled against big targets, and trying to kill a you know Black Dragon that can heal for, what, 12% of its HP every time it casts a spell? Uh, not quite 12%, but yeah, like, you know, close to 10% is pretty damn good. So... Let's get it. Why did he take shielded dark shards? It's a good question. It's I wouldn't myself, uh, but they do have higher MD, so maybe he's thinking if they get attacked by like warhounds or do get caught in melee, they'll survive longer. Uh, perhaps against throwing axes, uh, like Marauder Horseman throwing axes. Uh, but yeah, overall, it is a bit of a strange choice to invest in the shields, but it could have also been a situation where you had a little bit of extra money, like 200 extra gold. Uh, to spend so he's like ah screw it. Let's just upgrade the dark shards. It's it's most likely one of those situations. I would guess hmm. Nurgle projectiles. Yes, uh, truly dreaded Probably a horseman's gonna be the first column for berserk uh, Otherwise the dragon can kind of just fly wherever it wants and, and, and do as it pleases Two soul grinders gonna be creeping up and oh buddy berserk with a super fast. Oh my god. Tim's not gonna see this is he? Oh my god so we get Hounds coming out. Berserk dodges it. He's like the Matrix here, dude. And Tim immediately calls out some Dark Riders. Oh my god. Berserk is like a predator, dude. So we had some some units lurking here. And he tried to ambush that, that Reaper Bolt Thrower while it was moving. That was a, a potentially a super MLG play if he had been able to catch it. And we do see the Soul Grinders coming up. Looking to screen out the uh, Dark Shards here, Dark Riders here. And the Big Dragon is also looking to maybe engage. He does rip some shots into those and get some respectable damage against the Dark Riders. The rest of the Nurgle army is going to be creeping up. So here comes the Nurglings and the Marauders. Next Collins are going to be Chaos Furies. Furies are good against Dark Shards for sure. They can waste those guys. It would not be bad at all. Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbows are now going to be here to keep Nurgle honest. But Nurgle's going to switch its fire onto those. And like I said, at medium range, their shooting is actually quite good. A dragon also attacking. Is the big Chungus going to get away? Nurgle's big, big thick booty is making, <laughs> making a run for it here. As the Supreme Sorceress tries its best to screen out the Soul Grinder. But yeah, Dark Elves are pretty good at screening out this kind of pressure. Dark Riders are excellent against Hound units, and uh, I'm really excited to kind of see Dark Shards in action. Will Berserk be Berserk this game? Is he going to, you know, push too greedily and too deeply into Tim's defensive territory, or is he going to just play the objectives a little bit more, force Tim to come to him, and have more of a neutral contested match? We'll have to find out. 
Okay, so he's taking the fight against the dragon, maybe. We do see the Supreme, not Supreme Sorcerers, but Chaos Sorcerer coming out. And it is going to be charging against the dragon character. Opal Amulet popped by Tim the Wilder. 20% ward save. That's quite nice. And maybe we see a Rancid Visitations once that wears off. What are the bolt throwers shooting? Bolt throwers in the meantime are in spray fire mode against some marauders. A bit of a mistake. They should be probably shooting at the soul grinders trying to wear them down. And the dragon character does take one hit from the Nurgle uh, sorcerer, who's actually a reasonably strong fighter. But then the dragon turns around and is like, hey, buddy, right back at you. So the dragon obviously is a massively superior fighter. A uh, massively superior fighter. You're going to have to see this Chaos Sorcerer Lord running away here. Hound units getting caught by some of the Dark Riders. Overall, it does look like Tim is a little bit ahead in the early engagements. However, in the backfield, we get some Hound units. Oh, man, Berserk slipped in there. He came through the opening, and he gets on top of the Reaper Bolt Thrower and kills it. Okay, that is actually really, really big. That is a huge pick. The Dark Riders are obviously going to be feasting, but Tim looks like he didn't quite react quick enough to get the screen there. As far as the blob fighting goes, there is going to be a bit of an engagement here. We get some Chaos Knights of Nurgle coming out to help. But the Dark Riders with the Repeater Crosshose and the Dark Shards stand at the ready. And the Shards of Darkness are going to start shooting at the Soul Grinders and a number of other Nurgle targets. But this is a big pit fight. Chaos Knights of Nurgle. Oh, I love it. They're so cool. But the Chaos Knights get in there, swarm their way in. And unfortunately for them, are they going to get caught in the Soul Stealer? Yes, they do. So that's going to be Value City. And there's no Festus. There's no big healing here. Chaos Knights do manage to push back the Dark Riders. And I suspect the Chaos Knights are going to go get the Dark Shards now. That would be my guess. But the Ballista is offline in the back. Value trading is pretty even. Remember, healing, though, on the Supreme Sorcerers is a real thing. Objectives, it's the Triple Cap. So Berserk, once again, does have the Triple Cap on Tim. And all the Hounds and Chaos Knights get in there. They swarm on top of the Dark Shards. Two Dark Shard units going to go down, potentially. That's a really, really nice pick. Now, where... Are the cold one knights up oh, speak of the devil and they shall appear here comes the cold one knights that is an excellent counter against the chaos knights they are not an anti-large unit chaos knights are more designed to deal with these uh you know kind of infantry pieces and things like that and i would wager that the chaos knights are probably going to be fleeing away here they're going to be trying to get away from this fight while the forces of nurgle do just hold on to the objectives sorcerer lord looking for opportunities maybe to shut down some archers soul grinders comfortably shooting into the dark shards oh my god big mortar shot from the big stinky right there as Tim's Dark Shards do get pounded really, really hard. Now, value trading Berserk is actually ahead, which is very good for Nurgle. Very, very good. Supreme Sorceress, though, was able to heal through some of that drama. Chaos Knights trying to escape the engagement as Marauders with Great Opens and Plague Toads are being called in from Berserk at this point. Could we see the dreaded Nurgle victory? Find out. Could be the case. Nurgling's nibbling away here on the Bleak Swords. You know, they're getting a little bit of work done. I love their animations. Nurglings have some of the best attack like the one where they create like a huge like chain and like whip them with nurglings yeah, that's pretty pretty fun marauders and nurglings though trying to screen the advance tim is trying to push up on the objective and get aggressive now he's realizing that his opponent is getting pretty far ahead on points and he can't abide that for much longer so far berserk is doing a good job maintaining his soul grinders despite some of the missile fire here we do see a stream of corruption going down we see the lord here infantry coming in through the seam going to be trying to shut off all those missiles and now toads and chaos knights are here honestly nurgle might be running away with this game they're looking pretty darn good in the backfield uh-oh the dreaded hound rally berserk was paying attention and he is going to be chasing down the reaper bolt thrower crew to make sure they don't reman that although honestly with only seven models probably better to just get on those dark shards but either way it's not the worst thing in the world Breath attack coming from the dragon. Kind of a bit of a swing and a miss there for Tim as the Supreme Sorceress of Dark Magic now is going to be jumping into the Soul Grinder. Soul Grinder here does get hunted, takes a little bit of damage, but Plague Toads, uh, they have good mass and will be able to protect that bad boy from getting wrecked. So here on the side, we have a little bit of a, you know, back and forth as the Marauders with Grey Open screen back the Cold Moon Knights. A Cold Moon Knight would probably lose to a Marauder Grey Open in straight fighting, so certainly you don't want to take that fight if you are the Cold Moon Knights. Although maybe charging into the flank and supporting Dread Spears wouldn't be as bad. So here comes the big charge, right in there, a little razzle-dazzle, punting those guys across. And uh, are they going to be trying to surge through and get on the Chaos Knights? Probably not the best idea. Now back in the middle, Crows of Cain, and are these Witch Elves? Ooh, the new Witch Elves! All right! So they don't have Rampage, but they do have Witch's Brew, so they can certainly murder Hobo, uh, a lot of things that they decide to try and fight here. Some of the Dark Chargers are still online, shooting into the Toad units. We do see Tim the Wilder behind on value. Nurgle up on value, which is pretty damn wild. Another Chaos Knight unit is going to be on its way in. This is going to be very fun. Oh, I love it. Chaos Knights are just the coolest. 57 melee defense is pretty nuts. Uh, those guys are certainly very thick. Dark Elves, though, still do have a decent concentrated position of missiles. I think Tim needs to re kind of reconfigure, reform his ranks here and get those archer units like staggered apart from each other and get that shooting really, really functional. 
because this is where Nurgle kind of shines, like just sending waves of haggard poison infantry with high HP pools at you is, uh, you know, it's going to be hard. Although Soul Stealer is one way to get back in the game. That's going to be nasty. That's going to hit a lot of units. Could lead to the crumbling of the Plague Toads and maybe give the Druki the advantage they need to get up on the objective. Collins in the back. What are they going to be for both players? We do see the Witch Elves being called in once again. And Witch Elves are really good at just cutting through infantry, especially Chaff. Breath attack there. Okay, that was potentially a game-changing engagement there for Tim. He got a big Soul Stealer. Almost got these Toads crumbled down. It's probably going to be able to break the position. And now the Druki are making some murderous progress up towards the middle. And we do have the... Yes, Murderous Prowess is active. So you're starting to see the Dark Elves pulling value back because their entire army is basically on steroids right now. Chaos Knights have arrived. Stream of Corruption going down. Nice one on those Coldwind Knights. That was brutal. And the Knights are actually going to take the fight here. But knowing the Coldwind Knights are really beat up. The Chaos Knights. Oh my god. Look at that guy. He just got launched off that, that Velociraptor. Oh my goodness. Both Soul Grinders also going to be an issue late game. They're both still terror causing fighters that are pretty resilient. But Tim the Wilder is getting some progress here. Side objective looks like it's potentially going to be flipping when these guys move up. Nurgle has been pushed back, and this isn't a Nurgle healing build, really. He does have fecundity and a little bit of healing, but it's not a whole lot. So Tim's still with no points. He really likes to live dangerously. You know, he likes to play that play style where he, he just plays really cagey and then gets a triple cap on you, which certainly takes a lot of practice and confidence to be able to pull off. Is that going to be a fleshy? Ooh, overcasted fleshy abundance on double soul grinder. It's exactly what Nurgle needs to get going. In the backfield, we do see the Dark Elf missiles. We got 45 here. We have another unit of uh, 34 here. Witch Elves just cutting through those units. And now Nurgle's hopes are kind of on this objective here. They really need to win this blob fight and push back the Druki, but it's not going to be easy. We have the Murder Witches here, so here they come. Yes, yes. Uh, Witches Brew will make them do a shit ton of damage. Plague Toads certainly need to be focused, but so do the Chaos Knights and Soul Grinders, right? Huge Soul Stealer, though. Very beautiful. Objective is in the clutches of Nurgle. Nurgle calling in Marauder Horsemen. And the Dark Elves, what are they going to call in next? Going to be some Dark Riders. Uh, unfortunately for Tim, a little AFK here. He's got some units doing God knows what. He needs to get those back on the objective. He could have already had Objective 3 by now if he had gotten that, but it's okay. Mistake for made, and I'm sure he'll recover. But, you know, Nurgle's downside is that they invested in a lot of big single entities, which, uh, you know, run out of ammo and also don't have the best objective sustainability. So, um, yeah, it could be tricky. Stream of Corruption, nice cast there by Berserk, goes right through the ranks on the Dread Spears and the Bleak Swords and all that goodness. On the backside, the Marauder Horsemen are going to be encircling for Nurgle, trying to, you know, chip down what value they can. But yeah, the Dark Elves are resurgent on the objectives, and Tim has pulled the value back to basically the same. The value is, is it's not taking into account Demonic Crumbling, so I would say at this point, the value is probably even, because Nurglings, uh, Toads, several other units have crumbled, you know, hundreds of value, so... Yeah, very cool to see Witch Elves in play, too. Certainly very, very cool. Nurgle, you know, with the Soul Grinders running out of ammo, they're going to run out of uh, options for dealing with ranged. So when the Soul Grinders can't really bombard, the Dark Rider, Repeater Crossbows, as well as the, um, the old Druki Dark Charge are going to get it done. So we do see them moving up here. The dreaded slideshow lag, but you know what? All things considered, it's been pretty good today with lag, uh, you know, with players connecting from so many areas, but still a bit of a bummer. Come on, CA, please. Jesus, give, give us a little something, something. So double cap for the Drew Key. You're just going to have to wrestle the third objective from Big Papa Nurgle. You see the Dread Spheres trying to waddle over towards objective number one here. Witch Elves uh, do have the Witch's Brew active, so they're going to be straight murder hobos right now. 72 melee attack and 60 weapon strength is pretty rad. I mean, they're not great against Toads, but I mean, 60 weapon strength is 60 weapon strength. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to be able to still potentially do some damage against those bad boys. Nurgle making a play for the side objective. We do see them hustling over here. So the Soul Grinder is on the point. Tim the Wilder are going to be hustling some spears up. One Soul Grinder is trapped down here by all these Dark Riders. Certainly not the best. And the Supreme Sorceress is busy battling Chaos Knights, but will be heading back to the middle objective. So as far as this goes, we got some Nurglings defending that one. But Tim is kind of running out of time. He's got to be careful. If Nurgle is able to recapture some objectives, it could be a very precarious situation. Spears arrive. Currently, Nurgle has more capture weight here because they have four and then they have three from this guy. So Dark Elves are going to have to get some reinforcements up there. The Supreme Sorceress, you know, can't be everywhere at once. It's trying its best, but Tim's trying to get what value he can. Is He's got Witch Elves now moving up to the side point here. He needs to hide them in the trees, though, because if the Chaos Knights end up charging them in open field, it's going to be super, super devastating. Yeah, stay in the trees. A Dread Spears getting on Chaos Knights is quite cost effective for Druki. Another fat Soul Stealer going down. Tim has pulled the value lead, so Tim is for sure officially ahead in value right now. He's doing it, and that is going to be a big soul stealer. But I love seeing Nurgle 
being highly competitive, uh, I think that's it's fun to see, and we're seeing why their win, win rate has climbed up a bit. People are learning how to adapt to some of these matchups, right? Dark Elves got this one on lock, uh, very easy, and now the Dark Riders can probably even kill the Soul Grinder here if they want to. Soul Stealer is going to probably break the back of some of these Nurgle forces. We will see the Marauders, and these Marauders probably getting terror routed. Meanwhile, on the side point, the Witch Elves are hiding in the trees, so that's a very good decision, and Cold Moon Knights are called out. Brilliant play and decision making from Tim in terms of his unit selection. So here comes the Cold Knights. Is Berserk paying attention? I think he's a little bit focused elsewhere. Cold Knights get the opportune charge. Berserk misses it. And that's going to be a huge win for Tim the Wilder. Taking down a much more expensive Chaos Knight with a Cold uh, Rider here is going to be the work of the gods. So objectives, let's take a look. Nurgle owns objective one. Objective two is owned by the Dark Elves, but Nurgle might be able to flip this one. That is pretty big. Okay, guys. Nurgle's still in this game. They are just, just hanging in there, just barely. And Tim's going to be in a situation where he's in a very desperate triple cap. We do see the Witch Elves running up. Cold One Knights chasing back the Chaos Knights here. Witch Elves can definitely cut through all of these units if they get the optimal engagements. We'll have to see how that goes. Dark Elves, though, threatening to recap the middle. Looks like they were able to rally some units back in there. A couple of their Dark Riders. I don't know how they got caught. Looks like maybe some of the Furies were able to get those guys down as well. Oh, man, the, it's such a shame we have lag. This would be so good. God, CA, man. What? You guys, just give us dedicated servers and quit sucking. Come on. So spheres move up. Will they be able to shank down the soul grinder? It's going to take a long time for that. But with the dragon, maybe. Capture weight still belongs to Nurgle. Uh, they're going to need to get one of these objectives real quick, though. That's for damn sure. Oh, and the witch elves rampaged, right? So then Berserk is going to lure them away with the hounds. That's a brilliant play. I love that. Oh, but they end up turning into the Nurglings. Okay, so that, that was a good idea. But in practice, it wasn't quite able to get it done. Dark Riders being chased down by Furies here, and the Dark Elves don't seem to have the capture weight to get this. They don't seem to. Objective 3 is going to be flipped. Berserk is going to be going for that, and man oh man, guys, it looks like we're going to be going to game 5. I think that Berserk is going to be able to close this one out. Tim took a little bit too long to get up on the objectives, and finally his strategy kind of bites him in the butt a little bit. Yeah, a lot of just sustainable capture here. We have Plague Toads and Nurglings and Chaos Knights. That's going to take a while to kill, right? Like, though the Dark Elves might be able to eventually win this engagement, we got the Hounds coming in the back, Bleak Sword's on their way up. Tim maybe, maybe flips the middle, but he did just lose Objective 3. Nurgle able to get his clutches back on that one, which Elves battling it out, but I think Nurgle has gotten it, man. I think they have gotten it. If you do a long stream, we gotta end it proper. I know, that's, that's the plan. 1399 right there, Plague Toes are gonna be hustling up. The good thing about lag in this game is it's equal for both players. So when they have this kind of peer-to-peer -peer lag, both of them have the same lag. So it's not like there's anyone at an advantage. Witch Elves trying to grind, cutting through Nurglings and Hounds. 1441, Tim is uh, trying to flip middle, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. GG, well played. The Plague Father has smiled on us this day as Nurgle's Toads and Soul Grinders. I know I've been, I've been, I've been on the double Nurgle Soul Grinder hype train for a long time. They're very good. Give you a ton of utility and they have gotten the job done. Berserk with the match. All right. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to the rubber match. We're going to game five. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, that Reaper Bolt Thrower, if that thing had lived, it could have been a different situation. Like one of the Soul Grinders could uh, could could go. No, could have, could have been killed. 2,700 on that one. 21 there. Sorcerer Lord up to about 1,800 with Rancids. Chaos Knights did okay. Sorceress, the hard carry for Dark Elves, as always. And uh, yeah, man, just crazy-ass game. That was a really good one. I, I love seeing the Witch Elves in action, too. That was very fun. That was very fun. All right, scoreboard is updated. And here we go. He's getting the evil demon factions going. He is. Yeah, it's a great series so far. Mm. Really, really good series. How I wish that Cold One Knights could actually deal with Chaos Knights. I mean, if you just fight them in a vacuum, it's probably fine. But yeah, the Chaos Knights can just run away from them, you know. Mm. Yeah. The Elves. Evil. All right. So they're going to do their last one here. Tim the Wilder fighting for the season championship against Berserk. This is a big title. Essentially top total war multiplayer dude in the world whoever wins this at this current point in time so that is a big title to win and we're going to see who's going to get it they will of course go into the old hall of fame which will be immortalized on the haggard total tavern for years to come maybe i'll maybe i'll pay the maintenance fees until we're old so they can tell their grandchildren look i was an esports champion
man, these demis on the old world tabletop are OP. Ripped my unit. Yeah, I mean, Demogriff Knights are way stronger than Chaos Knights on tabletop. It's like a different classification. Like, demis are like monstrous. And Chaos Knights, yeah, it's it's a whole different beast. This is a repeat of their last best of five where they went to the final game. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, very cool. Okay, let's check this out here and see how we're looking. Perfect. Yes, Anakin. Good, good. So I'm going to set up the 10 minute timer. Uh, 10 minute timer starting now for three by three. Okay, so I sent it to Tim and to Berserk, and we're going to hit the start button and they can get going. Rot, glorious rot indeed. It's 4 a.m. for Berserk. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of those guys I've noticed, a lot of, um, a lot of Central and Eastern European players, they stay up really late for our tournaments. Like, they're kind of used to it. I don't know about Berserk, but we'll see. Whoever gets to pick Greenskins first now probably wins the series. Mm, could be. Berserk will bring out his, uh, his corn to counter them. Don't worry. Does Chaos ride Doom Ponies and Tabletop? Uh, they're, no, they're, they're, it depends if you have the new models. The new Chaos Knight models are pretty big, but the old ones are kind of Chaos Ponies a little bit, yeah. They're bouncing grand grandkids on the knee, telling them about Hounds capping the bolt thrower play. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty fun. Pretty fun indeed. This has been a really good series, though. It's been a really good series. Nine minutes left on their 3x3. Three three. I'm going to go fill up my water for the last push, and I'll be right back in just a second. I return. All right, we're almost there, man. I feel like we've all been on quite a journey together. And what is it going to be? I think they're still doing seven minutes left on that. Let me go from there. Doom ponies. I mean, if we look, yeah, Chaos Knights. Uh, Chaos Knights are pretty jacked in tabletop, though. They have really good armor saves, and they have like natural ward save, which is solid. But yeah, I think one of the best. If we're talking old world tabletop, Demogriff Knights might be the best cavalry unit in the game. Like one of them. Uh, if we look at, let's see. No, actually, that's not. Bretonia has some pretty nasty cavalry too, but Demis are definitely up there. They're a contender. I don't know Bretonia's rules too well. Let's actually look at that real quick. Yeah, I like. I haven't really given Bretonia much of a look over. In the old world army builder. All right, so let's go do this, and we will take a look together while we wait. So, if we were doing a Bretonian army, Kingdom of Bretonia, yes. And uh, so core units, oh, Knights Errant are actually, and mounted, mounted Knights of the Realm, and then you can do Knights of the Realm on foot too. So they have First Knight, Standard Bear, Musician, and let's go ahead and do uh, Knights Errant. I'm curious what they look like too. And then special units would be Questing Knights. I just want to look at all the stats, so I'm just like inputting them all real quick. Pegasus Knights, eh, we'll, we'll look like more at like ground units rather than like Pegasus Knight stuff. So I'll remove you and Battle Pilgrims and then rare units would be their elite, right? Grail Knights, yeah. Okay. 
All right, so let's go to the game view and see what their stats look like. Would you use Sigvald in Old World since he was like, uh, yeah, I mean, I I could see Sigvald being added as like, uh, although he's already in Age of Sigmar, so maybe not. But yeah, I, like you could just make a Chaos Lord of Slanesh and use Sigvald's model, and then you know, uh, the next the next map. Let me make sure I have the right map for them. All right. The thing about our format is like you can ban green skins out because if they pick them, you can just ban all three of the green skin matches if you want to. So it's not like you're going to be forced to play against them. Um, all right. Okay. And the map is going to be what? We got the, uh, the Borderlow Landing. Yeah, classic. We haven't had it. I think we had it in the first round today, but Borderlow Landing is probably one of my favorite maps all time. It's really good. There we go. All right. So let's go look at the Britannian Cavalry while we're here. Uh... Okay, so Knights of the Realm are weapon skill four, pretty similar stat line to an Empire Knight, but where their special rules is where they'll be stronger, right? Oh wow, okay, so they can get ward save. They have finest war horses, which it gets to reroll natural ones on charge three or pursuit. Wow, that's really good. First charge, they disrupt formations, lance formation. Oh man, I don't even. I'd have to read the rules for this. But yeah, they Bretonia's knights seem pretty nasty. Yeah, it's really cool. Very fun faction. Yeah, uh, Kislev is banned today. Yeah, they're just OP. Yeah, the old Sigvald model isn't bad. The new one is is like a little too big for Warhammer Fantasy for like a Chaos Lord. Uh, but Sigvald Sigvald's old model was um, yeah, it's got some charm. New Sigvald, you could use as a Demon Prince. If you wanted to use New Sigvald as a Demon Prince of Slanesh, that would be probably doable. He's around the similar size to a Demon Prince. What's the worst faction and why? A lot of people would probably tell you Korn and Vampire Coast are in the pits right now. Um, I would agree that Korn is definitely weak and so is Vampire Coast. It's not to say you can't win with them, but they're just very, uh, very weak. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah, ogres are uh, ogres that got some play today. They're they're Hadrius was beating some really good players with ogres in the earlier tournament. Um, he beat two greenskins with ogres because greenskins actually kind of get countered by ogre kingdoms. It's a it's a weird niche, but they do. All right, so three minute warning on them. Let me give them a heads up here. All right, three minute warning and three minute warning. If you guys are enjoying the stream, do drop a like. Helps out. I hate asking for it, but it's, it's it's business. Two minutes and forty-seven seconds. Coast is just like they're they're squishy. They have we they they're slow. Um, you know the guns aren't good on every map, so there's a lot of maps where Coast is like barely playable. I don't know. They take a lot of crumbling damage because they just take so much damage. Yeah, I don't know. They're just really slow. Like their their capture weight has twenty-three movement speed. So like. Coast has a lot of trouble reinforcing the battlefield, like reinforcing a lot of trouble. Yeah, it's tough. Okay, so Nurgle versus Dark Elves is our last matchup. Let's see what this is going to be. Uh, they're doing their 3x3. Three three. It looks like the green skins, have they been banned out completely? No, they haven't actually. Oh my god, he's got a corn in here. No way. Oh, please give us corn. Tim is not banning any of the corn matchups. He's trying to force it into a corn matchup. Corn versus Hives or Empire would be interesting. Holy shit, guys. Is the fate of the old world, the fate of the title best Total War tournament lad going to be decided by corn? Oh my god, it might be. The odds of corn being picked are actually very high based on what I'm seeing. So they got a minute and 34 seconds left. Coast is slightly better in land battle because they can just mouth breathe and sit in a box, yeah. They can just sit there and like shoot you with a cannon to force you to attack them, and their speed isn't as much of an issue. They're probably still on the weaker end of the spectrum, I would say, but Coast is definitely better in land battle. Yeah. The nails are biting, they are. This is the championship match, dude. This is for all the marbles. Um, so yeah, it's going to be great. It is going to be great. We will see who wins. All right, all right. Tretch Craven Tail, do we need Tretch here? Yeah, man, there's some seriously meme characters. 
Trash could literally cost like 500, and I don't know if Skaven would even bring him. <laughs> if you made Trash cost like 400 gold, do you think people would bring him in tournaments? What's, what's, the, what's the overall opinion on that? This is a championship match. Greatest Total War player here. Going to be decided, at least at this point in time. Not of all time, of course, but for this particular season, yes, yes. These guys have both been tearing it up. They've both been playing really well. Tim is pretty dominant in tournaments, and so is Berserk, so. So is Houseplant, all those guys. Inconceivable. Yes, it is. Inconceivable. Oh, I like that. All right. Uh, do we have the matchup? Oh, my God. It's Corn versus Hiles to decide it. Wow. Oh, God. My alarm. No, no, no. Don't squeal. Okay, we're good. Minute timer for armies. Good luck. Have fun. Okay, guys, we got corn versus high elves. Blood for the blood god. Oh my god, I can't believe we're getting a corn pick. In the most high stakes game, with everything on the line, this man goes corn. Oh, wow. Tret should be free, but leave after 10 minutes. That's actually kind of a fun idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't hate that. Just give Tretch's campaign ability, allow him to spawn all units in Vanguard. Gain five and five of the champs. Dude, it's corn. And High Elves too. Man, who would have thought? High Elves from Tim. He picked High Elves. Everybody who's thought Greenskins were coming, but Berserk banned all of the Greenskin matchups. So there was no Greenskins. And it was one of Tim's picks, but then Berserk banned all three Greenskin games with his bans. So if only it was for a million dollars. Yeah, I know. It's not quite that. Couple couple hundred bucks, but hey, it's still for Total War. It's pretty good. This is 80, 20 high elf wins. Eh, we'll see. I mean, Berserk's corn is unholy. He he makes them work somehow, you know. I mean, of course, uh, every matchup is a bad matchup for corn, according to people. But like, I'm telling you, Berserk plays them different. He's 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 scary. Mm. <laughs> high elf actually winning something says someone in chat. Hey, this is the best chance they have. That's for sure. That's the best chance they have. All right, man. Come on, Berserk. Claim your place in Valhalla, dude. If he wins, if he wins with this, this with Corn, I'm gonna. I gotta make him a special avatar or something. That's uh, what is his avatar in Total Tavern, anyways? Let's see. Okay, hold on. I'm checking. Um, yeah, I think Corn actually is not like awful against High Elves. Like the Minotaurs are pretty decent, but the fire damage can be a bit of a drama for the fire resist that they have. Is Berserk even playing this season? Let me see. I don't think he's played. Oh, he he did win a tournament already. He's got he's got um. He's got a, a marauder a marauder berserker as his picture. If he wins, though, I'll I'll give him I'll give him like a fancy corn picture. You know what? We'll give him a picture of corn no matter what. For picking corn in this situation, I think you deserve a prize. So we'll make berserk like a really cool um a really cool corn picture, because that's uh that's like that's that's awesome. Yeah, corn does well in the elves because they're low HP. Yeah, the minos can really punish you. They they really can. <laughs> Banning green skin three times is still in my heart. Yeah, yeah, Kavya yeah, sure is. Probably going to be Imric, right? Imric on a dragon, just with his Vuvuzela giving the dragon princes buffs. Lord of dragons debuff as well to deal corn. Who does corn bring as their lord? Is it? I don't think he bring Chad Brand here. I think Chad Brand is a little too vulnerable. Yeah, he's he's like he's very all in. I mean, maybe he works. Probably Valkia is going to be the pick because Valkia can like help fight the cavalry. She can chase lords and wizards and uh, is good at all these other things. Yeah, give him the brutes of the hounds. Arwar. Oh no, we're, we'll give him like the chaos lord from the trailer. Uh, was house? Yeah, Houseplant was in the tourney. He did extremely well, but he did lose uh, to Berserk in the previous round. So, yes. Oh, the, yeah, they're both going to get... There's a prize for first and second place. So both these players are getting a, a getting a prize. Regardless. Red Olgor hype? Oh, my God. Red Olgor is only on Demons of Chaos, so it would have to be a Demon Prince of Corn, which I think wouldn't be very good, probably. Although, doesn't it have anti-large? Yeah, Imrik has fire resist, right? So, yeah, fire damage is really bad against them. So probably Valkia. Although, does she do fire damage, too? I'm trying to remember. It's been a while. I haven't eaten in, in like... Since I don't know nine a.m., you know, I had like half a bowl of cereal, and it's almost seven now, so I'm 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 going on fumes here. Mm. 
Let's see what he's got, man. One minute. I'm going to be kind of lenient with this one since it's game five. Um, so if they go a little bit over, we're not going to, we're not going to, you know, give any, give any drama here. Yeah, Scarbrand's Rampage is pretty pretty mean, but um, I feel like Emmerich can get good engagements on him and get good damage. We'll have to see. Uh, extra. Okay, I'm going to give them both. Uh, I'm going to give them an extra three minutes. Just to let them fine tune. I don't want them to lose the grand finals just because they rushed their army. So we're gonna give them a couple couple more minutes to decide, which is which is fine. I told Berserk, I told Tim, no problems. And we're all good. Valkia, how dare you? Valkia is, is not cowardly at all. Valkia is literally the just some savage Viking, you know, uh <laughs> Valkyrie of corn. There is, I don't think there's anything cowardly on the corn roster, to be fair. I'm very excited for Thrones of Decay. Valky is great, though. Like, a good duelist. Slavnir is very strong. She's hard to kill. Like, she's a re really cost effective character. Bring Henry Cavill. Oh, Henry Cavill is the lore master of Poeth, right? Yeah. I would love, I would love for there to be a Warhammer Fantasy TV show. I think that would be easier to do than 40K, too, because it's more like, you know. Most of the sets would just look like, you know, Central Europe and medieval times, right? With some magic. Morning turn. Oh, it's been a journey. I'm doing good, though. I'm, I'm great. Did you just wake up, Jay? Did you go to bed at the beginning of the stream and just wake up now? <laughs> she just, she just uh, about throwing spears and stabbing in the back. <laughs> uh, she takes fights out. I've seen Valkyrie battle like huge dragons and stuff, you know? Yeah, I've seen her. I've he Berserk is ready though. He's he's locked in, and so is Tim. All right, let's go time, baby. Sorry about the clap. Hopefully that wasn't too much of a jump scare. I'm just excited. Uh oh. Same with the unready and the ready up. He was he was switching one chevron of doom. It is time. Let the nerglings feast. So yeah, exactly like we expected. The double cultist of corn is really good. They can grind and Phoenix Guard and a horse and look at that, Reaver Horseman. Okay, with archers. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Archmage of Life. I wonder if it's gonna be on a dragon. Um, I'm trying to do the quick math in my head. I think it's on some sort of a mount. It's it's not gonna be on foot, that's for sure. Probably maybe an eagle or something. Could be on a dragon too, I suppose. But yeah, dragons are good against corn, but Valkia can definitely outduel uh, an archmage on a dragon. It wouldn't be the worst fight in the world there. So we got Valkia. The double cultists, the warriors with shields, some flesh doggies, and the dual wielding warrior as well as shielded warriors. I tried to sleep with my cat. Oh yeah, yeah, the cat got you. It happens. It happens. All right, ladies and gentlemen, spawning in on the south side of the map. Let's do the typical haggard esports intro. Spawning on the south side of the map, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be Berserk with the forces of Corn, and to the north. It's going to be Tim the Wilder rocking the Hives, looking to bring him out of the pits and close out this series. Let's see how this goes, man. Archmage is going to be on a Moon Dragon, rocking Earthblood and the Breath Attacks. We got Reaver Cavalry here, the Archer variant, and they're going to be quite good at disrupting the Hound units because they're actually quite good fighters. They can fight off the Flesh Dogs. A Flesh Dog would win one-on-one, -on -one, but they can parry them a little bit, soften them up, and then take the charge if they have to and protect the backfield. Very fun. On top of that, we do have Spearmen, a couple units of Phoenix Guard, and Archers. Archers are a good kind of thing against Bloodletters. So if your opponent wants to bring in Exalted Bloodletters, Basic Bloodletters, all that goodness, uh, you are going to be able to pepper them down. So yeah, pretty solid army here from Tim. Now, what's really funny about this matchup is, and I think I would wager, one of the elements as to why Berserk chose Corn is that he probably figures Tim isn't practiced against Corn, right? Like, Tim is going to be really practiced and know, like, most matchups that are meta. But as it pertains to fighting against Korn, it's not something people play, like, ever. It's very, very uncommon. So, um, so yeah. Should be fun, man. The battle is on, and the Illyrian Reaver Archers are going to start doing a little bit of skirmishing here with the Chaos Warhounds of Korn and the Flesh Hounds and all that goodness. Valkyrie the Bloody is going to fly up, and uh, it's really important, really, really important that Valkyrie gets to slout near the Spear of Korn down on top of the phoenix guard they're actually rather tough to kill phoenix guard they got good stats but i mean a blood letter 
Like if you can get a blood letter summon on top of them or an exalted blood letter to attack them, they'll die very quickly. Not quickly, but you know, they're still Phoenix card, but it's not good for them uh, for sure. But if you're attacking them with like warrior type units, they're 30% fizz res and they're high melee defense and armor. They're going to be like just absolute raid bosses. So a little bit of hound skirmishing here. The chaos warhounds do pull back. Valky the Bloody doing skirmishing. I love this. This is a great tactic. And most people are very lazy about their back objectives. They send one unit to capture it. So the fact that he's got the Flesh Hounds waiting in the bushes to ambush whatever he sends there is a very, very cool play. I like that a lot. So Valkia descends in, and she's going to be trying to take down one of these units. She charges, but misses the charge. So a little bit of a sad face here from Valkia, but it's all good. She'll recover, you know, emotionally scarred from her failure, but, you know, time will tell. Marauders with dual weapons getting attacked a little bit. We do see the Reavers uh, rampaging and chasing down the Doggos wherever they can. I would wager maybe, maybe Berserk pulls it back here and then summons in a Flesh Hound to screen it. See how that goes. And now Valkia is going to be hunting her prize. So here comes Valkia going after the Archmage of Life. On the side objective, uh, we got one Flesh Hound popping out of the trees to try and head off that Reaver right here. So the Hounds are hot on their tail, but High Elves are known for their speed. They're very, very quick on their cavalry. So, yep, he's able to get away there. And he is guiding those Hounds effectively. The Flesh Hounds did not quite get the angle of pursuit they're looking for. And now Korn is going to move up on the objectives. So we get the double cultists arriving. So the cultists are going to be a big problem too. They're very stalwart fighters and can definitely chew through infantry effectively. And the bloodletter summons are just top tier too. So we actually get great weapons being called in. A bit of a curious choice here in my opinion from Berserk. I can't help but think that there's not a lot of large targets you need to kill outside of the dragon, which Valkyrie can handle. So I don't know if that's the right choice, but it could be. It certainly uh, has the opportunity to prove me wrong here. Uh, I thought it might be the dual wielding variant, um, but I guess, you know, Dragon Princes and Silver Helms and Reavers are common, right? So having a great weapon to fight them is going to be good. On the back side, we do have the Flesh Hounds of Corn. Oh my god, look at this. Look at the play here. He put them in a pencil formation, so only two Hounds are exposed on the objective, the Missile Fire. And he's potentially going to be, you know, threatening this cap here, which I like a lot. So Corn is, you know, blood for the blood god, right? They're going to be trying to get all the objectives right out of the gates, not playing around too much. Collins are going to be more archers here for Tim. And Tim is being denied the back objective. Like, it c games can come down to one point, right? So if these flesh dogs can just sit on the point and, and deny Tim that objective for a hot minute, that's, like, really good. You know, it's keeping him off the board, and it's very, very cost-effective. Valky, in the meantime, hunting down these units while we do get some flesh hounds. Looking to maybe find some archers. Berserk going to maybe slip through there or come through and get some of the archers here. We will have to see. It is the pencil for yeah, you guys have a pencil emoji. <laughs> yeah, haggard capture technique. I mean, it's the little nuances. You know, every RTS game has weird things like that. Like little strange technical nuances that are very good for competitive play. So yeah, they're the most clever cunning uh, flesh hounds in history. That's for sure. So we got the basic marauders moving up. No horsemen of corn. I thought there might be one to try and like keep the dragon uh, tamed, but Valkyrie seems to have taken on that quest relatively well. The Reaver Archers are running a little bit low in ammo, and they've done some topical damage, but nothing too crazy, uh, as far as I can see. Corn is up on the point. They have the Chaos Warriors, and now the uh, it's in their clutches, so Tim is going to have time to build up if he wants to. And, ooh, the Hounds actually do catch some of those Reavers. So some of the Reavers do get caught here. A bit of a lapse in micro, but there's a lot of Archer fire, so we do see the Archers getting a nice salvo into the Doggos. But they do rip up a lot of the Reavers, so a slight blunder there from old Tim, but not bad at all. So they're going to pull back. Very even game at this point. The Moon Dragon character getting hunted down by Valkia. Valkia would probably outduel this dragon. Does she have Demon Shield? She does. So she's got Demon Shield and, of course, the Mark of Corn. That's a, that's a given. These Flesh Dogs are still just hiding in the trees, you know, keeping uh, old Tim honest. Tim does park a Phoenix Guard unit back there. The Cultists are waiting in the front. They're not going to overextend. So Berserk, I think, has learned his lesson a little bit from earlier about overextending into Tim's defensive positions. And it's just going to be waiting for him to come at him. Uh, they traded evenly here. Like the Warhounds got beat up and the Reavers got beat up. I would say a bit of an even trade. Up in the sky, Valkia pops Demon Shield. So she's immune to damage right now. But do not go down there, Valkia. That is a mistake. It does force the dragon to land. Oh my god, the Sopnir would be god tier right here. I wonder if Berserk's going to see that. Oh, that would be so erect. That would be such big damage. But yeah, they're going to move now. So I guess it wouldn't have been the best. But yeah, that angling was, was quite nice. So Collins for Corn are going to be the dual-wielding Minotaurs. These things are just Terminators. 120 to 1 weapon strength, huge melee attack, decent armor against Archer Fire as well. So they have a number of things that are quite good here. But Tim, just skirmishing and poking. You know, his usual play style, we've noticed him pretty much all day here, has been uh, perpetually sitting back and accruing value before moving in to his softened-up opponents. So some really close effects. Like, the games have been very, very tight. 
Valkia circling about 69 points, the blessed number here for Tim. Slanesh is here and has infested this high elf army. And what are Tim's Cullens going to be after this? It looks like just more spearmen and silver and guard, just trying to get some sustainable infantry. But I feel like Tim's going to struggle to deal with the armor, right? Like the Phoenix Guard can't, you can't afford to have Phoenix Guard sitting back here. I think they need to be moving up to this point and just leave Spearman here. He currently has triple Phoenix Guard, actually. He's trying to get as much value as he can out of his archers and his reavers and things like that. But Korn is honestly like skirmishing very well with him and chasing him and keeping him, you know, very, very uh, honest here and not really losing too much in the process. Some Chaos Warriors moving up to fight the Spearman and the Cultists are now engaged in combat, which is good because they will be generating their, uh, their rage. So they're going to be getting that sweet Cornate uh, summon the longer they fight. It eventually comes off cooldown here, and the Gates of Corn 100% need to be used on top of the Phoenix Guard. So some light Hound Skirmish here. Very, very sweaty stuff. These bad boys making sure not to get focused by missiles for, you know, more than a couple of seconds. In the back objective, we got Marauders of Corn. Hyle's not going to play the back objective, I don't think. It's getting a ton of missile fire, but really, uh, Corn's not taking that much damage. And now here, we do have the Spearman getting smashed up a little bit, uh, but some White Lines of Grace have been called in as a reinforcing unit. And Corn Minotaur is definitely going to have their sights set on them. Corn Minotaurs against White Lines is very good, but a lot of archers for Tim. Tim moving up here. We see dogs just poking and prodding the defenses. Basically, it looks like Berserk is just looking for openings into the army where he can get some freebies, getting some archers. But so far, it has not found uh, too many. Here we see the dogs running across, chasing down the Reavers. He pulls away. Tim screening him out with the Reaver Cavalry. Archer's also ripping some very cost-effective fire. I don't know about these doggos here, these flesh hounds, although they are getting some respectable damage against the Arc Mage. Not respectable, even. A couple hundred. Yeah, maybe 27, maybe 100 HP. It's not too much. Not too much at all. But now the fighting in the middle has erupted. The Chaos Warriors of Corn will be engaging here with the uh, White Lines of Grace. Got some dual weapon Berserkers back here, and the Minotaurs are waiting in the back. And now they're going to be called forward to help deal with the infantry, which makes sense. And the Coronate Warriors, even though they are shielded, they have pretty good stats, so they could probably put up a good fight against White Lions. Granted, you know, they're fighting an AP Grey Open unit, which is always dodgy for, like, an armored unit. Yeah, it's pretty late for some of the players, that is for sure. That is for sure. Valkia hunting down the Archmage of Life up in the sky, you know, chipping down that HP. Over the course of a... Domination games are very long, so every little micro victory you can get in terms of, like, a little damage here and there is uh, very, very cost-effective. Very cost-effective indeed. But the Warriors of Corn holding onto the points. Value trading is even. That's definitely not good for the High Elves. And now we do see a summon coming down to Bloodletter. So this is going to be pretty much a map. The Bloodletters will pull her out of the warp, coming from the Realm of Corn, And they should move in, assuming Berserk gives them an attack order. And these White Lines of Krace have been surrounded and ambushed by demonic trickery, uh, trickery here. And uh, that is probably going to be all she wrote for them. But you need to save some of those for the Phoenix Guard. They could be a problem. Yes, now we get Blood Letters coming in. Blood Letters are a good counter against Phoenix Guard, especially uh, since Phoenix Guard don't do magic damage, unless you are the Keepers of the Flame. Keepers of the Flame, of course, do excellent magic damage. So, um, well, not that anything does more than the other, but they trade well into demons. But we're not seeing the Keepers of the Flame, and now we got Silver Helms as the call-in, but they should be easy to kind of squander with some of the big um, Minotaur units, most notably the Great Weapons here. So Korn is using, like, really disciplined military tactics. They have, like, a couple waves going up with reserves, and they're all like kind of covering each other but tim getting a really really nice amount of firepower on those dual weapon marauders here on the side we see some of the flesh hounds worn down right there next slide please i'm trying i'm trying no nobody's gonna drop we're good we're all good don't put that evil on us ricky bobby it's just it's just haggard peer-to-peer -peer connections you know uh it's it's a tough one but what can you do at least the games have been pretty good they've been pretty good so the blood letter summon is being kited right now it did break down the white lines of craze uh, it's moving into the secondary. Maybe you're going to be able to get a couple more kills. Both cultists are going to pull back on the objective. Berserk has a pretty big points lead. Tim really wants to make sure he doesn't let his opponent get a big value lead or a point lead um, at this point because they're trading so evenly, right? So if they continue trading evenly, uh, I, I don't know how Tim's going to break this position. I mean, he doesn't have like an Imbric character that can just go balls deep on formations. And here we do see some doggos trying to work around the side. So Berserk looking for openings, but High Elves can call in Silver Helms or Reavers, or any number of fast cavalry that can deal with those. But dude, he's just like, he's got these hounds like baying in the bushes, just like waiting there, and they just pop out and threaten, and then they go back into hiding, which is which is pretty fun. So Archer's trying to get on the Minotaurs, which is the right idea. Tim with a very cautious push-up, which I like. The High Elves are stalwart and resilient, and they're just moving up, pushing spears, pushing spears, getting a little bit of ground at a time. Minotaurs actually decide to charge into Brace Spear units, and they still do some respectable damage. And uh, at this point, though, the Minos need to retreat. We got blood letters waiting in the back. If the archers start to run out of ammo, then the blood letters could certainly feast. Tim does see this though. It looks like his archers 
are going to be training their sight on either the Bloodletters or the Minotaurs. Breath Attack, beautiful one right there. That's okay. It's only a Marauder unit, so not as good as I thought initially. But Bloodletters do not want to be eating shots from these archers. So they can use this pillar in the middle, the dreaded Pillar of Corn. Might be able to hold. All right, guys. Cultists battling versus the Silver and Guard. Chaos Warriors of Corn keeping them at bay. The High Elves are getting stuffed back a little bit. Not quite able to get the forces of the Blood God off the point, though on the side. Some Flesh Hounds do get caught out by Spears as well as Silver uh, silver Helms. I really think it's a mistake keeping these Phoenix Guard back here. I think if they move up to the middle here, that's so much more killing power that you have. But now, what do the High Elves have up on the point? They have a Phoenix Guard unit. They have another Phoenix Guard, both of whom will probably win their respective engagements. We do see a Summon coming down behind Silver and Guard, which is cute, but I think a bit of a misplay. I think you should really, really have used that on the Phoenix Guard units because they're going to be hard to kill. But I mean, this does win you this engagement in a very catastrophic uh, manner, right? And the High Elves are surrounded. It looks like a cinematic trailer. High Elves lose even in their own trailers. Now back on the far side here, Minotaurs as well as Great Weapons going to be piecing out. Bloodletters are the reservist call-in knowing that the Phoenix Guard are on their way in. Archer ammunition is looking okay. It's not perfect. This one is almost out of ammo. These guys are at about 40%. So if the Bloodletters can... Uh-oh, this is going to be not good for the Phoenix Guard. They're about to get engaged by these nasty demons who are not being focused that heavily. And Minotaur is moving in as well as now. Now, the idea here for Berserk, I think, is a threat overload. He's sending in all of his missile targets at once to try and make it so not any of them do get you know focused down one-on-one. -on -one. But it's going to be a pit fight. And also, we do see Korn winning on the flank here. Archers are compromised, and there's a huge Death Star, including the Bloodletter Summon here, that can get in and probably shut down these archers. Yeah, Valkia is moving that way. Minotaur is going to be charging into the back of Silverins. Uh, not a bad idea. I mean, they'll get some work in. Yeah, trying to get to the Silver Helms, actually. The Phoenix Guard do break the position here, though. The High Elves fighting tooth and nail for this one. And, uh-oh, Exalted Bloodletters have arrived. They have arrived. Here they come. So that is going to be some nastiness. And we are going to see the Phoenix Guard uh, in some serious danger. But Tim playing his traditional style. Uh, of that slow push and accruing value. We do see Berserk closing in on almost a thousand points. Sloutnir with the steel chair. Oh my god. Sloutnir wrecking those archers. And that is actually the correct play because it, it will allow the Bloodthirsters or Bloodletters to feast. Let the Bloodletters feast. So they've arrived and the Phoenix Guard are going to start taking some casualties for sure. Minotaurs trying their best to get away from the Halberds. And the big Cornate pit fight is going well. And this is what the Blood God wants. A huge melee brawl. That is where they shine. Uh, most of the archers are offline. Yeah, we see one archer unit here. The other one's about to run out of ammo. Uh, Phoenix Guard are going to run into some counters here with the Bloodletters. And the Bloodletter trading here is going to get very, very big. So this is a disastrous engagement for these Phoenix Guard. Exalted Bloodletters were born and bred for one thing, and that was massacring Phoenix Guard. Um, insane combat stats. Uh, they do also have a bonus for infantry of 13. Oh, yes, the, the, the sign of the beast. Yeah, they're going to chew through those Phoenix Guard, no problem. You see those ones going down here. And Korn pulls the value back. They were pulling behind, but getting that unit there was a big pick. And all these Bloodletters are just going absolutely bananas. So now we are we are in triple cap territory now, guys. Tim the Wilder's going to have to get a triple cap. And it's honestly not looking like he's going to have, you know, an easy time with that. Uh, on the flank here, we do see, well, look at this. Berserk trolling the side point as well with the Flesh Hounds of Korn really, really keeping Tim on the back foot because now Tim has to pull his expensive units and some cavalry back here to help with that whereas you know it may be needed in the front to help deal with these blood letters a couple archers wasting into the minotaurs of corn so those guys getting poked and uh I think corn probably gonna get this one guys which is absolutely nuts the blood god who would have thought corn considered to be a meme faction would come in and just you know crush it here in the grand finals so dragon breath attack on top of the blood letters does some good damage cultists pulling back to the middle point Corn parking their hounds at the back to force. This forces your opponent to run even further back. And at this point, you might want to turn and fight or continue running. And it looks like he's going to turn and run, which is, uh, you know, those are some cowardly flesh hounds, but they, they're doing the right thing. So more flesh hounds of corn going to be reinforcing blood letters and exalted blood letters. They probably have their hellblade active. They do. So they got 80 kills, which gives them 20% more damage. So now they have 53 weapons rank. And the high position is just getting folded like a piece of paper. They are not going to have a good time at all. Archers shooting into the Minotaurs of Corn here. And ladies and gentlemen, I think we may have seen a Cornate victory here in the Grand Finals. Uh, what can Tim do to possibly get back? He doesn't have Imric. Valkia is still able to bully that Archmage and keep her honest. Terror doesn't really matter against Corn Infantry. They don't care about it. Um, you know, most of them have Frenzy or, and or are demons. So that's a big thing. On the far side of the Minotaurs of Corn chasing the Spears and the Reavers. The points are getting closer and closer to a Cornate victory. 
The Blood God continues his rampage, but there is a density of spearmen here and some Phoenix Guard moving up that may give a bit of a second win to old Tim the Welder. And High Elves could also maybe consider a back cap. No, there's some Rotters sitting back there, so you would have to send something like, you know, Dragon Princes to go get that point if you could. Yeah, and speaking of, we're not really seeing Dragon Princes. Dragon Princes, are, I feel, are reasonably decent in this matchup if you can avoid the Minotaurs. Because Bloodletters only have 40 armor, so, like, Shock Cavalry can be very effective against them for sure. Now, in the back, Archers, uh, most of them are gone, I think. Yeah, we see one Archer just, just running here as one of the Chaos Warriors made his way on over to the point. A couple of Minotaurs have rallied here, and honestly, Corn could be in danger of their... Not Corn, but Hiles could be in danger of losing this back objective if the Warriors uh, decide to turn around and, you know, fight these guys. In the middle, Hiles do flip it. Oh, man, they flip it. They flip it good, but he is just running out of time. If you are Berserk, I think you just send everything over here and just say GG, because... You know, this going to the middle maybe gives the Hiles an opportunity to rotate here, but I think if you just go to your back objective and Helm's Deep that, you probably call it a day, right? Yeah, so where's he gonna go? He's actually going to the middle. He's not gonna rotate to the back objective. So he calls in three heavy infantry units. Not heavy, but just marauders. I guess they're light infantry is more so an apt uh, description. The Exalted Bloodletter is probably up to about 1,500 value. 1,800 value. They are feasting well on a high elf soul tonight. Man, they have been doing some work. White Lines of Grace, of course, trying to fight back, but not super good against them. I guess they're okay. They have, they have decent fighting power. The Dragon is a little bit low. Valkia has gotten it slightly beaten up. Berserk is up by 3,000 value right now. And uh, though Tim did manage to recapture that objective, we do see old Corn. Uh, you know, they didn't hear no bell. Those Minotaurs coming back to fight the Silver Helms. And now we do have some Chaos Warriors here uh, that might be able to threaten this objective. You see, it starts to flip a little bit. And are there any Hounds nearby? Yeah, Berserk's going for it. Yeah, he's such a predator. He's got these guys coming in. It's going to be the Chaos Warhounds with a little bit of capture weight to try and ninja that point. And in the middle, Tim looks like he did stabilize it. Now, this is uh, what Tim has done in many games. He's been kind of behind, but then he finds a way to get a triple cap here. Yeah, you can see Berserk realizes the situation. He moves his Marauders over to the side point here. So there they go. So he's moving here. He's moving here. He's going to probably go this way. And Tim is just all hands on deck rushing that objective. I don't know if he has enough time, though. Uh, he does have some Reaver Cavalry coming over, I would wager. Yeah, very, very fast move. Speed Archers and Spears. But the back objective being, like, Ninja Threatened is uh, is actually really big. Okay, Berserk's probably got this one in the bag. He's going to be using the um, he's gonna be using the Chaos Warriors and the Cultist in tandem with the Dog Units to Ninja this objective. Because that guy's three capture weight, and the Hounds are four. That's seven cap weight. That's really good, actually. That's really, really good. And, um, yeah, he's just hunkering down on the edge of the objective to make sure his opponent can't get there. These two guys are going to be hustling to the objective as well. So there he comes. And over on the middle, the Lord the lord of uh, Slaughter here, the Blood God himself, Berserk, is threatening the middle as well. Oh, no, it's uh, currently owned by the Hives, it looks like. Yeah, Hives are going to hold on to that one, yeah. I thought, I thought for a second maybe he had enough capture weight there, but it's not enough. Back objectives taken. GG, well played. That is going to be the Season 5 World Champs of Total Tavern. I don't know if it's World Champs per se. It's, it's Total Tavern Season 5. I mean, yeah, it's all close enough. And he is going to get it. High elves OP and they need nerfs. Yes, they do. I agree. Corn has done it, though. We do see the mobile play here. Desperation from Tim calling out fast cavalry. Ooh, if this flips, it's just GG. If this just flips, it's GG also. I mean, it's GG regardless. The back objective is too de uh, dealt with. Uh, Tim actually does salvage that. So if he did have something on this point here, maybe. He gets a dragon. He gets a route with the Marauders. That's 10 capture weight there. You're not going to get this off. And that is going to be Season 5 Grand Finals. Going to Berserk, doing Clan VM proud, doing Corn proud more importantly. What a match, GG well played, and what a contested sweaty series, Jesus. Sitting on his throne of skulls to say the least. GG well played, Demons of Chaos Nurgle and Corn wins, I know. Showing the sweaty meadow, what's up? The dreaded Corn pick. All right, Valky was awesome, Cultists were awesome. The Bloodletters carried that middle fight, 2200 value, and ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. Phoenix Guard didn't do badly, but certainly had some troubles. I don't really know what you would even change. I think you just need a character, character like Imric, but that's just my two cents. I don't really know how super well. So with that, Berserk is going to be the champion of Season 5. He will be winning the cash prize. Tim will get the second place prize as well, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. That was quite a bit of fun. Adios, my friends. Dovi Zenya. Take care of yourselves. Oyasumi Nasai if you're in Japan. Kind of random, but there you go. Berserk, GG, well played. See you guys around. That's going to be it for today. I'm going to go feast, hang out with my smoking hot wife, take it easy, and get some food.
All right, guys, until next time, season six, of course, is underway on Total Tavern. If you guys want to participate and play in this tournament, you just got to get top 16 on the leaderboard before the season ends and you qualify for this event. So that's how that works. It's, it's certainly merit-based. So, all right, guys, see you around. Adios, take care of yourselves. And that is it for tonight. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne.